Every public body shall give notice of the date, time, and location of its meetings other than special emergency or continued meetings at least three working days in advance by posting such notice on its official public government website, if any, placing such notice in a predominant public location at which notices are regularly posted, and placing such notice at the office of the clerk of the public body. In the case of a public body that has no clerk at the office of the chief administrator. Reasonable notice under the circumstances of special emergency or continued meetings shall be given contemporaneously with the notice provided to the members of the public body conducting the meeting. Mrs. Tanner, has today's school board meeting been properly certified? Great, thank you, Ms. Tanner. I duly call this meeting to order. So, um, we had planned to hold off on taking a group photo uh, until um, Ms. Smith arrived, but since Ms. Smith, you're here, we're gonna go ahead and take our group photo now. The Virginia School Board Association does a back to school um, photo that they put out um, throughout the state, and they asked for our board to take a picture so that they could put it in their um, campaign welcoming students back to school so we were going to postpone that till the very end but uh, I'd like to go ahead and get that done first if we could so if we could just come right at the front of uh, this table right here and Miss Tanner will take our picture <laughs> and then we'll get started with the meeting Yeah, there you go. Old Lamille style. There we go. It's crooked. Can you? Um, yeah, white. Yeah, there, there you go. go. There we go. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Mm, nice. Mm -hmm. remember last time we had to take that picture I wasn't able to be there because I was in the hospital having a baby so <laughs> uh, all right so um, well welcome everybody uh, thank you so much for coming in we have a marathon meeting today so we're gonna get right down to business um, we're gonna start with Miss Tanner calling the roll uh, Basine here Campson here Clanton present Smith here Martin here. Jordan. Present. And Gabriel. Present. Thank you. Um, as we discussed before, we were going to uh, begin uh, adding a little bit more structure to our work session. Uh, and so what you see here are some bold subject items and then the supporting uh, material underneath of that. This is going to be the pattern that we have for our work sessions now. So the items that you see in color here will be the the, the headings and then the material underneath it will be uh, the areas that we uh, discuss um, at our future work session. So we'll see how this uh, works and hopefully it will um, do very well. So starting off, we're going to begin with setting the direction for the division uh, with the school board accountability plan. Uh, Dr. Bergson. Good afternoon. Um, when we met last during the school board retreat, there was a discussion related to the school board accountability plan and some revisions that the board wanted to make to the plan. And so it's my understanding that Mrs. Hansen is the board's lead with the school accountability plan. So this afternoon she'll be presenting um, the revisions as requested by the board during the retreat. Ms. Uh, Hansen. Thank you. Could I get the, the clicker? Oh, Ms. Stanner, could you That's put right, the... Uh, okay. Oh, does it work? Can it work from here? I think Dr. Okay. Bailey is right there on a table. All right, while he's doing that, let me just go ahead and get started. Um, as you know, back in March, uh, when the school board approved the, account the new accountability plan, um, there were three priorities that different people had concerns about. One of them was one that I had a concern about. Um, 
and so we had long discussions about it uh, and then we agreed that we would continue those discussions during the retreat uh, and people were going to bring some stuff in I don't think anyone kind of got around to it but so in July a month ago we went to the retreat we got a nice block of time and we went through the same discussion that we had had in March and we didn't reach any decisions then so it was pushed today so this has been three times and it isn't anything that we have to change but it was just an effort to get everyone in agreement with each part of it so that we're all on board together so those three priorities and you should have them they came they were posted of uh, since we had a little problem following along I corrected my delivery so that now you all have a copy of the accountability plan on board docs you also had a copy of the list of the proposals and then we have a quick little PowerPoint um, that we'll go through so I'm gonna run through them quickly I know I'm got the clock ticking and they'll and hopefully give us time to have a little discussion so we're going to start with all right isn't it that thing I point to no. there it goes okay I'll okay. do it <laughs> all right goal one priority two this is increase the percentage of high performing schools is the priority uh, is priority two the discussion that we had uh, had to do with because I spent a lot of time thinking about the different points of view to try and bring a good compromise that I hoped everyone would be comfortable with and and the uh, the, the point of the of the priority was to recognize academic recognize celebrate academic excellence um, with the high performing for the high performing schools but other members of the board had a very legitimate concern and that concern was that they wanted growth and improvement and academic progress also recognized because if you're in a school in a high one of our high poverty neighborhoods they have a lot of challenges all those children all those children can become proficient but we have to give them a lot of extra support and so we wanted to recognize also improvement academic improvement I hope I've captured the concern there well I really thought about it a lot and then Dr. Birdsong gave us the solution without even realizing it. Um, she announced that the VDO, D, VDOE had um, created a new award, which was recognition of the most academically improved districts in the state. And she also announced that here in Norfolk Public Schools, 10 of those schools, of our schools, were recognized with the new VDE. VDOE award for most improved. So the, the recommended provision for priority two is increase the percentage of VDOE most improved schools and NPS high performing schools. And of course, once you start improving, that's what you're headed to, high performing. So that's the recommendation for this one and what would happen on the accountability plan and it isn't there yet because why go to all the trouble to put together plus I was on the website the other day forever and I couldn't find the criteria that they were using it's there's a lot of good information on that website but it sure is hard to follow sometimes all right so but what will happen is we have the high performing and we can pull those down and we have the most improved once I get the criteria that will go into that piece and I could certainly put that one first so that we can celebrate high <coughs> academic achievement the way we celebrate high athletic achievement with all of our athletic teams but at the same time we're also at an even higher level of an award recognizing those schools who have a lot of challenges and yet are among the best improved schools in the state all right so now move on to the next one try to get through these quick so you have time for discussion all right goal one priority five and this is increased edu educational options and opportunities and the concern with this one was it's not a accountability plan here's the goal here are our targets to reach the goal check when we get there and that was difficult I thought the options and opportunities there are a lot of charts there net data that we needed I thought it fit well in other places however what came to light that I hadn't really thought about was a member said you know what we're trying to get to here is equity yes 
that was such a that was good for me because I I was right on board then. And so when I'm what I did here was I just changed a tad. Provide educate. We still don't have those hard goals, but it's something we need to focus on, and that's what a priority is. Provide educational equity options and opportunities. Now, this is going to take some work on the accountability plan to really get this in. The the U.S. and State Departments of Education really judge how you're doing with equity by your closure of achievement gaps. So that's data that could be used here. And that's just something that's going to take a little bit more talking and all, but that's really going to make us focus on equity, which is um, something that every single member of this board is highly committed to. So that was the change for that one. Okay. The last one, which doesn't fall under a goal, it was, and I know it's busy on there, but you have it on your sheets, and if you're on your computer, you can look at it. Um, this was the one that's been around for about five years since Dr. King was here, become a board of distinction. And it listen, this is from the state school board association, and they list a number of things that are very concrete. You just go by check, 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 and you, and you earn the award of distinction, becoming a school of distinction. This was the one that I didn't like, and, and I didn't like it because I thought, you know, once, once the schools improve, as the students improve, that's the reward that we have. <clears throat> However, uh, Mr. Jordan said to me back in July, he said, you're missing the point here. It's not that I'm trying to get an award. I'm trying to help us improve the way we operate and with governance. And that made perfect sense. So what I looked at here, this is a suggestion. I'll do it. There, oh, it did work. I'll just do All it. All right. <laughs> so this is the, the change. What I did is instead of looking for an award, I put as a suggestion or as a recommendation that it now read, strive to improve relationships and increase gov governance capacity, which I think is what we're trying to get to. And so if you look through these items, and you can hold them side by side on your sheets. There, it was already too busy to do it side by side here. But what I did is I went in. A lot of the stuff is exactly what the State School Board Association recommended for theirs. But I added one thing. I added at the very beginning, board members will participate together in at least one relationship building professional development session and four governance training professional development sessions. Now, we're already doing the governance, having some scheduling problems, but we're already working on that. We started that last year, and I thought a relationship building one is a recommendation that I make because I feel that that would help our board. If you go down to the next one, board members will participate together in a two-day summer planning retreat session in July, which would give us a chance to get caught up in stuff, and we already do July retreats, so that's not really anything new. Uh, a lot of this now is exactly the same. The board will conduct mid-year annual superintendent evaluations, mid-year and annual. Um, the governance team will fully implement the new board accountability plan. There was strategic planning there, and that's something we can come back to, but for right now, this is where we're going with the accountability plan. The next, number five, six, seven, eight, even though it has a seven, two sevens, seven, eight, nine, ten, all straight no changes at all and then when you get to 11 deleting the statement which says they had a long list of conferences and they wanted this board with only seven members to have two people at every single one of those conferences that's a lot of conferences and, and a commitment that that's I mean I can't go to six and seven conferences um, so instead what I did is I put um, for number 12, I'll, I'll get back to that one. Number 12, that each member of the board would, would attend at least two of the recommended conferences from the state association. And then back at the new 11, the governance team, board and superintendent, and this is one that Mr. Clanton called me on Monday and said, are we doing something about community and family engagement in our, in our uh, board goals? And, and I said, okay. So we, I added the governance team, which is the board and the superintendent, will ensure the full implementation of, of the of board accountability plan goal three, priority nine, to attract and retain strong community partnerships and strengthen family engagements. It's right off the accountability plan. And then, and then, and then number 12 now is the one about two conferences a year. 
doesn't mean you can't attend 20, but at least two. And then number 13 is the one that was already there. Um, the division will participate in VSBA, take your legislator to school month, already do that. VSBA media honor roll, this is new. This is recognizing a member of the media who uh, have good relationships with the board, who, who spotlight good, yeah, whatever, you can, and then there's the business one, which is honoring a business that does a lot of work. I don't think we've done that before. And then the bullying month, we already participate in bullying month. So that's basically the changes. Hopefully that leaves me time for board members to have a discussion. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Campson. Are there any members who wish to comment on the items proposed? Yes. Um, oh. Well, first, just on the presentation, on the, I know that you shared with us the PowerPoint. Were there any changes that were, that were proposed to be made within the, the other document, the, the plan itself? None, none, none came up. These are these are what was remaining from the original vote in March for the for the accountability plan as it was was accepted. But in my mind, I kept these three priorities that people had concerns about and said that we would discuss them again in, mm -hmm. in July, which we did, and then again here today. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Basine. You, well, I had I had other comments, but to Mr. Jordan's. Um, uh, point so what what I noticed um, in the accountability plan itself that there were um, there was a change to add decreased dropout rate to priority eight we and we and that didn't, change was that change was made because the board by consensus that day everybody said that was that was I left it off inadvertently because we know that that's a state requirement for accreditation uh, and and so the, I, we asked everyone on the board seemed in agreement because I would make no content changes without the board's agreement. Okay. Well, yeah, and I, I know we talked about it, but I, I just uh, noticed that that had been updated in, in the plan. Um, and as I thought more about it since we had that discussion and then looking at, you know, how reports have been generated even by the state, um, I feel that priority eight has become like a um, a catch-all for everything that isn't uh, hasn't been prioritized somewhere else so the decreased uh, dropout rate I would I you know would continue to advocate it either being its own or included with increased on-time graduation rate and decrease the dropout rate even though those two are different um, two different rates Okay, and that's something we can consider for another time this time. We're going to right. keep, we're going to be looking at these three that were left over from March and July. Okay. And then um, my additional comments are around uh, priority two. Um, one of the suggestions that I'd like to bring forward as well, I know we, we seem to agree as a board that having some sort of recognition of high academic achievement uh, is important. I would like for our, since this, is, since this accountability plan is for this year, is that our priority may be um, to, develop, uh, to develop a definition and process for determining high performing schools so that we have time to really talk about what that means to us. Again, I feel that you know, the accountability plan, while, while I know the state accountability is reliant on SOL scores, I'd like us to be more um, inventive and aspiring to a higher level in terms of what we mean by high performing, because SOL scores are minimum. And with that, I think you know, we talked about in July last month, we talked about um, how, student, how um, bringing in climate. Um, items from the climate survey. How do teachers make us feel? How do our principals make us feel? There, there are other aspects that I think we need to consider in our definition, and I want us to be deliberate and thoughtful about what that definition is. And I um, appreciate your comments there. What I would like to say is high performing, maybe the word academic should be put in there because that was the point of this, and why we're bringing in the improvement was also for that. Um, it was high academic performance so that parents understand what we mean. And, and, and both in March and in July, I did ask everyone to bring me different charts and different ideas, and I would like to say that I did not receive anything. 
So I did this work without that, that input yeah. because both times members of this board said that they had things that they would send me, different kinds of charts, different kinds of research, and I did not receive them. And I went on with this, but I'm certainly glad to add the word academic to make that clear because the improvement includes a lot more of that kind of stuff. Right. Well, I know I've, I've brought it forward before, but um, my expectation too in July was to spend more than 20 minutes on this and that we as a board and not, um, I don't believe it should be, a, our accountability work should be a committee. I believe it should be the work of the entire school board and that we should spend dedicated time to work on that. Um, but Ms. Singh, could I just say to that that this is our third meeting over five months. We had very long discussions both in March on these items and back in July. Okay. So there's a time that you have to move on. So let me ask okay. this question so then. Can if I, we hold on one second? So if we change the recommended priority, Ms. Campson, you said you, you would we would put academic in. Well, yes, to, to, to clarify it, high academic performing schools academic because that's what is it's to recognize, okay. like with athletics, you recognize the highest athletic performance, and we celebrate those for our schools. Well, we should also celebrate academic performance. High academic performance is okay. the, our goal. Okay. Well, um, final comment, and then we're going to go to Mr. Clinton. You had a question, right? Yes. Um, and thinking more about item number three, we haven't <coughs> talked about, uh, about this, but in looking at the plan, I would also like us to devo devote more time to um, achievement gaps and what that means. Because um, based on the plan, I saw the targets were in that we would have zero um, you know, have basically no achievement gap in 2024, I believe. And I think to get to that point, we have to first consider what is it we're going to do to reduce those achievement gaps. And I would like us to focus on what that is okay. um, and have that be a priority. That, that, that Could I say it? one quick thing to that? Okay. I thought the board's role was to do policy. We want achievement gaps closed, or closed as close as you can get them. How, the how-to was my understanding over the past year is that's the superintendent and her senior staff will be telling us how they're going to do our policy that achievement gaps need to be closed. Right, but when I say that, I don't mean the tasks related to it. I mean what policies, what barriers are in place uh, that exist in our division um, rooted in, you know, we, we have an equity policy how we haven't had an equity scorecard, for instance, um, on each of our schools. I would like to see that. I would like us to prioritize using the data so that we can either revise our policies, allocate resources um, appropriately to close those achievement yes, gaps. Absolutely. So, so I would like the focus to be on that broader piece that we are that reducing. We I don't yeah. think that we haven't had that as a focus. And so it is going to be up <laughs> Absolutely. to us. Absolutely. She's right. Just, She's I'm just saying I would like that it. articulated in, in that priority. Well, is, okay. Um, because the plan looks like it's saying we're, we're, we're. It's difficult. It's difficult to bring suggestions to the table when Ms. Campson did ask for members input. And the input that I provided was I'm comfortable with the suggestions that she had. And that. so when you come at the last minute and you bring forth the suggestions, good, good. I'm not just saying that they're not good, but then that allow, that carries over the discussion. And so I think that Ms. Ms. Smith had brought up the point of um, unfinished business. So I'm taking notes of that. This is a fluid document. If we want to come back to changing that priority around so that it's worded differently, um, I'm happy to do that but I don't think that just because it's there in that priority doesn't mean that the board isn't working on I think that, that is honestly a huge focus of where we are and the work that we're dedicated to policy changes budget changes I mean we went through a whole budget process where we were trying to put teacher specialists back in the budget to help close those gaps so and and and, and plus this, this is a living document, mm -hmm. and this is what we will be doing every year at the retreat. This is a five-year plan, but every summer we will be taking a needs analysis, right. as we did when we developed the initial plan, and we will be making, it will be constantly being updated every July like any accountability plan is. Right. But how many times? Five months now. Right. It's so let me go to, to Mr. Clinton because we're going to keep things rolling. Okay. 
Sorry. Uh, Madam Chair, I just wanted to, um, and I'll state this, I, I agree, uh, Ms. Ms. Bassine, in the respect that we have to keep focus on that. Um, Absolutely. And these items, um, when we talk about the achievement gaps um, and about the high performing and the definition, which is where my question lies, um, Dr. Bailey. So in the, some of the, um, I know that we have the scorecard and we have the color that we're using and I remember in some of the two by twos, um, we, there were some defined levels that will get you to the yellow, to the green, and the red. So that's kind of a definition mm -hmm. of giving us, you know, where we get to those particular areas, right? That's correct. Okay, so I guess if we can kind of spell that out, um, that would kind of answer some of these things here, and then kind of doing a deep dive and, uh, regarding around the achievement gaps piece. I know that we have some requirements that ESSA has in place when we talk about achievement gaps, and so making sure that that, that comes forward. But um, I, I just wanted to say, um, so I appreciate that, um, that I appreciate the work. I mean, I think that the board, and keeping in mind that um, when we get here, it's good to, we gotta have discussion um, about action and then taking action. And I think that we try to divvy things out to committee and to assign it to individuals to kind of do the work so that when we get here, um, we can kind of you know, talk about it and then move to some type of action. Um, so I would definitely recommend uh, to the board that we continue with um, kind of a subcommittee um, of what Ms. Campson has been doing regarding our priorities, um, that so we can always keep the year-round focus. And, and you know, definitely, Ms. Pacine, you came up with some great ideas, uh, maybe even continue to do the work with that um, so that we can constantly keep that coming to the board. And I know that we've taken some intentional uh, efforts in the agenda planning for this year. Um, to make sure that there are periods where we're reporting out quarterly that information so that we're always keeping that in forward. So um, I appreciate the work that's been done there and I think that um, it's, we're having a plan that we can move forward with and so I'm happy with it. Ms. Smith, did you have a comment? Yeah, I also support um, us defining what this high academic achievement, achieving, achievement means. Um, also, something we were going to keep verbiage the number four. You might want to reword it. It says uh, the section where it says uh, will implement it. That's future and past tense. You might want to change that a little bit. Excuse me. Could you repeat that for number me? Number four. Oh. Okay. Will fully implement it. No, number four is page no, twelve. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in your recommendation session. Oh, it's the on-time graduation. No, no, no. Oh, Go number four page. there. Oh, I'm sorry. Four. Yeah. I'm looking at okay. it. Good catch. The governance team will fully Im implement the new board accountability plan, which is. Right, but it says implemented on there. Just oh, sorry. Thank you. Yep. Good catch. Okay. Mr. Jordan. Uh, so going back um, to the first slide dealing with the improvement, um, for the, for the definitions uh, related to VDOE most improved, uh, what, what the Department of Ed issued um, were uh, two categories. They have the um, highest achievement award. This is part of their, what they were calling their exemplar awards. So there's a Board of Education highest achievement award and it describes uh, what the various benchmarks are there. Then there's a uh, second category, and just in 2019, uh, we, di we didn't have any schools that were in the highest uh, achievement award. Then the second award is the continuous improvement award, uh, and then those criteria or indicators are also spelled out, and that's the one that, um, where Dr. Birdsong mentioned, uh, that we had several schools. Would you send me a copy of that? Because you're, st I, I could not find, that's what I was looking for for the most improved. I think there were 10, oh, okay. right? I there, could provide it to Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. yeah, and I. Um, find to find it. Yeah, I just pulled it off the press release, but I think one of the things that um, that's important to, through this, and I think we just saw that, I think we can't lose sight of um, the importance of the administration being actively involved in this work. So while it's a, uh, board level document, we, we started down the path of doing a board accountability plan because the focus was what is it that we could do as a board to um, contribute positively to positive student achievement. And so when we talk about the various tasks and action items, 
in the accountability plan, those things were indeed focused on actions that the board could take. Right. But you are exactly right that that was that's different from the action items and tasks that we would ask the, right. the administration to and take. And I was very trying yeah. to be very careful to follow your your yeah. your so coaching I, so I, on that. Right. So I think we, um, you know, when I when I was reading it again a couple of days ago. I still feel like we need to do some revisiting to make sure that we haven't lost sight of our board actions that we're taking and not have the just the indicators and the numbers dominate uh, the plan so much that we lose sight of what it is that we're doing. Uh, so I, I just make a request then of, of the whole board once again, if everyone would send those suggestions to me, then I will certainly come back with I mean we need to vote on this part today so we can move on but all those suggestions are important I, I agree um, but I need to know before I before I put it all together what it is you know in other words I don't if there just send me <laughs> suggestions right. but I, but I just, so I can use them I keep asking right but just to be just to be clear on that so I, I, I think part of the the challenge with that is I think too much responsibility is being put on you as one board member and so I think that the, the whatever process we come up with has to be inclusive and um, <laughs> and involve the. Yeah, could, could go on. I have a point to share with that. Go ahead. And involve the the administration in that. That's what that was the process. Well, that, that the team includes Dr. Bailey I'm, and Mr. <laughs> I just I just want to get okay. Let me let me the, let me interject no, here for no, a second. I, I'd like to finish if I okay, can. Okay, go, go ahead. Go Then I have a comment. anything you like to do. Um, the. Uh, so I want to uh, just highlight that again, because I think uh, on the agenda it says that we're going to vote on this. And one of the things that caught my attention is, is that normally at a work session, this is what we do is the work, we do the, the work. And then at the business meeting is when we would take action. Um, you know, I have some unreadiness about taking action, having just had the discussion at the same time. But the, not that I'm against the, the, the efforts that we're trying to achieve. But the other thing I wanted to, uh, two other quick things, uh, just want to get some clarification, Ms. Camps. So when you were opening up, you were describing um, challenges that some schools face, some neighborhoods face, and you were referencing uh, um, those schools that had those challenges and academic achievement improvement in those schools that didn't and falling on the high performing list. I just want to, can you, expound upon that a little more because I wasn't quite I'm following. I'm not sure I'm quite clear on your question. So well, I wasn't quite clear on when you were describing the uh, high performing schools and you had mentioned that uh, one of the things we have talked about is uh, the impact of schools in challenging environments and and the way, oh, what I was trying to point out there, and if I wasn't clear, I apologize, okay. but I was trying to say that we wanted to recognize the, um, the, the work and the improvement that schools that are highly challenged, uh, high poverty schools mostly, um, make. And that's why it was so wonderful that the state is already doing that. And so we could just Bless follow you. in theirs and so that we would be doing the improvement. We would, uh, as Dr. Birdsong had announced that we had 10 schools, that we would be recognizing the schools each year. Um, you're right, we did not have any schools that made the exemplary award, but we do. But with the chart, but with the criteria that we were using, we do have schools in the city that are performing very highly, and that we're able to recognize, even if we don't reach that very top one with the state yet this year, to start recognizing those schools that have high academic performance, even if they don't get the state award yet. We don't have a, we haven't earned a okay. state award yet. Not yet. But at the at the district level, though, we can still recognize academic excellence in many of our schools right. at the same time we're recognizing academic growth right so my I, I just wanted to get some clarity because I think one of the things that we should do and, and I was hoping that we would do soon and maybe we'll do that after we get the final scores is really take some time and peel back um, what are we seeing for all of our schools mm -hmm. because as we just mentioned we didn't have any that achieved the the highest award we have a uh, uh, diverse mix of student of schools that achieve the continuous improvement yes. award, but I also think that um, that we need to provide some re-emphasis on uh, uh, how do we take students that are 
meeting a certain level or high level, however we define it, and pushing those students forward. Uh, because even within our schools that we may designate the school as high performing or we may designate the school as challenged, within each of those schools or with all of our schools are students that are across the spectrum. And I think we Absolutely. have to continue to give some attention on the student learning piece of this and not just get caught up on the the school designation piece. Well, and, and I agree with that, which is why you saw me fought, fight so hard during the budget process to put full-time math and reading specialists into those schools because, and I said at the time, is even if you're high, you know, high scores and everything, there's, if you've got 80 percent, that means 20 percent of your students are not proficient. And that's why I was pushing so hard for additional academic well, <clears throat> support in those schools, in every single school, because we have students in every school that are struggling. Okay. Right. I know we're way over time. Yeah, I'm we not are talking over time. Anymore. So I'm going to, Mr. Klein, let you. Well, I just had one other, if I can finish. Okay, I'm going to go to him, and then I'm going to make my point, and then if we have some time, we'll come back to well, you. We're Madam Chair, I think that you've, you've taken the opportunity to comment, as each of us have commented. I just have one other point I'd like to make, if you would be so okay. kind to allow me to, go to ahead. finish. Go ahead. Uh, the other item, as I was relooking over the plan, uh, and we were talking about achievement gaps, opportunity gaps, whatever we may call them. I noticed that we define the, uh, for lack of a better word, I have to put up, the control group when we were looking at achievement gaps as white students. Uh, yet the students, when we look at by ethnicity, that are performing the highest are those that we have designated as Asian students. So I just would like for us to come back and give some consideration as to if we're talking about achievement gaps based upon ethnicity, why we have identified white students as the mark that we're trying to close versus identifying the Asian group as the ethnicity group that we're using as the. We, we don't make that identification. As I believe, Dr. Belly, am I correct in saying that those are from the state and the feds? That we don't, we don't determine saying, what they are. What I'm, my point is I'm saying in our accountability plan, as I was reading it, I thought I saw a statement, I can share it with you later, where okay. it said that we identified that. white students as the okay. baseline. And then we are measuring other ethnic groups against white students to determine whether or not there is a gap or not. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up for you right, in a second. Right, and I would like to have Dr. Bailey included in that discussion because I think we, we don't determine that. I'm not, I'm not debating the ethnicity. I'm just saying that I think one of the things we need to consider is for our plan whether or not we want to, if we're going to do it by ethnicity, whether or not we would utilize the do ethnic group different. that, yeah. that okay. has shown the highest. And, and that's Jordan, something to look me, at. I, I do understand your point because if we're looking at the data points um, and looking at how the um, children, the aging children have performed, they have outperformed. Yeah. Um, white mm -hmm. students and so if we're trying to so. close gaps as you know Mr. Jordan said that is something that we need to look at yeah okay, okay. great that makes perfect sense. sense okay that's a hundred like they're 99 percent <laughs> <laughs> like I think that's yeah, the goal that's for all students yeah, yeah that's true okay that's true. Mr. Clinton so I, I just wanted to um to just point here that the accountability plan uh, from my understanding for us is board level it's our accountability plan but it's incumbent upon the administration to come up with their own plans based off of the goals for which we've established as a board level which will then also go even down into the school level um, for schoolhouse plans so um, I just wanted to kind of bring that to sinks for anybody who's watching that that this plan is high level as a board where we're supposed to be at with the goals aligning with what the VDOE uh, aligning with the State Department has given us in ESSA and so forth so that we can align those particular goals that it drops down to allow the administration to talk about the tactics and the, the practitioners to do what they need to do and then bring back recommendations and report out to the board to us based on what we've established as the lofty goals and then also even down to the schoolhouse so that we can have measurements that are across the board. <coughs> I just wanted to point that out that that's important um, that we're not you know we're not coming up with other different things. I do believe that you brought up some good points, Mr. Jordan, in regards to the um, the Asian student piece, and you know, yeah, that's I know. That, I've so. never thought of that. Just, that but we have point. we've not yet agreed for the mm -hmm. uh, accountability plan to go down to the to the school level. No, we're not talking about this plan. So I, we, I think, I, what we identify just, is that we leave it up to the administration. It's not coming upon us because we're not giving the administration 
telling them what to do. We're giving them, this is the roadmap of where we want to go as a board. That's our role. And when we get below the waterline is where they come up with this is yeah, well, how we're going to do that. it and this is how the schools are going to do it. So I'm not, I'm with you on that and I'm not saying that, you know, but I just want to make a point that this, we shouldn't really get into telling them how to do that. And, and, and really it is incumbent upon the superintendent to help us inform our decisions on the policies, the budgetary implications, all of that, so that if, if when they are doing the work, and they see that there are certain policies or practices that are in place that are impeding <coughs> equity, that are impeding achievement gaps closure. That's when you come to us and, for example, under student learning and achievement, you would say, Dr. You know, Gabriel, board members, this is what we've seen. We need to have the board take a look at this and this is why. And these are the reasons why. And so that helps us to make these informed decisions so that we can act on those items as the policy-making body. Okay, we're going to Ms. Smith, and then we're going to close it up. And I, I want to say that I support what everyone is saying here about the equity piece of this and fully addressing it. What I'd like to see come from the administration is those schools that are challenging, have challenges significantly above the rest, that we be made aware of what those schools are in need of. Um, I am certain that the principals in those schools know what resources they probably need to improve and that we see a intentional roadmap from the school to the budget. If it's fiscal resources, then we see it linked to a budget. If it's personnel resources, we see it linked to some type of hiring process. If it's instructional support, we see from one presentation to another how we're going to improve these schools because it can be accomplished, but we have to make an intentional effort to accomplish this. Schools, two schools come into mind for me, and it's STEM Academy and Lindenwood. If we look at the prior history of those two schools, um, just those two, we have to do something different. And these 14 that are on our list of um, not fully accredited schools, we have to look at them because most of them for more than three plus years, they have not had significant improvement. So while the overarching plan that we have is good for everybody, it is clear that these schools need something in addition to that. And we need to be shown what they need in addition. Um, Couldn't agree more. We gotta, okay. There's an expression that says bend the curve. We have to change the trajectory that these schools are on and then present a new one for them. And that's what I would like to see in our presentations going forward, not just numbers. Great. Okay. So um, thank you very much. Uh, point well taken. Uh, is there, I would like to go ahead and move to adopt these recommended changes to the priorities. So is there a motion on the floor to adopt the proposed revisions of the school board accountability plan as presented by Ms. Campson with the one modification? Madam Chair, I move that we adopt the proposed recommendations to the accountability plan. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second, okay. Um, any further discussion? Yes. So I just, just so for clarity then, the, where we said that we have um, areas of um, the, v, the state's definition and indicators of achievement, and we haven't yet identified our collective understanding of what they are. This, how does this motion then what, what are we actually adopting, I guess, is what I'm trying to get some clarity on. Well, it does include the chart that's current, the chart for high academic achievement that is on the current accountability plan. It, it does, I'm not sure I'm yeah. following. Yeah. So in, we, have, uh, we have on the current version, the June, July, whatever version was most recently adopted, we've 
in that current plan, we identified eight schools, whatever the number is, that were high performing. High performing. Eighty percent pass proficiency rates. Right. On on the presentation we just received, we acknowledge that we are trying to be inclusive of the state's uh, work, but we've also acknowledged here that we've not yet, as a collective, um, provided clarity around what those indicators are so that you are part of the continuous improvement and you are part of the highest achievement. So in this motion, when we are adopting the changes, I just want to make sure I'm clear, what exactly are we adopting? What are, what are the changes we are the adopting? The changes that we just talked about in the wording and, we are in, and the chart that we have for high academic performance, what I was trying to clarify is that we don't have the exemplary that the state has, that, we're, that this is a lower level than that, but it still rec uh, recognizes high academic perform performance in the schools. All right, but then I guess I'm, but we already have, if I'm understanding correctly, the high performing um, chart is already been approved and is in our plan right. today. Yes. So I'm asking, based upon the recommendations that are here, I feel like, for example, there's a slide right there that mentions things under the governance piece. Mm -hmm. But under the piece that we had for slide one that was dealing with oh, for, uh, for yeah. the achievement, I'm saying, are we adopting that or are we deferring that until we have the actual? Yeah. If so we the defer that, then so we won't the be able to the recognize motion. this. So it's well, the maker of the motion. That's what I'm just I'll trying to get clear. To my motion okay. is. Okay. It's based on what we're seeing here. Just the high level. We've already identified this is a living document. I think that there are items that have come up um, that we have to go back to, and that it'll take some additional time. So I'm not asking for approval on that. I'm only asking for approval on the the change on uh, page nine, uh, goal one, which was adding in the academic, um, and the high performing, high academic performing schools. As identified, so it, I, I no, I'm, I'm not even correctly. getting into the weeds on it. I'm only, at this particular point, when I'm asking for We're not going to be able to recognize those schools if we're saying we don't have a, a criteria to recognize them. Ms. Campson, right. That's I'm, what I'm doing at this particular point is allowing us to be able to identify what we want you all to go back and to continue to work on and bring back. We don't have enough time to go through each item at this particular point in this session here. So I've accepted the academic, high academic performing schools to peace. I'm also keeping, as, as presented on the uh, goal one, priority five, page 13, and as well as the um, recommendations regarding priority 10, um, which would be page 20. Um, those are the only things there, um, and as far as just a discussion on it, and that we continue to do work, as we said, that this document is a living document to come back on the recommendations that have been made. Okay. Yes. Okay. So may I just ask a question on that then? So I'm, I'm not challenging that, I guess my, as the maker of the motion, my question would be, uh, would you consider that since we discussed this at the work session today, that we are going to provide uh, the board and the team the definitions for the state categories that we said we want to include, update the plan with that information, share it with the board, and come at the business meeting and approve it. I'm not sure, is there something significant between? That's exactly what Ms. Campson is asking us to do right now. I mean, I don't have to have the chart in front of me in order to approve it. If the VDOE has recommended certain schools for the most improved schools, I don't. I have full confidence that yeah, that chart will yeah. be able yeah. to be here right now and the chart already exists for the high performing. Um, the high performing. So I don't need to see it again in order I to I didn't add the exemplary the yet. I didn't put exemplary in Is it. that what, what you're asking? asking? Yeah, because I would think that part of board of distinction would be that we would include the, the, the chart, include the information. Oh, yeah. Show on the chart our schools that are um, meet that criteria as part of our baseline and we would adopt it at the at the business meeting. So I'm saying the opposite, that rather than saying that we would vote on it and then include it later, I'm saying we would include it now as part of the work session discussion and then come and approve it at the at the business meeting, which I'm is confused. in two weeks. I'm, I'm comfortable with keep voting on it. So well, can we go I'm, ahead I'm, and call the question? I mean, I, <laughs> I was right asking the, Mr. Clanton since he made the, the motion. Yes. No, 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 Guys. no, no. I understand what you're saying. Um, and either way could work. Um, but at this particular point, I mean, I'm looking at the press release that came out from the DOE. 
um, and it's got 70% pass rate, it's got everything yeah, clearly outlined for us, yeah. um, that we can come back and add that in there. Um, I think giving direction from the board uh, to the administration that this is where we want to go um, is the best, um, and, and what's, what is the intent of my motion? So that they can come back and come, ba come back to us with additional information. This is, a, we've already identified it's a living document and that we're going to have many more conversations around this. Um, but uh, I don't want us to continuously be in holding patterns around things and just kind of waiting for it. Um, school is going to start really soon. Um, and so I think if we can take some action today, we can also come back and take some additional action with the additional information. So um, I, I appreciate the recommendation, but I want to move forward with this here. Go ahead and call. OK. Ms. Bassine? I'm voting no because I want a, us to have a clear definition of what we're uh, talking about with priority number two. OK. Thank you. Next. Campson? Yes. Clanton? Yes. Smith? No. Martin? Yes. Jordan? No. Gabriel? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. The motion carries. Dr. Birdsong, Student Learning and Achievement. OK. Um, Madam Chair, members of the board, I was asked to conduct a follow-up on where the school division is with the um, audit of special education. And so I did meet with our Senior Director of Purchases and Supply, and she stated to me that um, she was not aware that a request had been made for us to move forward with a request for proposal. And so at this time, um, we have a couple of options that I would like to share with you. Um, number one, we can consider um, having our partner, uh, the Council of Great City Schools, to conduct the audit. Um, I would recommend that. They've done audits for us in the past um, in the area of finance, transportation, um, middle schools, curriculum and instruction, and we would not have to pay a fee for that service. Okay. Certainly, we would have to reimburse them for their travel expenses, expenses, et cetera. Or we can submit an RFP if you choose not to go in that direction. Um, it would take about 14 weeks for that process for us to actually develop a contract and announce an award. So at this time, I um, would like to ask how you would like the administration to proceed. Open the floor. for. Direction. Uh, Madam Chair, if I can, uh, before I, uh, so Dr. Birdsong, just so I have clarity, you said the Council of Great City Schools, we could use them, and that's your recommendation, because we won't have to pay for the service and just maybe reimburse for their travel, I guess, the time here. And as you know, they're a very credible um, organization, and um, we have membership with them, and they've done audits for us in the past. So if we move forward with this, um, when could we possibly, did they give a timeline of when that? Um, we did ask for a timeline. They have, they have not provided that yet. Um, they are still working to develop that for us. Um, so we had to follow up a couple of times with them because they're involved in some other things right now. And so we're trying to be patient. patient. Um, but we have reached out to them. <coughs> and it sounds like they are amenable to doing the audit for us. And so my final, and, and moving into this one, um, I just want to make sure that I, I clearly understood what you stated. Um, there wasn't any action on this? To my knowledge, there was no action. Okay. So with that, because um, I, I think that Ms. Campson definitely had made a request in there, um, and there's been um, multiple. multiple requests about it. So I'd like to move um, that we have the special education audit um, conducted based on the recommendation of the superintendent for the Council of Great City Schools. There second. I second. Okay. Thank you. Discussion? Ms. Campson? Dr. Birdsong, um, when I made the request for the special education audit, one of the things that I emphasized was it wasn't just a financial audit, but they were also, uh, um, uh, and, and it wasn't just a compliance audit, mm -hmm. of which, we, you know, we've done a number, we've had a number of compliance um, audits done, that it was also a delivery of instruction and implementation of IEPs. Um, in other words, what the program actually looks like in the classroom. Uh, will this also, will, are they able to also do that? Because that's, because I think when we listen to so many of our parents as they come in, and certainly from my own experience in the schoolhouse, how you implement the IEP, the type of instruction that you deliver in the classroom is what 
we need to improve so much on. Um, and so I wanted to just be sure that was one of my, and the reason I wanted to be external when I first brought this up is that I wanted to be sure that um, the way we're doing the programs uh, are, are getting our children to as high an academic level as they can um, meet because as we know our largest achievement gap we have is with special needs students. So is that something you, I mean, would that be automatically included in it? I don't want to um, slow a vote down. I think we would down. have to be very specific in our statement of work, what we would yeah. want them to do. Um, so I would like some clear direction from the board um, since I guess this was asked of the administration months ago. So I want to months. be very clear yes. on what the expectations are. Sure. Okay. Can, uh, go ahead. Can I go? So um, whenever in the work session where I had, I had asked for the independent audit, it was a program evaluation. It was changed to refer as audit, and I thought that was maybe something that was um, a term that was. Okay. That's a good point. You know, mm -hmm. something that the school administration refers to this as, but it is a program evaluation. Okay. We want to we want to improve, walk away from knowing um, what we're doing well, what we're not doing well, um, and how we can uh, how we can improve. Mm -hmm. And the whole point was, going back to the board accountability plan, is that we can't be held accountable for something that isn't being implemented well. Very clear. So, um, well, we wouldn't reach our goals unless we knew how it's being implemented and how to change those. So, Thank Madam you. Chair, I'll um, accept the friendly amendments that have, um, for clarity um, and include program evaluation um, in my motion. Okay. Are there other expectations well, as it relates to the audit? So just, just a final um, overview of what it's going to include, what's going to be included in the audit. And that's a question. No, no. Okay, okay. Once, once you um, communicate with the Council mm -hmm. of Great City Schools, yes. and they're going to be able to say to what extent they can provide those Absolutely. services. So I think we, we, sh we are due a courtesy of knowing sure. what they can and cannot do. Mm -hmm. Right. So would you like idea. me to share the statement of work with the board prior to asking them officially to move forward? Sure. Yes. Okay. <coughs> as well as their feedback. Yes. Well, yeah, so you'd have to <coughs> present it to them, get their right. feedback before mm -hmm. we signed on to it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. That's, okay, I'm just writing this down. I second that. That was my part okay. of my comment. So okay. That I would like to see what. Uh, specific specific um, items we want them to look at and certainly beyond compliance yes. and uh, mm -hmm. focused on their programming. Okay. If, okay. If I may. So uh, working backwards from that, if, if the uh, if the council has done uh, special education audits for other divisions, it might be of value to just ask them if they would share mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the audits that they think would be um, uh, that align with what we're asking for in Norfolk in that way the board and administration can just simply take a look at what's what they've done in other divisions and see if that meets the uh, the goals for the board uh, the other item I'm uh, a little surprised that there would be no um, uh, no nothing that anyone could share with you in terms of um, goals expectations or work around the audit that Actually, the special education audit discussion has been around us uh, in the school boards of county plan and has been around for two, two, yeah, at least a couple of years. Yes. So, um, um, and I know we've discussed it this year, so I would ask if uh, you got it. Pardon me? I'm just saying you got it. You know, you, I have what? You have a copy of it. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. I mean, normally you have it. Do you have a copy of it? Yes, okay. we, we have a copy of it. I don't know. We've, what what, 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 what are y'all talking about? A copy of what? what? No, I mean, it, Rodney normally has lots of information, so I was just asking, do you have a copy of it, of the parameters? You said 2017. I don't, I don't know that I do. That's what my, uh, um, you know, you all cut across me, so you get me confused. So <laughs> I was just simply trying to say that Dr. Birdsong mentioned that she had contacted, I think, purchasing and, and didn't see any. Mm -hmm. evidence of it getting to purchasing what I was saying is I would think that some other department somebody somewhere would have started working on forming these things because we have talked about it. I have to go back and search but in terms of um, that that was what I was responding to saying that that is 
surprising to me, and maybe we need to check with some others on on trying to track that down because that's been mm -hmm. talked about. Because you know, I, I did ask our previous superintendent, and, and she yeah. told me that okay. that she was down to one vendor. Remember, well, she said she had down to two. She, had she said she was already two, doing so it. Whoever would have been a part of that process. Two, two vendors. Two vendors. Yeah, two vendors. Yeah. Yeah. That was okay. the last Okay, Miss Bassine, and then we're going to call the question. Yeah, and I, I was just going to uh, apologize, but what I meant was just to clarify, it's been in our board accountability plan to do it, um, mm -hmm. to have a special education mm -hmm. program review since at least 2016-17 right. um, to get to that point. And we've had other program reviews um, in the queue, so it's not that it was, you know, over, the, over time hadn't been done. Mm -hmm. It's just we're, we're getting to the point where we can actually do it and complete it was where we had left off. And, and now I, too, um, okay. felt like someone in the division should should know if I'm not sure. there was some progress in place okay. on that front. So can you just restate <laughs> yes. the motion? <laughs> Thank you. Lots of notes here. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to move that we direct the superintendent um, to conduct a, um, well, to present to the Council of Great City Schools our scope of work regarding a special education um, program evaluation um, and audit, and that you report back to the board um, on those findings for mm -hmm. final approval. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. No, no. Well, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. I'm, you I'm, moved it. It's already been moved. I'm just making a yeah. friendly amendment to yeah. it. I'm just Actually, seeing what you And, and just wanted, what I also thought I heard is that before that statement of work uh, is goes to the Council of Great City Schools that we have a chance to right. to look at mm -hmm. it first. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, Ms. Ms. Bassine? Aye. Campson? Yes. Clanton? Aye. Smith? Aye. Martin? Aye. Jordan? Aye. Gabriel. Aye. Okay. Now there's clear direction. So this progress. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Next item on the agenda: human resources. Okay. Madam Chair, um, it was brought to my attention that um, last year um, we were able to provide some stipends um, for teachers uh, to uh, who would be working at what was deemed schools that were challenged by retention. And um, so this afternoon, we've asked Mr. Billups to um, provide us with a report of the results of those efforts, and then we can draw our own conclusions. So, Mr. Billups, I think he, he stepped out. Yeah. Okay. So, so I have some comments that um, probably can fill up some time until he gets oh, here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you think it would be beneficial to have him in the room to hear the comments, though? Would that be beneficial? Oh, I, I don't mind going ahead and, you know, okay. I'll okay. answer the questions to the best of my ability. And, and okay. we've d discussed this before, Dr. Birdsong. Yes, ma'am. And that's, as you mentioned, at the beginning of the year, last year, uh, we were made aware that teachers were given stipends for hard to fill schools, mm -hmm. and now we're getting the results of that. Um, the other information I'd like to see throughout the year yes, that can help the board see how we're progressing and it ties back into the whole equity bit of the schooling, mm -hmm. the schools, is what, what are the number of authorized positions in yeah. these schools? At the beginning of the year, how many of those positions are filled? How many of those positions are vacant? Mm -hmm. And we already get the rest of the information in terms of retention um, or <coughs> attrition. We get the rest of the attrition information. But for us to truly be able to That's see to you. <laughs> how we're resourcing these schools, at least with teachers, um, we need to be able to see that information. And so just seeing these numbers Sure. Don't tell us a picture, and we need a picture painted for us to be able to make informed decisions. And we agree with you 100%. Um, Mr. Billups and I met maybe a, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we've met, met a couple of times um, about the suggestions that you had in moving forward with additional data that would help you to make informed decisions. And so um, we are prepared 
at the next uh, business meeting. We've been playing around with a variety of charts, um, probably how many, six different ways to show you the information, the pivot tables and you know all other types of pie charts and graph charts so that you can clearly see the number of allocated positions per school, um, the number of uh, long-term subs, um, at any given moment and we, we're even going to break it out into di two different types of long-term substitute situations. We have long-term subs due to vacancies <coughs> and we also have them because for, for whatever reason a staff member may be out on FMLA or another instance which would qualify them to be out for an, ext an extended period of time and we can't have a, an authorized person in the position Understand. full time. So we have been um, looking at the data and we are prepared to present it to you in a variety of ways. You just need to tell us in which direction you would like to go. Okay. So we did hear you and we're ready to provide you with that information. Thank you. So again, Mr. Billups, without further ado, Mr. Billups will share with you um, the results of having the stipends um, for our teachers at the six schools. And I think this year we are prepared to move forward with providing st stipends for the classified staff as well, I think. Yes, okay, sure. that's right. Okay, so Mr. Billups, without further ado. Okay, good afternoon, school board members. Afternoon. Um, what you have in front of you are the results of our um, incentive payments that were made to our uh, what we consider to be our hard to staff schools. Just a, a brief um, recapturing of how the, the six schools were selected. We looked at three years worth of previous data to determine what schools had the most number of vacancies when school was um, opened back up at the beginning of each year and which schools just seem to be the hardest actually staff over over a period of three years and these are the six schools that um, surfaced and so that's how those schools ended up being selected so <clears throat> last year so last year we met with them we met with each of the schools gave each of the each of the teachers gave them the, um, the document that they needed to sign to explain how this program was going to work. Now, the way the program worked is that this program was for any person who was on a teaching contract within that school. So that would include classroom teachers as well as non-classroom teachers on, on a teacher's contract. So that would include individuals such as social workers, psychologists, speech pathologists. If they were on that um, a teacher's contract, then they became eligible. Now, some of those individuals are itinerant and they don't all work um, at a certain school er every day they may have two or three schools so we made sure that the amount of the stipend that they received was appropriate for the amount of time that they spent at that school so that's that's a little bit of the history on how we got there so what do our numbers look like at the um, at the end overall in the report that you're looking at those in green that you will see they show improvement um, and then we can take a look at this and see what, well, how did it improve? So let's take a look at Chesterfield Academy first. You'll see that the turnover at the end of 1718, there were eight teachers who turned over um, at Chesterfield, um, then representing a 19% um, turnover percentage. And then this year there were seven, so the turnover percentage went down, albeit small, there was a, a one person difference. It represented a 2.3% improvement. And what I provided for you is information that says the average number of years of the experience of the teachers who turned over, for Chesterfield it was three three years average and those reasons to the right <clears throat> are what you see that the reasons that those who did leave what are the reasons why they told us that they left um, three were for personal reasons two for personal illness one person had a licensure requirement issue and then one other person went to Virginia Beach so that's the information that they cited for us and as you look at the report and you go down the report you'll see it's arranged the same for um, each of the um, each of the individuals. Okay. Could, could I ask? Um, I understand why you were selecting these schools because they certainly have the highest turnover rate. My question, and they're all some of our struggling schools, and, and my um, question is, in some of the schools that we have that are not on this list but are, who are in our high poverty neighborhoods, um, they have a culture of celebration and morale building and 
and they do a lot of extra things that maybe keep their turnover down and and their reward for that is they're not included in this mm -hmm. and and I have and this. and I have a little concern about that because I mean I'm I go into some some of the schools that you would think might be on this list um, because it, it's, it's a lot of hard work although once again as I always say every single child in those schools can be proficient um, but but because of the culture and the environment that's been built in those buildings the teachers stay because they appreciate the amount of support they get so I'm not sure how to address it yeah. but it's I know that there's a little feeling there that you know the harder you work and the better your results the less the less you get right right that concern has been brought to our attention and um, Dr. Birdsong and I have discussed that if this was the our first blush into trying to do something if you recall yes. we knew that there mm -hmm. were some issues with retention and all so we were trying to figure out early on sure. what are some of the options that we have so we employed and this was this a great one. effort this right was, so this yeah. was the first thing but in in trying to continue and think forward about how do we what are some other things that we could possibly look at and do what you're citing is one of the things that we did recognize that you know is this could have the perception that it's a punishment to some of those schools who are tough but the folks actually stay mm -hmm. so that is something that we have recognized that we will like to take a look at thank you very okay. much yes. so i want to make sure i'm reading this correctly looking at the top line with chesterfield and 1819 teacher turnover all seven of these teachers receive incentives Yes, they did receive incentives to go there, yes. So this whole list is only a list of teachers who received incentives. That left. That left. They, these are the people who, the, at this, they were at this location. They left. They received an incentive because they were at that location, but now they're not returning for the 1920 school year. And I thought what we were going to see is how the incentives not just turnover but how the incentives were working and if it was a practice that we would continue to bring teachers into those schools so how many total from this seven did all seven turn over oh, what i'm trying to ask was the full population seven and then there was a hundred percent that we provided incentives that turned over I see you shaking your head, but we don't see it in here how it works. No, no, no. All the teachers in the building got the stipend. Every single Every teacher. Every single teacher. Everyone everything. who's on a teacher's contract, contract. or a non-classroom teacher, but on a teacher's contract. Right. But I didn't see that in oh, the. Because that's. Yeah. Yeah. When, that's, when, yeah. But we. So that's the, that's the whole that you're looking for. Hold on. I thought when we when when we were presented the report at the beginning of last year, that it had new teachers coming in. Who received incentives to come to the school? Mm -mm. No, it's for every teacher in the building. That every was, teacher in that building so, is received that. That's so, your that's your base. So for all two, four, six of these, every single teacher teaching in that school receives incentives. That was on a teacher's contract or a non class or a non classroom teacher, but on a teacher's contract. Okay. Yes. And see, I didn't understand it oh, to be okay, that I'm way. Sorry. I thought the incentives were given to new teachers to attract them to come and work in the school that's what i thought was okay taking place. yes the new teachers received it but also the veterans who had okay. returned and when we would present the other reports to you that dr birdsong is speaking of then you'll be able to see clearly how many teachers are actually in each of these buildings representing then how many actually left and the overall percentages and all but one of the things we see from this, though, is the incentive isn't, isn't really impacting the retention. In large numbers this first year, that, that was right. one of the conclusions we drew as well. Mm -hmm. Although it's improvement, it's not substantial. Mm -hmm. Ms. Pacine. Uh, oh, oh I'm sorry. What are you doing? So, so, so what are some of the, what, what is some of the discussion that's taking place to 
improve upon what we're seeing here? Well, one thing that we're doing this year is, is as well uh, we are adding in for the teacher assistance. There was some kind of concern from others that had, you know, hey, we work with the students as well, but we're not receiving anything. So this year we were able to include funds that the teacher assistants who work alongside the teachers will also receive um, some of the incentive monies as well. As well as we can look at our reasons as to why our folks, why, what, what, why they told us that they were leaving anyway, and see are there opportunities to improve upon that. You will see, for example, when you look at um, Jay Cox, even though Jay Cox did not appear to have improvement, um, the difference of the three folks, four of those folks left because they retired. And they didn't give any ways, reason. We talked about there's a couple of ways you can look at that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people have their 30 years, they may decide to stay another 10 years because, you know, they feel engaged, they don't feel tired, they feel supported, and therefore they won't retire. So there are a couple of different ways you can look at retirement. I'm sorry, Mr. Billis. That's okay. That's that. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I lost my okay. You missed Pacine. Yeah, because I had another thought, but I lost it. Sure. Yeah. Okay. It'll come back. All right. um, so as you look at this, there are some other things that I would like you know, us to pay attention to. I think after one year, it's hard to really right. come to any real conclusion. Mm -hmm. And you know, we need to have some longevity to, to really determine the impact. But as we do that, some of the other things um, that I would like us to look at is what are the characteristics? Are we losing teachers in specific content areas? Are these teachers um, special ed inclusion teachers? You know, we know that um, just from our, you know, reviewing our personnel docket every month, it seems like that is, um, you know, a hard to staff. And that's not a Norfolk thing. That's a, a mm -hmm. national thing. Um, you know, that those are math, science, and special education are, are typically where you see higher turnover rates. Um, are we seeing the same thing? How do these turnover rates compare to our district as a whole? Are they comparable? Are they better? You know, those are some comparisons that I would like uh, to see us make when we look at it, other than just, you know, this is the, this is the total sample, this is how many left, and, you know, really being able to compare um, what's going on there. So those are some things um, I'd like us to look at. And the other, other piece is, are the teachers that are leaving are they teachers that are um, certified via, via, you know, an alternative pathway? Are they, is there, is there a need for greater support or um, attention to be given to those teachers? And those are things that I think we should uh, pay attention to because as, as you mentioned, there may be other kinds of support that may right. impact whether a teacher stays in the, in the building or not, aside from monetary. So, um, yeah. I'd like um, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. <laughs> Ms. Martin. All right, thank you. So um, I think that last year when I heard about this incentive pay, I thought, okay, well, this is you know kind of a good idea. It's definitely just um, a very targeted idea. There's a, you know not very comprehensive. Um, but if you look at human resources research, I mean, there's tons of research out there on job retention, and pretty much I think it's universally known that you can't pay your way out of out of a problem. Um, right. That adding that piece, which I'm sorry that it hasn't been added, it's kind of you know, but having the piece that culture of support and appreciation, and it's a place that someone looks forward to going to work to every day. I mean, that is that is paramount. I mean, without that, I mean, there's no amount of money that we can throw at anyone in that building in these buildings that's going to keep them. Mm -hmm. So I really think we need to focus a lot more on building a culture of appreciation and support and making it a fun place to work because it should be fun these are children they're doing you yeah. know i imagine teachers are doing what they want to do for their you know careers and um and yeah i mean it's i i just can't imagine being with a bunch of kids and and thinking about my paycheck at the i mean you know obviously it's a necessity and and it's it very valuable but i mean you want people to feel appreciated for what they're doing Ms. Clinton. mr Clinton. I just wanted to piggyback on what Ms. Bassine had asked, and I think it's, it's also what Ms. Martin has, yep. and, and bring it back to Mr. Billups. Was there any coaching or master teacher mentoring that was added on and coupled with the, the incentive for any of those individuals that were in there? Not specifically as part of the incentive offering. However, 
our team has worked with and provided information and reports to Dr. Cataldo's teams, who are the math specialists and the reading specialists and all that, to target and identify who are the new teachers in the school, who are the substitute teachers in the school, where are they located so that his folks can then know where they are and where they should be going and who they should be focusing on. So we partnered with them on that last year. So I pivot then to Dr. Cataldo. What, what are we doing, I guess, within these hearts of staff schools that are here to coach and mentor and to support these teachers? Well, uh, there is a state-run mentor program that we um, have, each school does have a mentor lead in there, and then we have monthly meetings with our new teachers and our leads. Uh, we provide staff development and professional development to all of our uh, new teachers as well as our long-term subs. So we do provide a level of support uh, as Mr. Billups said, we also uh, know exactly where our schools are. I mean, we go to a school that has maybe 10 new teachers. We increase our level of um, support in those schools, primarily just because they have that many new, new folks there in a the school. Okay. All right. Ms. Smith? I want to say I agree with what Ms. Martin said. Also, <clears throat> providing incentives to the assistants, we know that that's going to impact the budget. Um, so we need to see how, mm -hmm. not that we're in disagreement with it, but we still need to be transparent in how it's going to impact the budget. Also, we notice, or I notice, there's a large dump, well, I'm not going to use the word dump, a large exodus of employees at the end of the school year, termination of contracts, if you will. That's where the largest number occurs. Um, and I'm just assuming people finish their contract before they leave, which is kind of wise, which presents a recruitment issue where you have to fill a lot of vacancies in the few months that are left to begin the school year. So I'd like to know, not right here, but at some point, what efforts do we, can we put in place to minimize this impact? You've told us before that you can't overfill a billet, so to speak. But I think knowing where these vacancies are and making sure that we have a gliding scale of recruitment and offers can help minimize the impact that this has on us. Yes, certainly. We, um, it is a balance because as you stated, as I've stated, we cannot over, 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 um, staff our positions but we do as we're as we're out recruiting we are able to offer what we call early commitment letters early commitments on our part it's letting a candidate know that we're really interested in you we really would like to offer you a position we can't necessarily offer you a contract on that day because at that point when we're out and we're recruiting and we're traveling we the budget hasn't for the next school year has not been finalized or approved yet so we have to be really careful with um, with um, trying to offer a contract to someone that may or may not be able to be um, fulfilled but we do offer early commitment letters but that's not legal or binding on our part or on the part of the um, of the um, the teacher candidate but yeah we do what we can to stay in contact with folks so that they know that we are interested in them and then as soon as we are um, know that we have a budget that's been finalized and then it's been approved then that's when we can start right away with um, with um, issuing our contracts and if you recall this past year the budget you all approved the budget in May, I believe, as opposed it was usually the first meeting in June. So that did help as well that it was done a little bit sooner. Yeah, so but we're seeing that like 70% of those terminations occur in June. And that's normal that's, that's, because yeah, a is. teacher's contract for all school public school divisions ends on June 30th. I get and it. so that's when most of your folks are working towards um, leaving. They want a clean break. Now, you would hope that folks would tell us, you know, in February, March, April, that they're going to leave if that's what they know they're going to do. But frankly and honestly, many, many teachers do not do that. They may know that they're going to leave in February or March, but they are under no obligation at that time to let you know that. Some people will. If they know they're going to relocate or they know they're, they're expecting a baby and they don't expect to turn back to the classroom, then they will let you know. But many wait until the very end, the month of June, to let you know that they're not going to return. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this, this, this 
discussion to a closure. Dr. Bertong, um, thank you very much for the information. I think the important thing for us to know is that already for this budget year, it has been approved yes. to continue the stipends for these schools and to continue the stipends for the teacher assistance. Yes. So that's been already approved. We know the budget impact of that. Yeah. What, what will be good for the board to come back to this time around next year is again looking at this information and then really, really hitting home on the comment that Ms. Martin made about what are we doing also to address culture in a building. Um, and then it will be up to us uh, on what Ms. Bassine said, then, you know, and I don't even think that two years would even make a difference, but if we want to continue this um, as a recommendation in the budget, again, coming back to the board, what do we have control over? You know, is this going to be a recommendation that we would want to continue? Mm -hmm. um, and so those are the direction items that we need from you, Dr. Birdsong, um, as we think about this topic. And I think that it was very good intention on our part to see, you know, what are we, what can we do in order to impact teacher retention? Because we know the most important thing that influences achievement for a child is the, the teacher um, that is working with them every single day. So um, thank you very much. We're going to go ahead. Dr. And Gabriel, may I, may I comment? Oh, okay. Quick comment. So I just want to tie it this, this work back to the school board's accountability plan. Because I think we, we have to, uh, you know, we deal with complex issues. And I think what our tendency is, is as we receive individual reports, we then focus on the individual report. But going back to the conversation we had earlier, so I, I agree with Ms. Martin. So in our accountability plan, you know, we were talking about, there, we know there are many factors that impact retention and also impact student outcomes. So in our accountability plan, if we have set this one, three, five year window of time, these things that we're looking at now is part of that window. So just one thing that we did was around this retention piece. But we also talked about, uh, you know, looking at climate reports and uh, doing the, the equity audit and doing some other things. So I think it's important for us uh, as a board and as a governance team that one, we always come back and look at what the research is. The state has been doing a lot of research on this. The task force that I've been co-chairing with VSBA, we've done a lot of research on this. There's a uh, teacher retention um, summit that's been held with the uh, Department of Education and UVA. So it's a lot of information that we can do as part of our Board of Distinction <coughs> research so when we have these discussions, we continue to look at the, the puzzle of many pieces and not get caught just in the, in the piece. So in one final comment, just as an example, so even in our discussion today, we have all talked about some of the challenges that um, uh, exist at Southside STEM Academy. We also know that Southside STEM Academy was recognized for they received, they were one of the awardees of the continuous improvement. So I think even in our own language, in our own discussion, we talk about rewarding and acknowledging folks for their hard work. I think we also have to be careful that we are highlighting the accomplishments as we talked about earlier, but also not shying away from the challenges that we see to continue to see that mo momentum forward. So that's, those are my comments. Great, okay. Thank you. Dr. Birdsong. Um, educational planning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Billis. Um, Madam Chair, before we start with this uh, school start times discussion, um, we're going to ask Ms. <coughs> Robinson, Carol Robinson, our Senior Director of Purchases and Supply, to, to join us um, at the table. Um, we have been working to make sure that we're ready to open school for our new 3-8 um, program at the Lake Taylor School. Um, Mrs. Robinson serves as our project manager, and she has done a phenomenal job making sure that everyone is where they need to be <laughs> and on time, and that materials and supplies and furniture is, you know, um, shipped to schools in a timely manner and she's done a magnificent job and so we've asked her just to come before you today just to provide an update of where we are 
Um, it's my understanding that this week uh, the teachers are, are moving from Poplar Hall to uh, Fairlawn. The move from Fairlawn to the Lake Taylor School has already happened. And so um, Mrs. Robinson will give us kind of a high level overview of all of the support and where we are today with that. Absolutely. Mrs. Good Robinson. Afternoon, school board. Uh, yes, as an update to the Lake Taylor School K-8 transition, what is uh, currently underway and is almost complete right now is the build out of the special ed rooms, the new computer lab, conversion of a new science lab and prep area. We've also uh, been moving and removing some of the older mobiles off property. The Poplar Halls playground has been brought over and is, is installed in the new Lake Taylor School area. Um, and overall, we have been executing against the plan that was approved in late April. As far as some school moves, I'd like to report that the Fairlawn building contents was moved from, uh, from Fairlawn over to Lake Taylor the week of July 22nd. And Poplar Halls has been moved this week, uh, finished about two hours ago. <laughs> um, everything has been successful. Everything's over at the schools, their new schools. Teacher on-sites are at uh, Lake Taylor currently right now, and they're unpacking their boxes and setting everything up in their classrooms. We have teachers at the new Fairlawn will be arriving August 14th and 15th to do the same. Uh, we've had a lot of staffs very excited, the buildings, everybody is very excited about it. And even though it's been a tight timeline, we've got a very confident team, very involved, very energized, and I'm very confident that we'll complete this on time before school starts. Right. I'd like to hear more about the communication to the families. Has there been an, I mean, we ha since our public meetings, I haven't yes. really. Yes, so I'm going to ask Dr. Legrand to join us at the table. Um, I know we have been working on a, an FAQ to provide to the community and to the parents, and Dr. Legrand has been working with both um, built the co principals of the school to um, send out a parent letter about transportation and a variety of other things. So I'll let her provide her own update. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yes, we are midway through um, finishing up, or more than midway finishing up our FAQ. We're adding some information to our educational planning website. Um, Mr. Coleman and some of the other folks in school leadership, along with Dr. Cataldo, they have completed letters that went to the parents around April, May, and even June. Uh, so those are some letters that we'll be sharing um, on that educational planning website so that the community can see what those letters look like. Um, but those did go to specific families, as did the principals uh, communicate to the individual uh, parents. The principals recently, the co-principals of Lake Taylor, uh, just did a robocall on, I believe it was last Thursday, and they have another one planned for the 11th to remind uh, parents of the transition, uh, uniforms, those kinds of things. And um, in addition to that, they have two days where the sixth grade transition program will happen. So sixth graders get used to using um, um, transitioning from class to class and if they use lockers at different places and things like that I don't think they'll use in lockers at Lake Taylor um, but they'll have the sixth grade transition program which is a two-day program and then there will be a meet and greet um, and the principals are working on that flyer and letter to go home that should be done within the next week and a half or so and then that'll also post on the website uh, we've changed the website so if you go to the popular halls uh, page you'll see now it links you to Fairlawn so nice new picture of Fairlawn and telling everybody that this is the new school that you'll be going to and then our um, video crew with TV 47 will be uh, doing a little piece with the um, principals of Lake Taylor the co-principals to just get people really excited about what's going to happen so yes lots going on yes <laughs> Ms. Basine Ms. Campson. Is there, um, is there any sort of transition uh, program available for the third through fifth graders? I'll defer to Dr. Cataldo and the executive directors if there's a, I don't think there's a transition program. Can you explain? Um, well, I know, I, I believe some of our, some of our other schools that, that are either K-8 or 3-8 have um, you know, at the different entry points, you know, have a transition for that, for both 
like an orientation like an orientation yes. like the same similar to yes. the sixth grade mm -hmm. transition right anytime yeah. it's really when students come to the new schools yeah we have orientations parents nights mm -hmm. uh, and really have the opportunity for students and parents to come out and see the school see what the school looks like yes okay and we'll also we just recently um miss tanner of course she's doing double duty and communications as well um, but she just recently um, was able to facilitate us getting the civic league list so we're working on that as well as the pta list and i met today with cooperative strategies to talk about some of the ideas that i have to make sure communication is effective and we're making sure we get that information out to the community so one thought is that we would have a sign up list for people that are in the community we can do robocalls and we've done um, those kinds of things but those are people that are in the district but for people that are out in the community that just want that information they can um, sign up to be added to the list so that they can be communicated with when we send out um, various things of that nature so um, cooperative strategies and myself will be working on a communications plan and uh, getting that uh, nailed down in the uh, next uh, several weeks great and I just have a quick update on the previous question Ms. Vecina had so August 29th that's the date. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be the date. It's from 3 to 7 p.m. And it's going to be for all three through seventh graders or new students that have not been at that school before. So, yeah, it was just a quick question from Ms. Robinson. What about painting? I thought painting inside and outside yes. of that building was yes. going to be done. A lot of that is being done at um, actually both of the schools. Oh, okay. Yes. Fairlawn as well as Lake Taylor. Absolutely. Yes, okay, thank you. I Martin. Mine's along the same lines. When I went to Poplar Halls last fall, mm -hmm. I noticed that, it's particularly in the media center, the tables were adult size and the chairs were children size, and it was really a mess. So, I guess my question to you is: Is everything right size now for the children that it's serving? I hope that those didn't transition over. Well, the plan was that Poplar Halls moved all of their furniture, and I am actually meeting with Principal Lightfoot on Monday to go through classroom by classroom do they have the age appropriate size chairs and desks and is everything in line and if it's not for me that's my responsibility to take away to make sure that it gets in there okay absolutely absolutely <laughs> great job I, I just have to say that uh, Ms. Robinson you and your department do mm -hmm. stellar work I know that the transition that you did with Camp Allen over the Christmas break was quite an undertaking and I don't think that um, many folks know that while some people are out on you know, vacation you all are working very hard to make things great so that when the kids walk through the door on the first day everything is perfect and i just want to say thank you to you and your team dr birdsong and everyone for highlighting how much you do behind the scenes that really doesn't get recognized so thank you very much thank you yes okay all right dr birdsong next Okay, um, I'm going to ask uh, David Sturtz and Matt Sachs to come to the podium. So we were recently informed that Tracy Richter is no longer with Cooperative Strategies, and so um, we have two consultants that will be helping to facilitate our work around school start times. Um, many of you may know uh, Matt. Matt has um, worked very closely with Tracy on a variety of initiatives for the school division, and so um, many of you may already know him. So I'm introducing today David Sturtz. Um, David is a partner with Cooperative Strategies, and he's been with the company for seven years, and they have had the opportunity to come in and quickly meet with a lot of the um, building, not building, um, central office leaders and um, departments around um, the work that we are moving forward. So without further ado, Matt and David, thank you for being here. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the board. Dr. Birdsong, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, Tracy uh, mentored me in the business. I've known him personally for over 10 years. Uh, we were personal friends, and I came from running a tutoring company for eight years, working one-on-one -on -one with students. That was my company's focus that I ran. Uh, working with 24 districts across Ohio and Florida and then Kat got to talk with him he offered me a job he mentored me in the in the position and uh, I wish him all the best as he looks as his swan song and in his next chapter here uh, so uh, just know that you will receive the same level of commitment that you're used to with Tracy uh, this is our business we don't play around 
<laughs> this is, uh, we think that we, this opportunity, this kind of planning work can make a very positive and material impact on student, ach student achievement, students' lives holistically. Uh, for in a behind the scenes role, that's why we do it, and, and you will see uh, nothing uh, different in the dedication level that you've seen to date. So I pledge that to you. And I look forward to looking, working with you. We have got up to speed uh, working with Matt and, uh, and your leadership, Dr. Dr. Bailey and uh, uh, Dennis and others. Uh, so we are, are ready to roll. And so I'm going to go through a uh, little PowerPoint here. I will speak for no more than 10 minutes on this presentation, focusing the majority of the time on the final slide, which is uh, the pivot point of where we are right now with options for the start time change. With the timeline, well, we believe uh, firmly after discussions with the leadership that we are 30 days out from a firm recommendation to bring to you in a September meeting. So we are we're near the fin end of this finish line here and uh, should lay out very clearly where we stand. Just in brief about where we are here, Matt and I cut our teeth assessing Norfolk schools uh, together. Actually, walk-in schools uh, back in the day, 2013 in capacity. I was joined uh, just a year prior to that. And Matt's been working directly ever since, and I've been uh, at the water cooler ever since, picking up on stuff along the way, and now firmly, firmly involved and look forward to leading this project with Matt and moving forward. So uh, to date, what's been done in the process uh, through this year, uh, meeting with the task force uh, is as late as uh, last year. L we're looking to bring them in and the communications team, uh, team talking to Dr. LeGrand earlier today, looking to bring them back in the fall as after the decisions are made and, and implementation planning moving forward. We met with staff, school board members. You, you know you've received several updates from, from Tracy. We've done the school capacity analysis that uh, I cut my teeth in back in the day. Uh, we do your live-in projections every year. We, we work on the master plan that involves repurposing and, and boundaries in terms of Lake Taylor moving to a 3-8, Poplar Halls, so, so on and so forth. As this start time uh, plan uh, comes to a sunset, we're going to pick up that plan here uh, in the next uh, 30 days and move forward working with your leadership to prioritize the next phases in the master plan. What will be the action items for the remainder of this school year? Uh, been a part of the educational specifications. That's uh, another hat that I wear with the team and uh, happy to provide uh, any further work on that. And feeder patterns, that is something that we uh, have made some recommendations for some small changes in the past. Uh, we are going to look at that more holistically moving forward and getting directions from Dr. Birdsong and team about how we prioritize that in the, master, the long-term master plan, leading up to the start time planning, which is where we currently are. Next slide here. So the survey results, uh, oh, this is working. All right, survey results you've seen before, so I just wanted to do a quick flyover, uh, two quick slides on that. We did have nearly 1,500 respondents, uh, and those respondents, when I looked at them relative to mi elementary, middle, and high school, the parents and teachers that follow proportionally to, to how many students you have, generally speaking, elementary, middle, high. So you had a representative, representative sampling by grade level there. Uh, and what the overarching message is, yes, open to change. You took that message and you, uh, you approved a school start change moving forward and uh, provide a little bit more detail. The proposed start times you see at, on the survey at the time, you see listed to the right at the current. And uh, I aggregated up the, par the parent and teacher satisfaction levels uh, by grade level there. And you see on a net about two thirds satisfied at the elementary and middle level with uh, the least satisfaction at the high school level and uh, by a factor of two, the most dissatisfaction. And that's uh, really where we've taken direction and uh, to begin the to continue this conversation with your leadership. This is this next slide here is just a uh, where is it? There we go. Just more breaking down that those uh, agreement levels by by elementary teacher, elementary teacher, middle teacher, high school. I, I aggregated up in the slide previous the parent and teacher scores, but wanted you to see those more discreetly uh, again in 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 this document. So flying over because you've seen this all before. Don't want to waste your time, but I did want to, to do a flyover. Uh, make sure we uh, were up. To, got back to where we started. So start times. We uh, propose that we will work with your department, with the leadership here to have a, pro a pr proposal, recommended proposal this month to bring to you uh, next month. Uh, we meeting with the ELT and with the de different departments, we uh, 
we did meet today with communications. We met yesterday with transportation. We met yesterday and today with athletics. And uh, we are scheduling next meeting with wraparound services to talk about the implications for the change, particularly as it pertains to elementary level. Uh, when it comes to key drivers of the start times, as you are aware, transportation and transportation efficiencies is a driver. Health and wellness of students is a big driver as a uh, primary driver as uh, identified there in the survey and the research I presented to you previous. And uh, some of the implications of those on the athletic side of the fence have to do with lighting, and I'll discuss those in a minute, and the different options to, to uh, maintain your current level of programming while still making the start time. There's a couple ways to, to achieve that end. Uh, and then uh, wraparound services for all students, but particularly the elementary school, which would have now the earliest dismissal time in the proposed stagger. So uh, without a, belaboring any more points, I'm going to go to the new information. Now this is a little bit harder to read on the big screen. Uh, that's why we have it printed off in front of you, but here's, here's the different options. Option A, this is your proposed start time that you brought out to the community in the survey. This is uh, high, high school starting last, middle school second, elementary first. So elementary, middle, and high. That was the proposition. Now, the original concept for that, that would be it would require lighting at your high school field so that you can maintain your uh, full programming for the six weeks in the fall, six weeks in spring, when, uh, winter, spring, when uh, the sun's setting earlier than your practice is complete. So we got 12 weeks out of the year to deal with to varying degrees. The original uh, estimate there was for $3 million to address five high schools, all five high schools at your, uh, at your uh, 12 different fields there, softball, baseball. Now, we, in talking with your different departments, talking specifically with athletics, uh, realize that there is a, a plan B to achieve that same end. And that is that if the $3 million is, is unreachable in the next 12 months, which let's just say that's a challenge. I would, I would uh, get some nods on that. So another way to achieve that same end, just keep your level of programming, is to make investments at five of your fields. And those would be a uh, proposal at, uh, at Booker T, at Granby, and at, um, where were we? Norview. In Norview, that's correct. To make some investments at the softball and baseball fields there. And while doing that, in, to put the extra dollars in uh, to make Booker T uh, field, baseball field regulation size, putting up the fence and that kind of thing. Because while you're at it, just put in the extra 40, 50 K and, and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the plan uh, that, that Booker T field, making that regulations in both plan A, for A1 and A2. So that's, that's a sort of a given plan uh, to accommodate with the lighting. So, if we don't have the, the full $3 million in capital to invest in, in making all 12 fields uh, lit, lit, we could look at a plan for about 940, 950K, give or take, that would allow uh, for you to make the switch to high school being the third stagger and maintain all of your after school sports and activities. Uh, those, uh, those teams that would need to, to practice or have, have uh, rather have games after hours that don't have lights on their field would have to travel to another N uh, NPS school that would have them, but you would be able to accommodate, uh, accommodate your, your after school programming that way with the lighting. The, the athletic impact there uh, we talked about, you know, the lighting does allow for additional, service, pr additional uh, programming to occur throughout the year and for the city to use after the fact. So there could be, there's an opportunity for some joint use, some, some sharing of resources, uh, sharing of responsibility, sharing of, of assets. Transportation impact, there's a lot of numbers in here. And I can't read them from the screen, so I'm gonna do my best to do them from memory. So what we got uh, is we have looking at the different kind of numbers of runs that you do in the morning and the runs that you do in the evening. What you see is significant reduction in the number of runs that have to, that could occur, that would occur with high school as the third stagger. And that is because <coughs> elementary schools, as you know, being closer to home, by and large, these are shorter runs. In the morning, you're not dealing with base traffic because you're doing neighborhood to neighborhood. You're not getting on the larger highways. The, uh, with, with the elementary now running first in this session, uh, those runs can be much more efficient. You are actually able to fully staff 
all of your positions. Currently, you have about 230 openings. You have 175 staff currently in bus drivers. And with this movement to a third stagger, you would be able to staff uh, all of your needs at that 175 arc where you stand today and be more efficient in doing it. Currently, transportation informs me in meeting with them that you have several bus drivers, bus drivers that only can run one stagger and then they're sitting. So they're not getting their full six in in a day because simply their route, because it's largely the district-wide programs and others, uh, high schools that are taking them uh, here, hither and yon, they cannot come back and fulfill the full hours of contract so that you're paying for, for, for dead time there. In this switch, when you go to uh, high school as a third stagger, uh, you reduce from, from four to three and every bus driver can run three staggers. So you greatly improve your uh, capacity for efficiency there which uh, logic would dictate you could have some savings down the road. Uh, difficult to quantify, but, but it seems quite, quite possible. Uh, would also have an opportunity for fleet reduction as, as building, as, uh, rather not buildings, as buses get older, you have capital investment needs that are needed in those. You actually need less buses when you're operating uh, this, this many less runs in the AM and the PM. Okay, so that's a high level. Uh, other considerations there is uh, that uh, consensus option is that really that one of these options A is consensus among leadership and uh, gleaning from the survey results would be the preferred option to go this way with uh, elementary first, middle second, high school third. Uh, one of the uh, wraparound services for elementary school would be the, a large other consideration that needs to be fleshed out and what that looks like and that's part of our continued meetings. It uh, doesn't seem insurmountable, it's, it's something to address. In that second A2 option, which is not making all of the field investments right now, but making just under that million mark, you get all of the same benefits on uh, the transportation. You get uh, most of the benefits on athletics, except for the other, you know, the handful of other schools we need to sort of work at over time. With the master plan being that you make that initial investment if possible in uh, before fall of 2020 and plan for the remainder investment, about $2 million, to complete the rest of the sites over the next five years, phasing those in. Now, options B, B1, B2. If that 940, 950 mark is unattainable in the next 12 months, to, it takes about six weeks or so per site to put up those lights, so it would be something to move on uh, in the coming months, if you will. If that is unattainable, you could make high school the second stagger. This would be less than, this really was considered more of the concession option. It could work. Preferred option would be high school third. High school could be later and complete its athletics uh, by the time sun goes down, and so you wouldn't need the lights necessarily. So option B1 is uh, that you make high school the second stagger. Middle school would be the third stagger. And that you work towards those investments of putting in the lights. And once the minimum number of lights are invested, that 940, once that's in place over the coming year or two or whatever it takes, you then switch to the third stagger. You switch the stagger. So the challenge there is that you're making two transitions mm -hmm. over time. Yeah. The benefit is it's a lower initial capital investment. But if you can't scramble to get it right now, the challenge is you've got to do it twice. Mm -hmm. That's moving a lot of that's, cheese. That's a lot. Suboptimal. Um, the you would get some similar impacts, uh, similar transportation efficiencies, though not as great. Uh, one of the challenges that would also occur is that from a middle school perspective, your middle schoolers could be coming home after six. And that's, uh, they would have a, a longer, a later, later day, not longer, but later day. And, and that could be a challenge. Another variation on that theme is you just decide there's no way we're getting the lights uh, in, in any kind of foreseeable future. We're not going to come up with that money. We're not going to get our hands on it. So we're just going to make high school the second stagger and leave it be. Okay. So as you can see, that the, the preferential order kind of goes A1, A2, B1, B2, uh, as discussed with, with leadership as, as uh, informed by the survey. So what we plan to do, and I'll, and I'll wrap up for questions here in just 30 seconds, what we plan to do is uh, flesh out the wraparound services uh, impact here in the plan to accommodate uh, these different scenarios, work with leadership on, on, a, on which of these options, it, confirming the most preferred and the most and what is reasonable, and coming back to you with a recommended path of one of these options uh, in your September board meeting. And with that, I'll take questions.
for further comment. Okay. Questions? Okay. Ms. Messine, Ms. Campson, Mr. Clanton, Ms. Smith. Okay. Um, well, first, a comment. I think front and center when we talk about um, later start times, the health impact. Yes, ma'am. Front and center. Um, although I know the financial piece is what we're, we're focusing on in this slide here. Um, so to that end, um, I have a question about, um, at one point when we began discussions on this, we talked about, um, um, Mr. Richter had made a recommendation of the possibility of renting lighting. Yes, ma'am. Um, for, as we talk about, uh, you know, progressing or uh, through uh, implementing or uh, providing lights at all of our schools, we talked about rental. So mm -hmm. I would like to know where that falls in these um, plan options. Sure. And then um, for option B, I'm assuming that when you say that the differences in the staggers, you're talking about the same times that are recommended in option A that we've talked about, but it would just be that middle school will be in the last Yes, ma'am, that time. is correct. Okay, all right. I just wanted to be sure I understood that. Um, so I'd like to hear more about the, the, the rental lighting. Yeah. The okay. Lighting. So in discussions with Steve and looking at it, uh, the, that the realization that you need the lights for about 12 weeks a year mm -hmm. makes that an, an impractical option. If you needed it, the, the, the renting of lights is typically for events. What you've got to do is you've got to big, you've got to big and a big, bring in a big 18 wheeler. You got to prop this thing up and then you got to leave it. So you're, you are now going to be paying rent on the logistics on that rig uh, and as well as the lights, which is fine for one, two, three weeks worth of event, but 12 weeks staggered over multiple sites for you know six weeks at a time, it was fine. Just the, the money that you're gonna be spending on that, that you're gonna lose is, is too much relative to, the, to your need. And when we looked at sort of the cost to operate these things, we got a quote you know, of 558 to 1118 an hour on operating the lights fully installed uh, so that so the, the cost to operate is fairly low. It's just you coming up with that initial capital investment. Okay. So, and was it considered that right now we have some shared use um, options that we currently uh, utilize with Powhatan Field, for instance? Um, yes, that was part of the Was that part of this Yes, it would be in addition to in addition using to that. those. Okay. And, that, okay. and with the full options that you would have, you know, the full lighted options that you would have, you could make it work for that option A1, the option A2, rather, so the minimal investment for a period of time working towards that full investment. Okay. okay. Thank you. Ms. Campson. Back to the lights again, too. So what, at what point in the year, um, in the fall, do the lights need to start being used? Is it like October? Is it like when we change times? How? When does that happen? I believe, uh, Steve, you could, I think it's mid -October. The end of October. Yeah. So I know you said it took how many weeks to do each school? About six. About, what six, we got. about six weeks. And there are how many schools will we were in your initial in that, one? And that's, yeah, in the, the full, full school, the full three million, that's five schools, 12 different fields. Okay, but the, your option here, your suggested start option, this, is yes. how many fields is that? That is uh, three fields, three schools. And so that would be easily accomplished if we start moving on it From soon. a logistic standpoint, yes. Because we don't start these start times until 2020, so we Correct. don't know the year. If we went all three million, it would, so that's six times three, that's 18 weeks. That would be challenging. Well, if we start, doing it depends it on now. whether or not they can, the vendor can do multiple sites at a time, or if they <coughs> stagger and when they can start. But it could be done. It could be done. They can do two sites at a time. So. Mr. Sutler Miller, why don't you join them at the? Because I'm sure there will be several questions on that a, you're going to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're come on down. Because I want to be. See. I, I just want to be clear in my mind about the timeline. So if we started the light installation in September to get it done and for the for the one million dollar price tag one and so how what would be the proposed the hopeful end time for that installation to be finished would it be ready for the next school year 
For the 2020 school year. Yeah, right, because that's we don't do the start time right. change until 2020, right. so we have a year. Uh, <laughs> these the the lighting company Musco, the national company who who has put our lights up uh, mm -hmm. recently at Powhatan and at Norview. <clears throat> recommended they could do two schools at one time so they would start the electrical work at one school B would do the foundation work once that got done not like an start. assembly line just yeah go along. so but you know the key is getting the work started this year mm -hmm. so yeah and if you want to meet whether option a one or option a two um, we need to figure out some way to start this year mm -hmm. oh. so in order to be ready for I, next I year. I think that's what we were all thinking, yeah. that we would be starting this year. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, okay. So, so we're going to need direction from us on what option we want to go with. Right. Well, if we go with the $1 million option and we start it this year, we'll have time easily. But if we go with the $3 million option, that's when we need to, we need to have you out there digging the foundation for okay. that <laughs> so we can get it started soon. We'll leave early. <laughs> <laughs> But is it That's doable? Also accommodating for weather. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Right. What they don't work in the, they don't do electrical okay. things in the rain. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. That's it. You're good. Okay, I'm Mr. Good. Thank you. Um, okay. First and foremost, welcome. Glad to Thank have you. you. Um, I'm going to pivot to one thing um, that's important that we had heard a lot about last year. Um, well, this past school year, and that's with our task force. And so I'd really send a charge and incumbent upon you all coming in to really keep them engaged and working with them yes, and making sure that they're valued. Yes, sir. Okay. Spoke um, about that this, this morning. Appreciate yes, sir. it. Um, the other item that I had down there, Steve, help me understand, um, what are we doing right now? Um, I was sitting here thinking, um, in the midst of this rain, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> They're all inside. Right? Yeah, they're all inside. <laughs> Notice how the thunder yeah, kind of happened, happened, right, when you were thinking. <laughs> So, um, <laughs> what are we doing right now? Well, I mean, current, I, currently, I, our events are starting at four o'clock. Okay, and we're just talking about baseball, softball, spring events. Okay. Um, they're starting at four o'clock. We have plenty of time to get get them in. Um, our other sports, uh, soccer, track, they're in the stadiums now. We have lights, mm -hmm. so they're not going to be affected. Now, the surface could be affected down the road, but um, we're able to get everything in. If, by our start times, our end times now. Um, but with other districts that we're involved with that are moving to these start times, similar to what we're talking about, will again create some challenges. And, and we're playing the Chesapeake schools currently, so we're not leaving our schools until 4.35 o'clock to get out there for a 5.30, 6 o'clock game currently. So it, it would just, we'll just fall into that routine if, if the, whatever is voted on. So I, I'm, so we have lights. We have lights in our stadiums. In our stadiums. And we have a few lights at, at Lake Taylor High School baseball, Granby softball. But we don't have lights like at Booker T. At Booker T or at Maury. Exactly. So it, this is a, just as much as we're looking at this, this is also an equity issue in respect to all of our schools across the district. Um, as we're, we're kind of, you know, because I know someone on the outside could look at it and say, well, we've got lights. You know, there are people who are out there doing things, but not every one of our schools um, have that. And so this is an opportunity um, for us to kind of really bring everyone up on the same playing field and to be equitable across the district. Right? Okay. That's the goal. So, uh, Dr. Birdsong. Yes, to please. what extent have we prepared for this in terms of our budget? And that was going to be my question because what I'm hearing Steve say right now is that we needed to start the work this school year. And I'm not aware that in terms of the budget that um, was approved last year that there's funding within the budget. And I'm going to turn to Ms. Ingram who is shaking her head no. Remember that discussion. Okay. It, was, it, it wasn't. I, I, I thought I thought that we did have conversations. Yeah, we we did have conversations. Budget. Budget. No. And um, and and we were looking at you know how we could at least get things started. It, I don't think it was ever the full three million because that's all we get as far as capital. Right. But I thought that there was uh, a thought process into how we could build into the budget funds in order to get the lighting started. Needless to say, we have zero right now. Is that what we have? I think we have zero. 
discussion. <laughs> That's a dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> See? Mm -hmm. He doesn't like it. We're going to um, this board meeting? Or yeah. <laughs> be a long way down the dark stairway. <laughs> no, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. What we had talked <laughs> about right. earlier, you're, you know, we, in our capital budget, with Poplar Halls closing, we were talking about the money we were saving for the roof of Poplar Halls, but that was also money that was going to be earmarked for finishing Lake Taylor School yes. with the transition of your pre-K to as well. So, you know, as far as actual money geared towards lighting, no, there has ne never been included in the budget at all. Because so the decision had not been made as to whether or not we were going to do lighting. Well, you know, this just comes back again to timeline, preparation, thinking about what the board wants. I mean, we clearly voted to have start times done and ready to go by 2020. And so thinking of the end in mind, um, budget preparation, which comes from, <coughs> you know, you all inform us on what, what the needs are, um, what we have, um, it's disappointing but this is what it is. And I, have, I, I just have to say that Ms. Bassine is, is right as far as looking at the health impacts, mm -hmm. what the community um, has been very vocal with, what the research shows. I mean, from a pediatrician, the, the data is the data. Um, and uh, I think that we need to give you clear direction and you have to be able to come back to us to say within what we have right now in our budget, what can we do and if we need to have further conversation with our, I mean, I'll just say our council counterparts for additional funding because of the need that will provide multiple benefits, health, um, better transportation options, and more efficiency of our fleets, um, all of those items that uh, we need to at least try to work to option A2. That's what I would like for our board to consider option A2 um, at least, and if not, then I will be very welcoming on any recommendations, Dr. Birdsong, that you could provide for us with the budget items that we have. So, um, yep, yeah, 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 got it. Um, and so I'll end with that and then keep on with the discussion. Um, back to what I was saying earlier, I wasn't quite finished. Sorry. So I'm leaning more towards A2. Um, but I also see opportunities here uh, where you mentioned lower capital costs, lower operational costs, and I think it would be wise of us to look at, um, it seems like there are going to be 55 less drivers, so that goes into the capital side of it, where we have the potential for, uh, and my numbers might be a little off, but go with the concept. Yeah. Where, so, where, where the potential exists for us to have uh, resources that we did, didn't have at one point that could be put in uh, schools that have challenges or somewhere mm -hmm. else in our budget. And the same with these capital costs. It looks like, um, I don't know what 134 less runs translate to but we have to see what that translates into mm -hmm. in terms of buses and all of that, the number of buses we have to buy. And then those resources could potentially be used to pay the remainder of the balance if we go with A2. But, but what I'm basically getting at is we need to look forward in terms of how we would potentially use any cost savings that we get out of this changing and start times and not only look at, for the moment right here, we need 940K. What does this whole change translate into, into for us in terms of improving the district and other areas is what I'm getting at. Yes, me. No. Okay. No, I do. Yeah. I, I just didn't know if there was a response Actually, to our question. Yeah, it, in speaking with Mr. Kleinbell, in terms of the, the staff reduction, he would like to have 230 positions, but he only has about 175. Okay. So we would more just be right having the necessary positions for what we need when we move to the third stagger. So you, you wouldn't necessarily, necessarily be saving, be saving any okay. positions. You are, yeah. they're, they're, 
they're operating with fewer staff than they currently need. You are, however, on on the term the longer view. You you, you are on. The, the, but, we don't yeah. cannot quantify that right now, but anticipate that you would get through the gain efficiencies. You could potentially see some savings. Yes. How that would be used is TBD. Yes. Because we budget for the position. We do. We budget for the position. Mm -hmm. And we I'll do. just okay. leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Ms. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Bassine. Um, so I, I want to, I think uh, Mr. Clant Clanton's question is relevant and has it's been something that I've raised too about understanding what we're doing now. So, mm -hmm. you know, when we started these conversations about um, high schools ending later, it was like, okay, now everything is gonna be pushed back. But in reality, I think everyone needs to understand that we haven't been starting practice or games immediately after school as it is. So from my view and my understanding about when games actually start, we've been starting games at, at evening hours. Um, so, I guess I didn't see that while we should work toward having lighting in place, that it should hold us up from, from moving forward with changing the start times. Do I have that understanding correct? Well, at, at the high school level, in the spring sports from February uh, when they start to daylight savings is, is in March, I believe, mm -hmm. um, they're practicing. Uh, and if they're getting getting out at um, three, let's just say three fifty, um, we're now just potentially disrupting uh, the services that we provide um, by the um, the athletic literacy time that we're that we're starting this year, which is a study hall. Um, you know, their weight training, their their food, their nutrition time. Um, so if we're going to say, hey, get out to practice, get finished by six o'clock get on the bus, we're, we're losing that, that, that important aspect that, for eligibility um, to giving them that time um, where they may not take that time when they get home. So um, the practice part is, is really important. Um, and then our games, you know, we do start, I mean the high schools start at four, middle schools do start at five. And we'll keep that going. Because if they're, especially if they're in that middle uh, stagger, they won't change at all. So. Um, but the high schools, um, you know, obviously if they're in the stadiums for soccer and track, yeah, they can start later because we have the lights there. But the baseball and softball will be disrupted. Um, without the lighting. Without the lighting. Okay. Because to your point, you know, we, I know that we had been with, you know, providing dinner, providing uh, the study hall opportunity that was a reason we, st they started later the practice and the games um so i guess that's my point is that we're already sure. starting yeah. later but the disruption so maybe that's where we start we start with okay what sports are critically impacted by this start uh, the start time change and then we figure out the cost for that and then kind of build up to what our end goal is um, you know th this is just a thought because i mean that may have been the thought with the budget um, yes, ma'am. In fact, that, that, that is A2 is. because mm -hmm. it is targeted towards those baseball, and, baseball softball and softball fields, fields. only. Yeah. And so practically speaking, you have until the spring of 2021 mm -hmm. to get those operable. 2021. Okay. Spring of 2021. So that's good information. So you've all got right. all of 2020. Back to the Mari Booker T situation, our land-bound high schools, our city schools that have not the expansion, mm -hmm. uh, um, and and it's and, and who now have no lights. Was that my was I am I correct in understanding that those are the two schools that are, I mean Norview has lights already, um, but those are the two certain fields, the baseball, right. softball, fields. baseball, baseball, softball, baseball softball. At, at both of those schools, and so does the option B, A, A, A2, sorry, not option A, option A2, the, the uh, right under a million option, right. is that option going, is that there to address those softball, baseball fields at Maury and Booker T, or is that? It's no, it's just the ones listed. So Booker T, Booker Grand T, B, and Norview. Yeah. She didn't have a sheet in front of her. Yeah. Because oh, I, 
I'm agreeing with the equity of this that we don't want to have the, just because you're located in a city, you should be the ones that have to get on a bus and go somewhere else to practice. It's more practice fields than anything. Um, so is, can did that be something that kind of stays in our mind? I think that's what they're getting at in yes, A2. They're trying to, yes, ma'am. Because that's, 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 that's what I was saying. Is <laughs> yes, that, ma'am. Yes. Yes. That, yes. that starts you down the path uh, to get to, to full lighting across all of your fields, mm -hmm. addressing the most critical but needs. I'm not seeing Mari. It's Correct. And that's not in the, in the start, in that, that sort of beginning phase is identified. Uh, the schools that identified working with Steve were at, at uh, Norview, Booker T, and Granby. That would, that would get you started in terms of you know, where the schools are, what the fields are that need lighting, and that you would work, that, that could be next in line as you work towards that three, total $3 million investment for the next several years. Okay, because I guess I misunderstood because I thought you said Norview already had them. Yeah. No, ma'am, no, sorry. No, it's it's okay. Norview, Granby, and Booker T would be the initial investments at the softball and baseball fields. All right. Mari, Mari does have lighting at their baseball. No. Mari does oh, not. Okay. No, yeah. that would be the sort of next in shoot kind of thing. Okay. No, well, Mr. Jordan is saying there, but could you indulge me for one what? moment here? Because it's just something I want to go back to our um, retreat that, uh, last month. Um, Booker T came up. We were talking no. about tennis fields, and I think there was also something about lighting, maybe at the it baseball. It was the the baseball. Is it the fencing raising or the lighting? Fences. It was, it was raising the fences, fences, not lighting. Okay, okay. to get right. them certified. I was just trying to yeah. get that. That's that additional. Pardon me. That's the additional forty, yeah. fifty or so to mm -hmm. raise that fence mm -hmm. and to make it regulation move things okay. back. Yeah, and actually, I was going to bring that up again. That I think well, I would ask if you all would uh, look at discuss, any discussions that have taken place with the school system, the city, and North State University about the use of their softball, baseball, tennis, track, and other athletic facilities in collaboration with Booker T, um, even if it's on an interim basis. So just as we have Good collaboration idea. with Good Power idea. 10 Field and mm -hmm. Dominion, I think we have uh, Diamond sitting there in Norfolk State. There have been discussions about that before, and if we can see whether or not it is an option or not an option, and factor it in. If it's not, so be it. Then we won't talk about it again. But if it is an option, how can that factor in tomorrow with uh, students at Booker T being able to access that's a good, that's uh, a really first rate facilities? Idea. That's a great idea. We'll do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. And, we'll and we have. We've, I know you have, yeah. but I didn't know we've, where. Yeah, we, we've done our tennis there right. with Booker T, middle schools, softball, middle schools. But it's hard to do with Norfolk State our spring sports because they're, they're playing yeah, spring sports. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. So but they've been a, a great partner. That's a good. Great idea. idea. That's Rob. a good idea. Very good idea. Thinking out of the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great oh, idea. And, and that goes to all, any of our higher ed um, that we might be able to collaborate. And Virginia West is that far. Yeah, we have two universities so, here. We so then let's something. let's let's look at this timeline and then next steps, so that we're clear. You were proposing that you come to us um, in September, um, and Dr. Burks, I'm going to be le leaning on you um, for this. I. Right now, September is the opening of our schools. It's a very, very busy time um, for, for the division. Um, we were uh, initially thinking that we would do a type of work session at the first week of school, which is where our board meetings typically fall on, but that's very stressful um, for the division. And so we were looking at backpedaling and doing something the second week, but keep it, keeping it very abbreviated. Dr. Birdsong, I know that we typically don't do um, presentation type items at our formal meetings but would this be something you all would want to bring at that point in time back to us or we definitely need some more time with the administration okay after we are given some clear direction if you're going to go full three million or should we be looking towards option you know a2 um, but we definitely need more time to flush this out as an administrative team okay so then um well right now we don't have any money <laughs> so we don't have any money i think that um let's just do a straw poll right now with the items that we have been presented with um if everybody could just raise their hand and say if you were in support of a1 a2 I, I just want to be so i'm not voting only because i just think that the administration and the team need to I don't like where we get all these options and then somehow we're as a board supposed to try to figure it out. I think if there is a solid recommendation that the administration, the consultant team recommends for us to consider, I think that is a better path yes. than. I agree. 
than, okay, than that. But, That's just my opinion. Okay, but I think that it is important for us to really let them know option A or option B because option B is, is different with your start times for your high school students, and I think we do need to be clear on that. But, but I do think there's valuable information that the administration needs to have time to vet these options and bring it back to the board. What would you like, Dr. Bertong? I would like more time so okay. that we can work as an administrative team to talk about all of the options and then okay. bring you a recommendation. Okay. So in agenda planning, we'll talk about that what you all need good. then. Very well. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next item. So what, what we'll try to do is we'll try to get through all of the educational planning items and then we'll take a break and then uh, come back to community engagement. All right, uh, Mr. Clanton. All right, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if my colleagues can recall back in May, I brought up the idea of um, establishing a um, Booker T. Washington um, high school kind of educational advisory kind of task force. Um, as uh, you know, we've seen for the last two years there's a concerned citizens group there. There are a lot of invested stakeholders. Um, and so uh, what I noticed is that we didn't get that placed in the agenda um, for um, actual full adoption in June. Mm -hmm. And so I'm bringing it back up now to my colleagues. And, um, and, I'm, and Mr. Jordan, I apologize. We haven't had a discussion about this. But one of the recommendations that I'm, I'm having in that, because you and I both represent. Um, and Ms. Smith. What, that's War 4? Was a lot right. of the students okay. reside in Ward 4, although True. they attend. Coming across there. So right. um, about um, having us uh, to kind of be the liaisons that would kind of work with that group, I just think that there's, a, there's always a lot of discussion about anything about the future of Booker T. And, and I think that if we make a concerted effort um, as the board representatives um, and we establish and prop up a, um, an actual vehicle to be able to get individuals around the table to be able to talk about it along with the administration, to talk about ideas, the, the principle that's there. I think it begins to build um, uh, some cohesiveness between there and also um, strong will, um, goodwill between those who are concerned about the school, the, um, the education that's taking place there, programming, um, but then also so that we have a unified voice that's going out um, and that we begin just kind of like, uh, Rodney, you remember when we served on the, um, uh, gosh, I'm, it was right there on the tip of my tongue. Guiding Coalition. On the Guiding Coalition. Um, that we begin to generate um, individuals who can be advocates on behalf of Norfolk Public Schools and the community um, to dispel myths that are out there um, and to allow us to be able to move forward. So um, that, my whole piece on that one was that I'd like for um, an advisory committee to be placed on um, our um, consent agenda um, and that we work with the administration on how we build that out there um, and definitely to send out for my colleagues, Mr. Jordan and Ms. Smith, um, that we you know, work together um, to work with that group. So in, in, in concept, I'm okay. I, I'm a little, I wasn't quite following when you're saying being put on the consent agenda. One of the things that um, I think you mentioned to this group mm -hmm. um, was um, making sure that they engage, re-engage the task force that we have as part of educational planning. And one of the concerns I have is, um, um, you know, Isolating Booker T, um, um, positive or negative. So mm -hmm. I would ask if maybe what we should do is, um, you know, ask the administration, ask the educational planning group if they can look at, or maybe as a board, somehow prioritize some of the Booker T work uh, within that planning. My, my concern is we have five high schools and I think if we're going, if we do something like this for one, uh, we should do it for all. And I just don't have a good sense right now with um, where we are as a division in the middle of searches and all kinds of things, what our capacity is to to manage all that. But as a elected official representative, you know, I'm comfortable with us individually, you know, sitting down with uh, community leaders and stakeholders and seeing if we can frame some things that maybe we could bring back. I'm a little worried that if we go straight to the community advisory committee piece without fleshing it out some, we might end up causing more stress than, uh, than, than well-being. 
So I just like to be able to ponder it a little bit more. So if if um, if I'm not mistaken, and, and just for the administration's sake here to correct me here, do we have anything specifically on Mori, or did the Mori plan that came out with the educational plan come out of the overall educational planning committee? Was there a what, so? One of the things you and I are supposed to be working on with Ms. Ingram and the team with the facilities committee is taking all that uh, uh, Mori specs, Booker T specs, all that, all the work that's been done, and kind of synthesize it and work with the administration. Come back and just giving the board a picture of where we are, and then make some recommendations going forward. And I think we still need to figure out how to get that work because I, I think we're just in danger of being wide in a whole lot of places and deep nowhere. And uh, I just want to make sure we have a good feel for um, how, we're how we may unintentionally stress the administration and stress ourselves and stress the community unless we have some clear goals and objectives for what, what we're doing. So if I can, based on, um, I don't even have it in front of me anymore, the priorities that we adopted about the community engagement and based on what you said there, um, you know, as elected officials or in individuals that represent that area, um, would the board be amenable to allow us, um, Ms. Smith, Mr. Jordan, myself, to work together um, and to, to pull those leaders and um, invest in individuals in the community and maybe even come up with, um, you know, a time frame where, you know, some specific dates where we can begin to have conversations amongst ourselves with those individuals in a room together that aren't one-offs um, but that we can, you know, for the community engagement sake, they're not saying that it's an educational planning thing, but um, even just to kind of vet some of their concerns and just to be able to have open dialogue from the school board or for those individuals who represent them. If it's three, it has to be announced. Yeah, well, it's I mean, be we, a we have a meeting anyway. <laughs> uh, you know, I, like I said, I think that I'm comfortable with that. I just want to make sure we don't get that we are aligned with the administration, we're mm -hmm. aligned with the building principle, and that we are bringing good, not harm. So that's exactly. that's yeah. okay. that's and, all. And, and you know, for full disclosure, that's exactly what I want. I don't want any harm. I want to figure out how we can do a better job and take an example. It sounds like we're getting hail. Yeah. Um, but keep talking, man. It's gonna be a tornado <laughs> soon. <laughs> <laughs> My car needs to Locus. So, I mean, Ms. Smith, are you, you okay with that? Yes, yes. All right, cool. So, um, I don't know if we need to really, I just for the record, I guess, um, uh, uh, that we're establishing that there. I don't know if we have to do it here, but I'd just like to, you know, bring that out and I'll. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean as a committee, I mean, yeah. the three of us can get together and talk about it. As Dr. Gabriel said, we just have to make sure if we meet, we announce it. Mm -hmm. Three of us can meet in the conference room and talk through it. Yeah. Um, but I do think. We need to be on the same page, and then we need to make sure that the board is comfortable with what we're doing, and the administration is, and the, most importantly, the, the building principal okay. is comfortable. So we make sure we don't step on anything. That's right. that's my only okay. concern. Right. Okay. And, right. And 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 I do appreciate you bringing that up because it is so important that we get correct information to the community and that community members feel comfortable bringing their questions or concerns to us. They may feel great with bringing it to the principal, but we, we are also that liaison. We are the community representative. And so as much as we can use this to hone in good quality communication, good quality ambassadorship, that I think in and of itself is gonna be wor worthwhile. Um, and then they can come to us with concerns, as they have always done, to tell us about the fields, about the teaching, about, you know, conditions and whatnot. So I'm going to leave it to you all then to put it together, yeah. do no harm, no work for the better good, and don't step on principal's toes. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, the CTE, um, our committee update. Okay. And Extra so, um, as, a, as a part of our committee assignments, we have traditionally had a CTE committee, and that has been usually the chair and the vice chair. Uh, the superintendent has been on that committee, and that has been uh, also with the mayor, vice mayor, and city manager, and then a couple of folks who have been uh, working really hard with trying to fulfill the vision of a career and technical high school here in Norfolk. Uh, we have had a um, 
a couple of, uh, since the year has started, we've had a couple of meetings thus far, and Dr. Birdsong has, has been in attendance to those. And so we wanted to just bring some items back to you all of the work, the great work um, that is being done right now in order uh, to move this initiative along because we, we all know how much we um, aspire to reaching this end goal. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn the pointer over to Mr. Clanton and he will oh, wow. lead us in our discussion. Okay, great. Um, well, oh, before you oh, start, yeah. what, what, what oh, yeah. does that have? Yeah. Everyone should have a copy of the slide deck, and then I gave you all a reference copy from. Um, and you have do it? That? And do we yes. have for the public? As well? It's not a board doc. Mungo. It's on board doc. No, it's not. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. Okay. They can have my copy, whoever needs it. I've got a copy. So we get it posted on board docs, too. Again? We can get it posted on board docs. Yeah, that yeah. was my request. But okay, so in the essence of time, um, we're going to go ahead. So the CT High School update um, that's in front of you all. Is that right? Yeah, there we go. Cool. All right. So just to kind of high level, it's a comprehensive high school uh, grades um, nine through twelve, and it's uh, Dr. Gable just kind of backing up. Um, we've had about three meetings. Um, and those meetings consist, um, and this was established before um, I even got on the board here, but consist with um, Greater North Corporation has been major driver in this. Um, so the chairman of the board there, um, the superintendent, the chair of the school board, the vice chair, um, the mayor and the vice mayor um, are, are involved in that. And so there have been several, as you all know, through the years since about 2005. We've been talking about a CT high school. When I was actually director of the Chamber of Commerce, we were beginning to have those um, here in Norfolk. We're beginning to have those uh, conversations. And so this has been uh, something that is not new. Um, and we, it looks like we get close to there, and then there's challenges. And, mm -hmm. But the biggest thing has been funding. Um, but we're looking at a comprehensive high school, grades 9 through 12. Um, the concept of the CT um, high school, um, based off of uh, Worcester Polytech, um, was about being able to have students in one location um, where they would collaborate, um, so based off of their career pathways, so if they were going to be, and um, they decided they wanted to do criminal justice, that they would have those core contents around criminal justice, but then would also have the opportunity for those teachers to collaborate with their English, math, science, and history, um, and to create lesson plans that are um, conducive to engaging the students and keeping them. Um, so I'll give you an example. So criminal justice, you know, you have a lot of kids who are in high school and they're like, why am I taking geometry? I'm never going to, I might be a musician or whatever else, why am I taking geometry? Um, but when you take it and you place it in a way that you say that you're going to do criminal justice, and you say, well, you might have to map out a crime scene, and then you're able to use the math um, to make sense. And so being able to connect students where they are and really not just using it as a tagline and a phrase of talking about career and, um, career and college ready, and really being able to build a pathway um, for them to connect. So Citywide Choice is a program um, which is application-based, and so what we're looking at is about 1,600 students, um, 1,200 of those seats being um, MPS students, and the other uh, 400 being other districts. So, so just for clarity, are you sharing what the committee is recommending? I'm sharing with you what the committee has had discussions and recommended, yes. Discussions. And discussions. So this is a because we've, we've discussed this before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So are you saying now that in the recent conversation that you have that the committee is coming back again and suggesting that we have 1,600 student citywide choice application-based school? Exactly. So, so and, and is this then a, uh, the, in, in conjunction with this then, is the conversation again trying to take a high school offline or trying to add a six high school? No, no, no. If you let me finish it, I'm, I'm I just want to know. I'm, I'm making deal. a note on that one, but I will. Yeah. Um, you'll get to where I'm getting at the end. So yes, this is coming out of the committee, out of the discussions, and as I stated before, we've had several challenges and iterations, and so this is what's coming now um, to the board and bringing you an update. Um, this is what what an update. Mm -hmm. So 1,600 is what we're looking at for students. 1,200 being MPS. Um, and 400 coming from other districts. And so when you look at the, um, I don't know where this clicker is. is it, where is it there? Yeah, I'll do it. Okay. Um, we are now, we, uh, Mr. Jordan, as you can recall, we've gone from just singular being in Norfolk High, Norfolk High School to being a regional program, being a governor STEM program. Now we're back to being a regional CTE, um, where they had tried at one point with the 
But being a regional CTE school, um, this is something that um, was reported um, in the uh, Virginia pilot um, that the governor um, has had discussions and there have been discussions with him in support of a regional concept. So being as far as the Eastern Shore, um, the, the peninsula and so forth to be able to um, open this up and have students. Um, Align with VDOE's career pathways, um, elementary being able to introduce them, um, uh, middle school career exploration, and of course um, high school being the actual program. Um, uh, Karen, all right, so this is actually taken from, um, it hasn't changed, was taken from a document that you all have, the supplemental um, from 2015 about the CTE high school. Um, so the CTE High School will be a public charter school um, initiated by the Norfolk School Board pursuant to Section 22.1-2212.5, uh, um, subsequent um, whose mission is to uh, educate students both technically and academically for success of a global economy for the 21st century. The CTE High School will be operated by an um, outside 501c3 nonprofit corporation, the CTE nonprofit entity, um, established for the purposes of operating a public uh, charter school. Um, as you all know, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, we can only have public charters, and so you can't have just a separate uh, charter, and it requires a vote of approval from the um, school board. Um, so looking also at the structure, okay, Ms. Tanner, um, school structure will be a public-private charter, um, calling it an innovation school. It'll be operated under a 501c3 entity. Its governance would have a seven to 11 member board um, accountable to the MPS board and of course um, based on our um, guidelines that we have within the district, but they operate it. They choose a the staff, um, they choose um, their structure. They're on that board though, however, there would be ex officio members um, the Norfolk Public School Superintendent, the City Manager, Norfolk Public School Board Chair, and the uh, Norfolk City Mayor. Um, again, the board has to provide um, authorization for that to actually happen. Um, and then based off of um, that, they are annual every year. Um, they have to submit their, um, their report that not only comes to the school board, but also goes to the state as far as their, um, their academic achievement and so forth there. Um, looking at the next slide. So one of the things is there's 24-hour facility. Um, when they're looking at building this program and the school building is that they would be daytime dedicated space for students as well as adult learning areas for, um, for adults. In the evening, there would be a dedicated adult learning space um, as well that would be utilized. Um, Ms. Tanner. So proposed funding commitments. This is always, honestly, seem like the, the major challenge is being able to um, looking at CT High School, looking at Maury High School, looking at Booker T, looking at all the uh, capital improvement things that we have um, in the district. So right now we're looking at 110 million for a building, 10 million for equipment, um, about now being 120 million for the entire project. And I think maybe about five years ago, um, that was probably in the 80s. Mm -hmm. um, and so every year it's going up. And as we're also now in a major trade war, uh, you start thinking about steel and other things from overseas. So um, there's 60 million um, committed, um, being committed for the state. This is what we're requesting. We're requesting. Requesting. Right. That's, it hasn't been committed itself, but we are putting a request in. Um, and that's one of the actions um, that I'll talk about um, that's gonna be important for that. 30 million from industry and philanthropic um, 60 million from the city of Norfolk, um, and then of course land donation from the city of Norfolk for the um, the program. Um, so this is what's come out of the um, the committee um, and what we've sat around the table. Um, and the next item, Ms. Tanner. Um, so next steps um, based on that was to update the feasibility study for Career and Technical High School. Um, we had originally one that was sent to us, um, and RRMM Architects is the one who prepared that. Um, so the city of Norfolk is taking on that, so it's not an additional cost to the district. Um, so they are sending it out to get that updated so that that can come back to the board. Um, the other step that needs to um, happen from the board is an approval from the school board um, by a resolution adopting the CTE High School plan. Um, and that um, looking at being able to do that at the September 18th meeting um, so that we can be able to get that um, to the governor's office um, and to other individual stakeholders that we're looking for um, so that that can get in a timely manner before we get into that uh, process. So those are the two next steps. Of course, there's a much more in depth, but we wanted to provide some report out um, as to you know the discussions that are taking place. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Ms. Campson. First of all, thank you. 
I'm so excited to hear this. Uh, it's been a long time coming, and it's certainly time now for our board, the current board, to get into the discussion about this. Um, and it's such a wonderful opportunity for our children. I like the way it's planned out and the uh, um, partnership with the city in making it happen. You know, um, a CTE high school, uh, well, let, let me back up a second. As a school board, one of our, probably our primary uh, goal is to, and, and obligation is to ensure that every child who walks out of a Norfolk high school with a diploma in their hand is prepared to either go to college and or be job ready and able to go out and get a job then, a good paying job that you can live on. That's what schools are for, to prepare our students for a fulfilling uh, life, whether it's whether they choose an academic track through college or right into the job market. Um, and especially with so many of our kids that it's, and there's so many jobs out there we just not getting our kids ready for them. And I think that that's really important. You know, we've been talking about this in the city for so long. I didn't realize it was 05. It's even longer than I thought. If you had a child in kindergarten when this started, this conversation started, that child would now be, and we had moved on it, and we'd moved on it when the conversation started all those years ago beyond the money savings you would have kindergarten children at that time who would, could be graduating at this time from a Norfolk Public Schools CTE comprehensive high school. I mean, you know, I really think that it's, it's time to move from talk, 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 what, 14 years to action. So I certainly would support this board encouraging, tasking our chair to develop a resolution that we could look at at the September, whatever the date you said, so that we could let the city know that yes, Norfolk Public Schools is on board. Yes, we don't want to be left behind while this moves forward, that we're ready to hop on the Mayor Alexander CTE bus and get our school, get our school set up and built and ready for our children. Thank you. Ms. Martin. Well, um, speaking of buses, um, of course, we need to make sure that we have all the right people in the right seats. And the last time we talked about this at the at our workshop, um, it was it seemed there's a lot of hesitation from the other players um, to partner on this. So I just want to make sure I guess ask of you. I mean, we do have commitment from the city and from the private sector. Um, and then, uh, you know, I agree, I think a resolution is in place. I think it is time we act on this and quit talking about it. Um, and it, you know, it, it's, it really, it, if everyone's together on this, um, this is probably the best momentum we can ask for, especially given the fact that it has been kicked down the road for so long. So I agree. Ms. Smith. While I am in total support of CTE High School and the city of Norfolk, I am not in favor of this structure. I am not in favor of taking money from our schools to create something such as this. We have not talked about how this money would come to us from the city in terms of we currently have a cost sharing or a percentage already determined how much they're going to give us. Is this in addition to that? In addition or, to OK, we have schools, Maury, for example, that is in dire need of renovation and improvements. But we're going to bring on a brand new school. We have schools in terms of enrollment. We have high schools that barely have this 1600 in it. So what's going to happen there? There's so much more that needs to be discussed before we agree to something like this. Absolutely. Okay. Let me, 
I will, I will say, Ms. Smith, um, that when we have these conversations, and Dr. Birdsong can attest to this, it is never a conversation in isolation about a CTE school. It is always spoken with in conjunction to the needs of, of our facilities in general, uh, the Maury High Schools, the Booker T. Washington. But this the is all we see right here, Dr. Gabriel. Mm -hmm. what, I'm, what I'm saying is that we don't leave those buildings out of the conversation. I'm, we're just bringing you the update as to what we have come together with so that you all are it. informed. Ms. Smith, I mean, I'm sorry, Ms. Basin. Yeah, I, I too absolutely don't support the structure. I do not believe that it has to be a charter uh, school to, to get this done. Um, I am in support of career and technical education. I think it's incredibly important. Um, at this point, you know, I'm digesting hearing a lot of this for the first time. Um, and yes, we've been talking about it uh, long before all of us were even on the school board, but uh, we've made decisions along the way. There's been a lot of work that has been done uh, by Ms. Goshen and uh, the administration up until this point. I would like to know, you know, we talked about uh, its location being at Booker T and it being uh, planned out uh, with that school in mind. There are so many unanswered questions uh, that stem from you know, Dr. even Dr. Boone's most recent presentation to council in December, which I have up in front of me as well, with all the work the administration had been doing up until that point. Um, so there are a lot of gaps here, and I would like to know how these uh, conversations, even from April and May, uh, when we sat in meetings where um, it didn't sound that you were very optimistic about this going anywhere, saying that we don't have the money for this, and all of a sudden we have now a, a, a skim, I mean, with very few words on here, and we're supposed to make a decision. I mean, which I'm to not me asking, is not, no, you know. No, there's uh, no decision being asked right here. The, so this is an update. So now we're back at a regional CTE yes. school when that is not what the board had talked about. We had gotten away from that with our last unfortunately our last joint meeting with council where we talked about the regional piece was what was holding us back and and so we had focused our attention and effort around a norfolk based cte high school and now we're back to that and i want i want all of those gaps filled in and so sure. so anything uh, i believe you owe up the full board that information and so this update right now is a direct result of the governor's statement on the possibility of funding state funding if this is a regional program that is very attuned to workforce development this could be a prototype for the rest of the state being that we have city cooperation state cooperation philanthropic the state is is would be putting in kickstart funds so that way we could be building on it and that has been the change in the past two months. We felt that it very important to bring to your attention so that we don't have that gap in time. And so this is, this is the first opportunity that we could bring it to you right away so that you all could stay informed and be aware of this. Now, um, the budget process is really what is um, giving us our, our, our overall timeline. If we can get these funds the possibility of a career in technical high school right here in Norfolk Regional is highly probable. We can act on it. Such a great Mr. opportunity. Jordan. So when was your last committee meeting? Mm, let me pull my calendar out. The, in, uh, the last and, three. Oh, no, I'm, I'm not even, my, my, I, like I have the floor. <laughs> y'all, I don't do that to you all. If y'all just allow me to ask my questions, I'd appreciate it. Uh, we last met. July, the, July 29th. July 29th. July 29th. Okay. And, oh, that's pretty, um, pretty so I, I'm, we've, in my view, we've gone down this path before. I mean, we've had state officials you know, make comments. I remember uh, reading the, the governor's statement in the paper. Um, I'd like to get more of a greater understanding. Are we talking about, because um, in the past, I know we've talked about possibly trying to tap um, uh, go, go Virginia. 
so I like to have more specifics about uh, the state approach. Um, I'd like to get an update on who the members are of the committee now. Uh, and um, there was a briefing book that was being prepared because uh, a lot of this stuff has been happening in the in the newspaper. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, the former city manager was about to bring some presentation to the city council dealing with this. I just and, and by the way, we haven't had a joint meeting with council That's all so, yeah. in a while. So I, I just think that uh, one I like to hear uh, from the. Uh, Greater Norfolk Corporation representatives directly. They've done that in the past, come and spoken to us and talked about these things, and we have acted. Um, I am concerned about the, uh, the 1,200 students and the, uh, the regional piece of it. Not that I'm opposed to that, but part of the challenge that has been, that we've dealt with before is with the students coming from other divisions, um, there's been this vision expressed by non-educators or non-public school educators that, uh, that somehow magically the average daily membership just follows. And so we've had extensive conversations around, it just doesn't work that way. Um, and in the past, we even reached out to surrounding divisions that said that they weren't willing to participate. So if something has changed in that regard, I like that. Uh, I like to know that. Um, and I, you know, I'm not opposed to the uh, uh, the Norfolk Public Schools sponsored charter model. We've talked about that before. The board had given some consent to that before, so that that doesn't bother me. But I am concerned about just getting this presentation at this time without. Our standard trying to give folks, you know, five days, three days, seven days time, and then being asked to uh, take action it. at a at a September meeting. So it's many more questions that I have. Okay. Most of the slides are, I mean, it's the same stuff, but I do think getting more details on uh, uh, this sixty million dollar commitment from the state is important. And then there were briefing books that were prepared. Um, uh, as the school board, school administration and the city council are working together, they're working on a business plan and all that stuff. So I think we need to get a, a true updated briefing and I'd like to hear more from uh, uh, Dr. Birdsong and Ms. Goshen at the next, not now, because I, mm -hmm. I think it's too much mm -hmm. to be thrown on the plate mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. but at a, uh, uh, at some, meeting soon so we can make sure that we are getting it from the administration and their recommendations and thoughts and not just just from us and I appreciate because um, everything that you all have brought up um, and they can attest I bring up in the meetings I'm not doing things in isolation I'm not either or um, that this needs to be and at the same time when we're looking at Moria High School we're looking at Booker T um, and all of the, the needs that we have there and the city pretty much told us that yes we can get additional funds um, I think that it's important and I and I, and I implore to my colleagues um, that we are bringing this to you now um, not as a dog and pony show um, and there have been a lot of uh, uh, reservations in the past because we've had this thing come up before. It looks like we're going to make it. it. Looks like we're going to make a decision and go in a different direction. Um, but it was incumbent, and the discussion was, and even with Greater North Corporation and the mayor and others, um, that we begin to have these conversations and that we begin to report back out. Um, we're not adding a whole lot of extra things on this here because it's very fluid, and things are still um, that uh, need to go need to be come the need to go back to the committee. Um, so you were given this kind of high level here of main things of where the direction and takeaways. Um, that we're looking at a regional structure now, that there is a commitment that's coming in potentially from the state and commitment coming from the city for dollars, um, that this is not about, um, we're looking at that we have to redo the feasibility study. Um, when we look at this and where does, um, you know, what does the school look like, where is it located, and when we're talking about regional, all those emergency. Every time you talk, man. 
I told you you gonna bring a tornado. No, it's my new, it's my new school fun. I don't know, Mr. Jordan. Yeah. Creating <laughs> dots for schools for me. But, but, but no, what, what I'm Excuse saying me. is, is that we're, 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 we're not asking the board to make any it decision. It overrides my right. okay, hold it's, silence. Calm silence. down. Oh yeah, is it? Not an but Mr. Clinton, but on, on that point, what I, what I, because I spent some time on it. Oh yeah, I, I just wanna. Flash. And we just oh, yeah. talked about educational Retail planning. Side of mm -hmm. There's 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 significant impact. Mm -hmm. So when we say that we are updating the feasibility study, the feasibility study was done of existing schools, mm -hmm. right? So we did the that was the initial feasibility study. Then we had Dijon Richter come back and do some assessments, and that goes back to the facilities committee stuff that we're supposed to be getting together on. The other piece of it is uh, the concept of the application-based school. So that need, there's some clarity that needs to occur around that because a moment ago you were talking about us getting together to, to discuss making sure we get accurate information out to the Booker T community. One of the things that was out there was this discussion right. around what does it mean to be an application-based school. So there is a difference between a student expressing interest in attending versus there being some application and then determining that certain students get in and certain students mm -hmm. do not. The other piece of it is, as we have looked at and worked with Dijon Richter over the last several years, is we've had numerous conversations around enrollment and school, school closures and all those things. So what has been a, a challenge for us, the collective us, has been when you're talking about taking out 1,200 students, and that's why I asked the question earlier. If you're saying we currently have five high schools mm -hmm. and we're going to create a CTE school within that five, that's one thing. If you're saying we're going to have five comprehensive high schools and then an additional six school, which is going to be this regional school of which 1,200 students are going to come from MPS, that then has impact on all the things we talked about, capacity, bus routes, and all those things. So that is significant impact and I think it's just important just having gone down this path that we hear from <coughs> administration experts because I've been at the table and I'm a dreamer too but it's a big gap between the dream and then how you implement it and the impact that it has on our students so, uh, that's uh, what I'm asking for and, and we will get that and again this is the committee just reporting out what's been happening in discussion the feasibility study is going to bring all those things back. I'm not the expert on that. Um, and so those items will come back to the board. Um, but I, I implore you in the respect that there is a timeline that we have to uh, make some type of resolution and decision um, in speaking to the board as a collective. Whatever the will of the board is, speaking to city council, speaking to elected officials, that this board is willing to take a step and say we support whatever plan that comes back. That's the important piece. We're not asking for, and that's, and, and, I'll, and, I'll, and I'll say this, that's why you didn't hear anything come out of my mouth about a school, because I think that's reckless when we say what high school it's going to go to. And I think that this board did a disservice when we announced that it was going to a particular high school, um, and it just kind of jumbled all things up there. So I'm not making any mention of that, and that's why that's not in this report, because it's based on waiting for the experts to come back to us with a report. Well, what's, what's so, I mean, so what we're doing at this particular point is giving you an update out, which constantly people are saying, keep us in the loop. Right now, we did that. We said, look, we want to let you know we've had three meetings. Um, this is what's coming out there because there's an opportunity right now. What's the state deadline? Um, we need to get something done by the end of October. In order mid -October, to get October. Yeah. Mid October. Mid October. Mid -October. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This in order. is to impact the governor's proposed budget. Yes. Is that what that is? Yes. And so, um, what 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 I'd like to do is to um, have the board reconvene on the second week of September as a modified work session, okay, and give some f detailed time to the CTE discussion, so that we can come back with all of these items that you um, have brought good items. Mm -hmm. I think that um, you want to get further information on. Let us come back to you with that information. Um, and, and then we are going to be working on a time for a joint meeting with council. I want to say sometime in October. It's it's nothing's formal, well, but we're looking at sometime in October. Are you saying September 11th? Mm, yes. What what is That's the Wednesday? Tuesday, is that September the 11th. second? Is that the second Wednesday? Yeah. So it's yes. a special meeting. It would be 
It would be a special meeting, yes. Wouldn't it just be a replacement meeting? We, normally, well, we don't normally work session, but it's one. Typically, historically, we have, we have deferred our work sessions to the second week in September because that's usually the start of school. Right. And so call it whatever you would like, but it would be, it, it would function as a very modified work session, short, uh, because we understand that they are trying to open schools at that time. So it would be, um, we, we've kind of discussed this a little bit in agenda planning, CTE discussion policy, and that's it. So, I, and I guess based on what And I we heard, won't start I'm, I'm before sorry. four. Is that to bring the, also to have the GNC there? Is that, that well, I just, you don't have to, I, mean, we could. I just think you all need to come back, in, from my view, mm -hmm. I just think uh, a stronger set of particulars would be helpful. Okay, Sorry noted. Sorry just respond to it. And in it, and I said this earlier, just keep in mind, adding a sixth high school mm -hmm. where our numbers are already low, with what you guys are presenting to me, you cannot convince me now that one of our schools will more than likely go offline. And we need to, we need to give people the full picture and not just some a small snippet overview of what we expect to happen, people need to understand the full details of this thing. There's, there's just no way we can handle that, no matter what anybody says at this table. Also, I see the same thing happening where we did somewhere else in the city with this 501c3 concept and 7 to 11 board members and it would be interesting to know where we're pooling them from, how the other localities fit into that in terms of uh, percentage-wise, if 400 is coming from somewhere. There's so much more that needs to be done on this thing that we cannot, and, we, we but, just cannot. And, and, and for, for clarity, and I, I don't want to move on there, that's why I provided. It's taking um, money from I, our schools. I provided, I trust, I, I just sat on a national panel about school choice. I understand, and I brought that up about moving, um, you know, students and how that would affect our budget. But I also remember I gave you all a copy that's dated um, from 2015. We are not moving from the same thing that this board has voted on. Um, it has been presented on in multiple, in multiple times has been presented back to us as far as this concept yeah, so it's started, not something new yeah but the board in voted and took action since 2015. Cancer. that's i just want to make sure you have the the board has taken action since 2015 including when we initially gave support mm -hmm. for the concept that we now are having discussions about i just want to make sure that anything different from the charter concept what i'm saying to you is that there were the we had a presentation from Greater Norfolk and others, and the board has taken additional action since then. I just want to make sure when we start talking about 2015 and 2005 that we go with our most recent stuff and work backwards. That's all. So, okay. so we're going to wrap the discussion up. We really do appreciate the feedback from everyone. Uh, the next steps that we um, have is we will bring these items back to the committee. Um, in no way are we looking to take funds away from what we already have. I do not want that to be uh, an all. item that is put out there at all. Um, but what we are doing is we are trying to update everyone on the work that has been done thus far to share the exciting news of the commitment uh, that is being uh, discussed right now um, from the state, from the city, from philanthropy. And we're going to take all of these great suggestions that you have, put it together, and we'll come back and discuss it on September 11th. That's the best that we can do right now because we know how important this is for Hampton Roads, for the jobs that are uh, currently in dire need, for the, the, the jobs that are potential for the aging out folks. I mean, we know how important it is. We need to be able, Norfolk Public Schools needs to be able to fill that gap and we can. And I know that the programs that we currently have right now are dynamic, they're great. They, we need to build upon it. So um, what we're gonna do, Dr. Bertong, was there anything else that you wanted to add before we leave this um, topic? Well, before we leave the topic, I wanna make it very clear that as I have been invited to be a part of these meetings, 
that um, I am certainly in support of a career in technical high school. Um, I was also concerned that I wanted to make sure the full board was um, in the loop on what was going on so there would be no questions later about you know what decisions are moving forward i also want to have a clear understanding of what has been voted on in the past what we have agreed upon and what we need to do to move forward so um, that's all i have to say about that at this time thank you so we're going to take um, a five-minute uh, break. Let's come back at 5.15, and then we'll get into the <coughs> community engagement discussion. Thank you. We're going to go ahead and get back on task. <coughs> the next item that we have on our agenda tonight is community engagement. And Ms. Tanner, you have an update for us. I do. While Ms. Tanner is coming to the podium, one of the items that this board has shown great commitment toward is um, seeking more engagement from the community, trying to uh, lend our ears um, to the items that are out there that are important to community members. And a very strong piece of community engagement is the function of our advisory committee uh, committees. And uh, we have asked Ms. Tanner to please uh, take this on. Um, improve upon what we already have. We know that we have four committees right now that they're bringing forth um, some very good recommendations to the board, um, but we know that we are always striving uh, to do better. Um, and so that being said, Ms. Tanner, can you update the board on the work that you have done thus far <coughs> to really make this effort fantastic? <laughs> Vice Chair, Dr. Birdsong, board members, and administration, and guests who are here today. I'm excited today to present some ideas that we have to garner support in the community and with parents for our school board advisory council. I understand we've adopted this back in 1974, so I think we really have come up with a robust, robust opportunity to get more community involvement and parental involvement with that. Um, I'd like to give special thanks to our communications team, Brian Mack, Amanda, Ricky, our web team with Daniel. They created a, a logo, a website, and we have a quick video I want you all to look at real quick that we want to roll out later on. So Channel 47, you can roll the tape for us. I'd appreciate it. Norfolk Public Schools is searching for parents and community members who want to have a real impact on students' lives by joining one of our school board advisory committees. The groups cover everything from school health and career and technical education to gifted and special education. All four advisory committees meet on a regular basis and are designed to assist the school board with determining and complying with various policies. These committees also provide feedback and offer questions and concerns to the board. The committees are comprised of parents, students, school personnel, and other community members. If you live in the city of Norfolk, or if you work for the city or school system, you're eligible to be a part of any committee. Each of the four school board advisory committees cover a specific and important focus for students across the district. The Career and Technical Education Advisory Committee provides recommendations on career and technical education programs offered and assists in the development and implementation of CTE programs. A member's term lasts three years. The Gifted Education Advisory Committee reviews the educational plan for gifted students and determines how well the plan is being implemented. The term for this committee is three years. The School Health Advisory Committee assists with the development of health policy and evaluates school health, health education, school environment, and health services. Each term lasts two years. And the Special Education Advisory Committee counsels the board on the educational needs of students with disabilities and develops priorities and strategies for meeting those needs. The term is for three years. Once you've decided which committee you'd like to join, applying to become a member is easy. Simply go to the NPS website and click on the school board link and then the school board advisory committee link in the left column. Here you will find not only the application, but also additional information about each committee. Your completed application goes directly to the advisory committee liaison, who then passes it on to the clerk of the school board. 
Then it moves on for approval by the school board. Recommendations to committees are approved during July and December meetings. Terms begin in July. Norfolk Public Schools thanks you for your support and your interest in improving the educational experiences of our students and we're excited about working with you to continue to move our district forward. For more information about the School Board Advisory Committees, visit our website at www.mpsk12.com slash advisory committees. So that's just a snippet, an idea of what we'd like to do. Um, I tell you, when I was tasked with this, I was like, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. Da, da, da. But I'm really excited of how we can really engage the community, get them involved and see what we're doing. And um, just this process alone. So this, if, if it's okay, we want to roll this out August 19th. Um, the website, I had them make it live today, and I'm not sitting over there, but I would go through the prompts for you to see, but we're really trying to make the school board's page more robust so folks can go there and really know just what's going on. So this video will be on our district news site, our social media sites, which is Facebook and Twitter. I'll also do a Blackboard Connect message to parents, alerting them that this is where they can go to find out information about the advisory um, committees and how to apply. Um, and then an NPS Now segment, Dr. Gabriel, um, she was here this week on Monday. Um, we taped the show and we have the other advisory committee individuals that are going to be taping. Um, some tape tomorrow and then the other two tape on Monday. And we're going to have a full show that's going to air on August 19th strictly for this, for the school board advisory committees and, and what how they can become involved. So I'm excited about it. I hope you, you are too. Um, Real quickly, I'd like to spend a little bit more on the process. So that, that was real quick what we said, but the application process can be reviewed on the school board website. So all the details are there. I wish I could get somebody to go up there and do this for me, but it's fairly simple. It's like any parent can just go to the site and find out where they want to apply each link. You want up there, Kalila, for me? Each link under each one of them, it pops up the individual application there. So it's very simple, it's no confusion. And then the application goes to the um, liaison and then also goes to me. I always subscribe to a concept if somebody gets hit by a bus, somebody else needs to know mm -hmm. where this information is and how to obtain it. And then it's also based on our school district's website. So we'll always have access to it. It's not like I have to go try to find someone else to get the information. Um, so. Uh, the application process, again, can be reviewed on the school board's website, and the school board will recommend, will recommend the first group for this school year on September 18th at the school board meeting to move our committees forward. With this process implemented, the school board will follow the process of approving applicants in July and December, because that's what you currently already do, so it'll be twice a year. So July will be the selection of the full membership, and December will be reserved for filling vacancies only. Um, so after this meeting, the um, I call it CBAC, if you want to call it something else, you can. But CBAC website will go live and applications will be available for online submissions. So whoever's watching this uh, programming today can actually go online and go ahead and apply starting now, the opportunities for them. Um, so after selection by the school board to serve on the advisory committee, the school board clerk will send a thank you letter and welcome or information packet to address the expectations of your service on the advisory committee. That is very important. The welcome packet will include the school board's accountability plan, a description of your advisory committee, and a full explanation of the role and responsibilities, which includes the following. The leadership of each advisory committee um, shall compile monthly a list of three to five bullet points describing work being done, what's on the horizon, forthcoming vacancies or upcoming vacancies on each committee, notable points, successes, and open, honest challenges. The advisor committees will submit a bulleted list by the first of each month to the school board clerk for inclusion with agenda planning, and those dates will be provided to them as well. Members will also receive the NPS administrative liaison's contact information and an information sheet requesting their contact information, and they'll be given details about our Freedom of Information Act, because that's important for them to know that those emails are secure and that they're actually using um, like say if they're using their personal email, just know if someone has a question about the business that they're in, entitled to or working on, their emails are foyable. So maybe even encouraging them to create a different email account in order to be a part of this advisor committee. So their personal stuff will not be deemed for FOIA. 
Um, and then they're going to have to sign a, a form stating that they understand the FOIA information. And I will make sure that I glean that information out to them so they really know what they're getting involved with. And then as a special token of appreciation, we'll give them all MPS lapel pins. And then a special recognition at the end of the year for their service on this advisory committee. So this is important, the term limits. According to the school board policy, the tenure of advisory committee members shall expire at the school board's discretion. Uh, committee members have no legal rights to their appointed positions and may be removed from membership for failure to perform duties, failure to maintain requirements for appointment to the committee, and other good and just cause as determined by the school board. Membership and responsibilities will be in compliance with school board policies and regulations for the advisory committees, which they can learn all this information on the website. It's, it's under um, the main page. As part of the guidelines established by the school board to serve an advisory committee, once your term has expired, some committees have the option to serve for additional terms. Terms are determined per the individual advisory committees. For instance, a health, school health advisory committee members shall be appointed for a two-year term of service and may be reappointed for two additional terms. Prior to each school year, the proposed slate of uh, members shall be submitted to the superintendent, of course, for approval. The Career and Tech Education Advisory Committee will include approximately 21 adult members without regard to race, creed, color, sex, national origin, religion, age, or disability as evenly distributed as possible representing business, industry, label, labor, excuse me, management, government, and education. The term of members shall be for three years with the recommendation of the nominating committee and the approval of the superintendent. Members shall have the option to serve additional terms. Officers shall serve to the end of their tenure of office. And for gifted education advisory, or, or GIAC, voting members are slated to serve three years per our, per our NPS gifted local plan. With the recommendation of the nominating committee and the endorsement of a majority of voting members, members may serve additional terms in accordance with the bylaws of the advisory committee. Voting membership of the advisory committee will include up to a maximum of 24 persons, including 12 members representing parents of students in the gifted program. Other members can be community representatives, business leaders, educators from higher education, a secondary gifted student, and Norfolk Public Schools staff. The voting membership of the advisory committee shall reflect the ethnic and geographical composition of the school division. They have only 12 seats filled out of 24 right now. Um, for, not, for now, nine of the current 12 members are due for reappointment this year. And then SEAC members can serve a three-year term, and then they are eligible to serve an additional three-year term if approved by the board. After they have served two consecutive three-year terms, which is six years, they must sit out a year before reapplying for the committee. According to the advisory committee liaisons, the current advisory committee members terms have expired and individuals interested in serving will need to reapply or if in or if any individuals fall within the consecutive term limit category will need to wait one year and reapply for service so for full details about all the term limits for each one of those again the resources on our school district website under the school board's page so that was the speedy version of this but um, if you have any questions I'm not the resident expert but I can surely help you and we can work through this process so we can get individuals involved on our school board advisory committees yeah. yes sir so um Questions. great work i really uh, i know that in conversation we had talked about this and so you really captured a lot of the things that we were talking about i see the website um one of my things with that one will we be able to like i think uh GX just gave us like their annual report um, and some other items. Can we see about getting them um, on the, the, the page so it really becomes a place where individuals can come yep. to get information um, mm -hmm. that's up to date? That's a good um, idea. Yeah. And then I also, could you clarify around the, the training or orientation uh, for individuals? I think um, I heard something about it. I, there's something that paper or things that they're signing off, are we doing an orientation or is it just kind of a welcome packet? We're sending them a welcome packet, but the training I believe will come from their liaison or we can partner together. That's still a work in progress. But I, I just really truly want to make sure that they understand the commitment that they're making. And then also to that FOIA piece, because I'm also the FOIA officer. So I want to make sure that there is no discrepancies or issues with that. So I will be working with the liaisons with them with the training. And my last piece in there, just for clarity, um, we, had, um, we did change the policies around there. So um, all the final decisions on 
um, board appointments for the um, for these advisory committees come to this, uh, the board as a whole as a decision rather than the superintendent. Right. Right. Correct. I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Ms. Yes, Martin, sir. then Mr. Jordan. Um, the link says SC, the SEAC application, but isn't the application uniform? Or no. But they're yeah, they're uniform, but they're all under their own sites to so, kind of keep them. I think that's confusing. Well, if you click on it, because I was playing with it here, so if you click on it, it automatically has it selected okay. for you. So okay, you don't have to good. select it. That's all right, all. good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to make it easy. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, uh, I didn't, what was the reference to 1974? I, I wasn't following that. Part of the policy. It's, it's oh, when the policy was initially adopted. Yeah. And you were saying you were tasked to do this. Who, who tasked you to do it? Oh, Dr. Gabriel. Okay. Yeah. So, so Dr. Gabriel, um, uh, I think it's good work. Um, but I do have some concerns about the, the tasking without um, consideration of the full board. Um, I think one of the things we need to do, I, I heard the recommendation is to uh, release this in a couple of weeks. What was it, August 19th? Or at your discretion. Right. So there's there's some, and Mr. Clanton just touched on one of them, there's some discrepancies between uh, the information in the video and what our policy is. Uh, and I think one of the things we need to do is, remember at the June meeting, we changed some things with the advisory committee policies. And I think we need to first make sure that we've updated um, uh, our policy manual so that we actually know what the current policy says uh, and then make sure that we are aligned with that um, and uh, and get a update I know you miss Tanner you mentioned that you've gotten an updated um, list of who's on what committee and so forth uh, I think we should get that but before we go live with it I think since we know that we govern through policies and we've made some changes to the policies we need to make sure that we're all in in sync with what the policy is and that any information that then goes out is aligned with that and then the finally um, Ms. Tanner just touched on something that I mentioned several times before when we've discussed this policies the the GAC some of some of the advisory committees have bylaws that they've adopted so you were just mentioning, for example, the, the GAC, and then there's uh, certain positions associated with the CTE Advisory Committee. We've got to make sure that we are in sync on that, um, which right now I don't think we are yet, so that as we are sending these notices out and individuals start responding, that that process of, as, as was described, at least the proposed process of going to the uh, staff liaison and then the staff liaison to you see when they get it I get it too but that's not it's like we both get it right but they will be going getting them first right then. but in those bylaws that I, we need to make sure that we're clear on there's roles that under the current bylaws that allow for the existing committees to have some input mm -hmm. so we just need to make sure that we're clear on that so whatever our process is follows that um, uh, fo follows along the, those policies and those regulations and it was, it was one oh I know the other one and then you also mentioned that we would do appointments in July and December we changed the policy that we can do appointments in any it's rolling it's a rolling but like I'm just saying if we are batch. proposing the big batch <clears throat> well I'm just saying whatever whatever the policy or the regulations are if we are proposing that we do it in July and December that we need to codify it Otherwise, we're going to fall right back into where we were before. Right now, we have the flexibility to do it as needed. Mm -hmm. But if we put out there to the public that we're going to do it in July and December, then we need to make sure that we do it in July and December and that, it, that it's aligned and that we have a process. So if a vacancy comes open and we know that the current policy says you can do it at any point in time, just to make sure it's consistent. Yeah, you that's know, good. That, that language mm -hmm. and consistency and make making sure that we are aligned with the policy is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I got your notes. Any other questions? Um, just a point of clarification for folks that I think we have mentioned it. Um, a big chunk of our board um, advisory committee members are all up for reappointment. Um, and so I think that um, though I, I 
completely understand um, a full conversation around um, the board, but I think we have had conversations um, and a directive in there, one of the priorities was from this board that we wanted advisory committees that this needed to be a major focus. Um, and so I'm pleased with the fact that it's coming back and we have some movement. And most importantly, there's transparency to the community on how the process takes place and how we can further engage, going back to our priorities now, how we can engage the community so that they're involved in the process. So I appreciate that and I do appreciate the, some of the comments around that, but I think just in the midst of how we're kind of getting to where we need to be, I think this is a great step forward um, and that the community should take it as an opportunity to, and see it as a sign from this board that we welcome you, our doors are open, and we want you to be a part of the process. And just to be, I support the community engagement, I support the effort, and as you know, I've served on many advisory committees. Mm -hmm. What's in, what, what I'm trying to stress is, as a board, we govern through policy, the administration sets regulations, and in, from experience, uh, and as we were talking earlier about great city school audits, if you read some of the audits that they've done on us, part of what they have recommended to us is that we make sure that we have alignment from the board all the way through and so in our excitement to push something out i just think it's important no, that we align it with our policies and, and practices so that we don't find ourselves in, mm -hmm. in other challenges that's all i agree and the that bylaw um piece that you were mentioning um because i think we brought that up in a, when we were even talking about changing the process but I, I would agree, that's an important piece because those bylaws can't be in conflict with the board's policy. Um, and so we just- and the, and, and the policy, as I understand it, and I, I could be wrong, but the policy is what trumps everything, the yeah, board policy. The board. So I, I guess just to kind of be on your, um, I mean, when we start looking at the, the levels of hierarchy, and we've got our, I mean, turning in here, I mean, we can't be, like the school board can't do things that are in conflict with city code policy, state, federal, and so right. forth. So if you've got an advisory committee, unless there's something that's directed from the state, they can't be out of alignment with school right. board policy because that would trump what they're doing because they're serving for us. Right. So what I'm just saying back to what, what you had, Mr. Jordan, that as a board, we kind of send a direction to the administration that we need to ensure that those things are in alignment. Right, and we've talked about that before, and I don't want to make sure I'm clear. I'm not suggesting that advisory committee bylaws trump school policy. No, no, I'm not saying what, you are. What I'm, I'm saying is, is that in some of the uh, state structure, there are things in there that they, they get advised to do. To do. Yeah. Because <coughs> our goal is to be goodwill ambassadors to these committees and have them do the work. I've said this before, I don't want us to blindside the existing committees who've been doing yeoman work, just like we got an email from GIAC the other day, to make sure we don't blindside them and that one day, you know, today, they think they have some role in recruiting and making some recommendations, and then a video goes out and they find out, oh, we don't have that anymore. I'm just saying part of our communication and part of our community engagement that we make sure that we bring in, perhaps, the chairs of those committees and and discuss those things with them. And I just want to point out and stress on that one, because I've heard that a couple times, and I'll, I'll wrap up here, is that I don't think that what we're doing here um, takes anything away from uh, any one of the advisor committees making recommendations or sending folks. I think what we've done today is that we have a clear place where they can make that recommendation. Um, <coughs> fill out the application, become a part of the process, because it's going to the liaison, which at some point will still hit the committee, um, and hit another individual letting them know that these names have come through. So. Um, I agree with you in the respect that we want to uh, definitely be respectful of those people who've done great work, um, but I think that we're putting a process in place that allows them a clear defined location for individuals who want to be applicants so that we can track and manage and make sure that individuals get timely responses and have a clear process and know what's going to happen um, when they actually come in and engage. Fine. I'm taking your notes and we can always revise the video. Yeah, the school but the board. the website yeah. is the information. The school board just has to make sure that it produces good policy and that it follows the policy. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. what's mm -hmm. important. And right now, just based upon the presentation, I'm suggesting that there are some misalignments and we need to make sure we get it aligned, yeah. in my opinion, before we, well, before I don't, we I don't think that that's policy. I think that's more protocol. But I think that we've adapted our policy and now we just need to make sure that there's good protocol that complements it. I don't care what you call it. It's, just, they're two different things. Just, I, yeah, I, I know, <coughs> I know. Looking at the policy in front of me and right now, whatever policy we adopted, in June is not to make updated. sure the protocol it's not there. catches up. Yeah, yeah. there's, I'm there's a policy you. and there's a regulation. Yeah. 
okay. protocols. We'll make sure it's, we'll, that is very important. We make sure that it is updated. Okay, um, Ms. Basine. Um, so to date, we haven't had any communication with those individuals um, whose terms have expired, is that correct? Your liaison would have to tell me specifically about uh, like GIAC, SHIAC, and um, right. SIAC. Uh, as of today, I don't know specifically. This is just the information they've given me about certain ones that they have vacancies with, which was ones I just mentioned to you. Okay. And reappointments. I know right. the reappointments. Hasn't. We're still, they're in a holding pattern right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's something I can always come back and yeah. share with you. Say, hey, this is where all of them are. I'm just, I'm, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I made a recommendation that we needed because I thought we got a listing of everybody in their terms we did. We did. that we, we needed we a letter a to go out <clears throat> yeah. from the board, thanking them for the service, mm -hmm. and then those who um, would like to reapply, giving them a place where they could reapply, right. and then mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's definitely um, work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> great, you. great job, Ms. Okay. Tanner. I mean, great work. Okay, um, next item, business and finance. Dr. Birdsong. Gabriel, Mr. Clavin, <coughs> school board members. Um, we had posted on board docs the quarterly um, grants report that ended June 30th. Um, what I basically wanted to do is point out a few items for you, and if you have any questions, um, I can answer those for you. Basically, the report shows for you each of our federal grants and each of our state grants, the award year, the start date, the original award, the total expenditures and encumbered dollars as of June 30, any remaining balances, <coughs> excuse me, the percentage of the award that has been used and when is the end date for spending for those grants, and then the final deadline for reimbursements. Typically on federal grants, the reimbursement is about 45 days after the end of when you can spend the funds. The couple of grants that I want to call to your attention, <coughs> excuse me, that usually I know you're interested in is Title I. I'm pleased to say that we have met 85% that we are required to spend <laughs> for um, CH-119, Title I uh, for this fiscal year. And then the ongoing grant, CH-118, we're still in a good position. All of the program managers have plans to have all funds spend it by the deadlines. So we feel like we are in good position there. Um, the other grant that I want to call your attention to that you may be wondering about is Title I Part A School Improvement. You may see where there are no dollars spent, and that is because we got the award in June. Okay. So that's why you don't see any expenditures there. So if you have any other questions about any grant, um, I'm willing to answer the financial piece and if there's anything in particular programmatic pieces. Um, Dr. Cataldo and others are in the room to answer the programmatic pieces. All right, Ms. Kansas. And I was looking at this earlier when I was looking at it on board docs. So we, the school, I was under the understanding that the school improvement grant was gone and replaced by the ESSA grant. It, it might, could you give me a, an update on, on uh, this? Is the, my, we, it came back with funding for school improvement. I believe that's the oh, actual uh, titling of it is school improvement. But it's the ESSA money. Then. I have gone back to the funding sources. Yes. yes. It is. That's ESSA. That's ESSA. And, and so yeah. what's the date on that? Is that a 2019, 2020? Yes. Funds for the award we got, if you see the first one, we had look like two awards. The SI 219, we have until September 2020 to spend those dollars. So, that, so we don't have one of these. That's ending the September, no. No, okay, so basically we had a year of, of no funding from this grant. Yes. And so the one that they just gave us in June is, is now what, a 2020? 20, we have until 2020 September, or a 2021? We have until September 30, 2020 to do the first <clears throat> grant that's listed there, because there's two, they're listed separately because they're coming from different funding sources of okay. the federal government. So when you see Title I, 1003A, that one we have until September 30, 2020. 
and the one that's coming from 1003G, we have until September 30, 2021. Okay. Is, the, is so, the award year on G correct? That's the award year from the federal dollars, yes. And this is and it is, and that long to give it to us? A lot of times with these, if they have funding left from an award year, they will reappropriate it when they give us additional dollars. So with the school improvement one, they probably look back and said, from award year 2018, we had additional dollars that they didn't reallocate it to the vision. I didn't finish. Okay. Um, so with with the, the school improvement slash ESSA money that we did not get this past year and now is all going together to be spent in the upcoming year by 2020, um, is that designated for the ESSA schools? Is that go all, is, does all of that go to ESSA schools? Yes. For a certain school, Dr. Yeah, we have nine, what, nine schools that that money is being allocated to. Are there some ESSA schools that aren't getting it? Are, um, no. I, mean, I guess we have other ESSA schools, but uh, the nine are the ones that the uh, state appropriated to us. Also, the, the state chooses. Or federal government, yeah. The fe well, through mm -hmm. the state. Through they the choose which school the money goes to. Uh, do they choose which school? Okay, Jamie. They Jeez. do. So we don't have any. So if we look and we have some other ESSA schools, we, that's not. We no. just go with the ones they tell us. Correct. With yeah. no, no. It's all in the, remember the application process that we were talking about last fiscal year, and it was taking so long and going yes, back and forth yes. to the state. So they identified the schools, and they had to approve the plan and the application. So we have to use it for only those schools. Was that delayed totally on their part? Did they, was it delayed for all, the, all of the districts in the state, or, or was there a stumbling block at, at NPS? No, it was, it was at the state level. It was all so correct. No, no districts in the state got that money. No, I don't believe so. We did not get the money, and uh, our executive director has been working really uh, well with the state, uh, Miss Rabel, Beb Rabel, and uh, April Kaiser. Right, Edwards. right. I know. And they're working with them to uh, ensure that uh, we have really tight plans. Uh, but well, since see, the money was, was my awarded, concern. was there a problem with the plans we sent in? No. So we were just like every other district. Correct. No one got it until this summer. Correct. Okay. All right, thank you. That's sure. the clarification for me. All right, thank you. Mr. Clanton. So, uh, Ms. Ingram, on page two, the Title III Part A, Immigrant and Youth. I know there um, says zero to spend on that one, but what is, what is that fund utilized for that grant? That funding is uh, Title III, and it's actually a, a separate grant. It comes from a, a different uh, uh, funding source and we use that for a lot of our summer programs so that money would be used by the end of this summer even though we have until uh, September to actually spend that money so we do spend all of that and usually it's programs that help students that are new to the area okay. uh, L students uh, English learners uh, and it's uh, part of it is introduction to the school uh, introduction to the division as a whole and then really working with programs uh, we've actually had a couple two programs this past we have one coming up shortly uh, but one that, that we had this past year at tanner's creek so we're able to use funds for those things yeah so is there a particular is it coming out of grant money in regards to bilingual different um you know documents things like that we're using to try to be more correct yes we have programs and if you look at that title three money you'll see that we have uh, there's uh, about 42 percent has been used, mm -hmm. but we actually have programs that um, are coming online and are going to be using up all those funds. But that's really how we track students, right. how we make sure that they get the Access for L's test. Uh, that that all that information is captured, and then that we're able to appropriate uh, the um, the the teachers, the L teachers. That we just got an extra one from the board mm -hmm. this past year, so we're really excited about that. So making sure that we're getting everyone enough minutes, and that they're getting that coverage that they need. Okay. Unless there are any further questions, we can go ahead and move on to the next topic. Then. Thank you very much. Ms. Ingram. Okay. Thanks, guys. Next topic is our policy discussion. You know, we have quite a few policies uh, that the VSBA is, uh, gives to us in batches. But let's um, first uh, discuss uh, the items with regards to timelines for recess. So I'll 
let uh, Miss Martin and Miss Bassine and uh, um, we were waiting. So at our last meeting, we were waiting for the administration to come back with a timeline mm -hmm. for the um, recess dis discussion. Dr. Birdsong had. Yes. Yeah, so thank you. We have met to, together as um, an executive leadership team. And um, Dr. Cataldo, this evening is um, prepared to share a timeline. Okay, great. Um, a tentative Good. timeline. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, Dr. Cataldo, if you don't mind. That saves me from presenting. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, yeah, so at the July 10th meeting that we had, uh, the school board retreat, it was discussed at that meeting about coming up with a timeline uh, to uh, kind of look at our recess and where we were, were with that, uh, as well as looking at uh, PE and going from the 100 minutes to 150 minutes. So what I've done is uh, worked with our teams. Elementary principals have met. Uh, we've met with the um, some of the the, um, the recess uh, meetings that we the, the the folks from the recess committee that have come to us at the board and spoken several times. So we met with them, and we've uh, also met with um, additional principals to find out what their concerns are. So this is our proposed timeline. So we did that work in June and July. And then July, August, really what we want to do is we want to work with the principals and help define what does recess mean? Mm -hmm. Is it structured time? Is it unstructured time? So I think it's important that we all have that same definition of what, uh, what we classify as recess. Then we can go into the schools and determine during blocks of unstructured time, this is, would be called recess, and we can kind of go from the same page. So that was really the first part of it. Um, also, we want to survey uh, the current practices you know, do schools, are they, is it mandatory 20 minutes? Are they some doing 25 minutes, some 30, some 15? Now, based on policy, it should be 20 minutes. So that's what we want to ensure is happening. So we're really going to be doing a self-audit to determine that our recess times are appropriate uh, to what has already been passed. And then we will look at making recommendations uh, with the principals to ensure or find out how we can add some instructional time. So. That's July, August, and then towards the end of August, we're going to look at specific instructional minutes of each school. So we're going to look at each school, all of our elementary schools, and really determine how much instructional time uh, do they have, and if we were to increase the amount of recess in those schools, how would that impact instructional time? How would that impact programs? How would that impact our um, English block, our math block, additional electives, uh, lunch? And so then in September, uh, we're going to look at the options to add time to recess. So we're going to look at if, if an extended day might be, may be needed, uh, if there's a, um, a change in program times potentially, uh, any kind of other options. And we're going to be ready by uh, the 15th, so a week before the uh, policy review committee meets. We're going to have recommendations to you of what we believe uh, is the best path forward. Uh, the, the policy review committee is usually the committee that makes those policy uh, recommendations and brings those to the board. So we'll, we believe we'll be ready by that time to be able to make that level of uh, recommendation for That's you great. all. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Um, the other thing, the one word that you didn't say, which you, I think was implied, but I just want to make it explicit, is that in our policy meeting, we talked about the consistency of the implementation. And oh, making yeah. So, yeah. So just, um, so part of uh, Dr. Cataldo's meetings with, with the principals was to really listen to how it's being implemented in the elementary schools and then um, determining how consistent that is. So. Mm -hmm. And that's that self-audit that we're going to be doing, that's going to help us determine that and get to that those specific areas. Okay. Ms. Bassine. And to, to clarify, too, um, so we are not having a policy committee meeting this month. So our next one will be in September. Okay. September, September 20th. 20th. Yep. So um, that's great for recess. What about the, um, the separate policy with um, PE? With the PE, yes. We're, at that time, we're also, and I, I failed to put that on there, but we're going to have that same policy. Okay. So those two policies, which is IGAE and IGAF, Mm -hmm. uh, they will be, we'll have that together. Of course, it'll be two separate things, but 
we'll be bringing them both to that September 20th meeting, providing recommendations. We have talked a little bit about the recommendations uh, and some of the implications earlier, but we have uh, want to get some additional information for you and have that all ready at the same time. So what would be really um, beneficial to know is that for agenda planning purposes, um, whatever recommendations that come from the policy committee, how you want to present them to the board, and then what we need to know as far as action that needs to be taken, if there's public hearing that we need to, uh, to, to, to do, to plan for. So all of those items, budgetary um, items, because I know the the PE one might have budgetary um, yeah. implications. So just tell us what what your timeline is so that we can make sure that we appropriately put time in our agenda for it. We'll have that ready. Right. That's terrific. Ms. Basine. So, and, and then the next piece on the VSBA. Oh, oh before you leave that, I, oh. so I'm, a, I, I'm just a little confused. So what are, what are we doing? We are, they're doing, there's a, uh, administrative review process is going on to inform how we may change times associated with recess is that where we're going so I think there are a couple of things going on okay. um, so I recall during the July 10th meeting we were asked to moving forward look how we could bring the school wellness policy in alignment with um, health and physical education right. and so we're looking at a timeline for that and we're looking to see you know how much the financial implications for doing so and so we we need to review all of that and, and certainly we need um, input from the principals to be able to tell you specifically what that would look like and so I, I know there was um, an interest um, or we had um, community members from um, Virginians for more recess they Whitney Davis represented that group I had an opportunity to meet with her as well and so it's my understanding that she's hosting a community meeting um, tomorrow with, with some of our principals to talk about um, why perhaps um, they would have concerns about 2020 by, or 20 minutes of recess in the morning and afternoon by 2020. So there can be some dialogue and exchange so they can uh, hear each other's um, perspectives. So yes, we were, we were looking at both of those things separately. Okay, so I have a couple requests then. Okay. Whatever, what you're presenting, can you email out to us later? Because I'm visual. Sure. It's going to be helpful to understand that. The other. So the timeline, present the timeline. Yeah, because I, because what I, I follow what Dr. Birdsong said in terms of what I knew we were discussing at the retreat as far as the, my words, the, the PE policy. I know the conversation we've had about the recess. We've had conversations around alignment. But almost going back to the, uh, my same comment with the um, student health advisory, the student advisory committees, we made some changes to a policy. Yes, we did. And I know I had a whole lot of recommendations. I didn't put them on the table at the time because I wanted to give the policy committee others to kind of update on the board what the current policy is. Right. So I just want to make sure I'm following so I know as a board member what is the process right. in which if there are once I see what we finally voted on in terms of the current student wellness policy so we voted to change that from 150 minutes to 100 right um, knowing that there needed to be a plan moving forward right but mm -hmm. then but in that wellness policy there's some additional things we needed to I think we need to clean up and in your timeline, as I understand it, under what I think the current policy is, there's a role that the shack is supposed to play in that. So again, I just want to make sure in terms of as we are have staff out there doing all this work, that we are being streamlined and efficient and you know, also including, if it's required, whatever role that our advisory committees are mm -hmm. to play in terms of their review and feedback so in the shack committee meeting um the recommendation came up that we have um the principals association um get input from um more recess and so this is i mean this this kind of happened out of the meeting that you will have so that was one of the next steps that came from the the student health advisory committee because it, it's it's really about as you said 
finding the impact of what does adding more recess time have to a principal's mind when they're trying to think instruction, 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 accountability, how does this impact their schedule? And so we really, um, which I thought was a great suggestion to get them both on the same page so that they can figure out maybe how can they um, come together and hear each other out of what their um, concerns are and come to a, a good agreement. So, And I'm comfortable with that. I just yeah. think it's important that we are clear on the role of the board member liaisons to the committee, the role of the committee, the role of the policy committee, what, the, what we are tasking the administration to do and any of the meetings that we're having so that we are streamlined and efficient, that's all, and, and in accordance with whatever our policy and regulations say. Ms. Bassine. Yeah, and um, to clarify, so the, the timeline that Dr. Cataldo is bringing forward was, was originally, it was supposed to come to the policy committee um, in September Correct. Uh, pr before coming here today. So the next time, <coughs> the next policy discussion for the full board will be in October. Um, so that way we had a chance to really vet what the timeline is going right. to be and um, talk about that. So there isn't confusion. And the other piece with the separate from the recess, the health ed, um, physical education, and the school wellness policy, they are currently, last month we adopted policies that they are now in alignment. Mm -hmm. um, so going forward that um, coming up with a plan, whether we could do the 150 minutes is what we're moving toward. And that is something that the SHAC has also recommended um, to, to maintain in the school wellness policy. Um, so I just want to be clear, clear about that, that that discussion has happened. Also, we talked about um, um, at the last, there, there is a lot of cleanup that is required and there's a lot of what I call like policy clutter. There's a lot of information in both policies which um, holds us up, I think, when we're trying to consistently, trying to align two policies, whereas we just direct to one, and that was one of the things that um, I said that I would, and if anyone has any recommendations on that as well, but to bring a draft in the policy committee is gonna look at that as well with those two policies. I'm sorry, what is the ask that you're asking uh, us again? Well, I'm not, I'm not I'm asking asked. anything. Oh, oh. I'm just telling you where we are with the, with the policy committee, where we are. Um, Dr. Birdsong just mentioned the alignment piece, and I'm just okay. letting you know that, reminding everyone that we voted to align the two yes. policies. They are now in alignment. Yeah, the 100 And minutes. what we're moving forward in what the discussion really is is about how do we plan for that, can we plan for that 150 minutes. Yeah, that's that timeline. Which is yep. what that timeline is. Right. right. But going forward, we're in September as we have a meeting, the policy committee is not meeting until the 20th of September. So we will be bringing forward any policies for that October work session. So, Got it. So as you plan uh, agenda, for agenda planning, planning okay. you know that. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to clarify some of those. Yeah. Um, so it, it still seemed it's still in that streamline where we had a recommendation, we agreed to move forward on it. It, the um, district leadership team is doing their due diligence, then they're reporting it back. Um, I guess we're, you know, we're having this discussion. We'll, take, we'll talk, talk about it in more detail at the policy committee meeting, and then it'll be brought to the full board in the, new, new, in the latest form for our October meeting. Right? Okay. So. All right. For the work session, you'll be yeah. bringing forward work that session. information for that work session. Okay. All right. Great. Okay. VSBA updates. And that, that too is going to come to the policy committee. The, the district leadership team hadn't had a chance to, to vet all of those updates. Um, so we agreed to come back in September when they'd had a chance to have their meeting and um, bring it to the policy committee for any, any ones that are, yep, and then we'll bring those forward time. in October. At our policy, sorry, was loud. at our policy committee meeting, it was um, Ms. Tanner and Dr. Cataldo's first time meeting and so we did take an opportunity to bring them up to speed on the process and um, and their roles so we spent you know a good amount of time on that but again without having the recommendations from the district leadership team it, um, we couldn't move forward on several of the policies so okay. we're going to approach this and those recommendations month. will all be in by that september 20th meeting so, so let me ask a question if there are recommendations that are coming with the vspa that are merely mm -hmm legal changes and we talked about that yes. uh -huh. we did talk about that at our meeting on um 
on this past Tuesday. Tuesday. And so next Tuesday, um, members of the team will be uh, just talking about those changes and moving those policies mm -hmm. forward mm -hmm. because okay. there's no reason. It's, yeah. it's just yeah. a transition period. Yeah. Okay. So right. we're left right. behind. And plus okay. the summer and, yeah. you know, people. Sure. Yeah. We're only going to bring policies that have implications. Okay. Yeah. So then let me, let me ask this then. We were looking at um, the work session for September, um, that second week of September, and we had allocated time for policy. Should we not have a policy item on the agenda because we you don't guys are in transition? No, because we okay. don't need to. Okay. Yeah, All right. That. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So put Thank this you. on for October. Got it. It's It will be on every work session well, as right. we're following this new mm -hmm. piece. Okay. Well, thank you both. Thank you, Dr. Cataldo. Okay. All right. <clears throat> We're a little, little bit behind schedule, um, but let's go ahead and uh, move towards our matters of the board. Okay. Let me just reorganize my notes for just a second here. Here we go. Okay. So uh, at our last meeting, Dr. Birdsong was able to present her entry plan uh, to us. And uh, we requested that if there was any feedback to be provided to her. Um, and thank you all for um, the feedback that has been shared. Um, Dr. Birdsong um, has been made aware of all the feedback. I, my, my plan was to consolidate, you know, like items, but everything was kind of different. You really couldn't consolidate very much. So she has the feedback that has been provided by the members who have turned it in. and. Um, I think it's valuable and uh, nothing really further on that point. Given my feedback, I'm was sorry. she given my feedback? Your, did you send it to email? Mm -hmm. And you responded, got it. Okay. Um, did you copy Ms. Tanner? I replied to everyone. Okay. Then we'll have to go back and make sure that she got it because. I do recall receiving something from um, Mrs. Um, Smith. Smith. Ms. Okay. Smith. Okay. I apologize if it wasn't, um, it, I, actually I know it wasn't included in the document because the only ones that I have are from myself, Ms. Campson, and Ms. Bassine. So we'll make sure that your feedback is there for notation purposes, but if you pretty sure I you got some an email from feedback. From Ms. Smith. Mm -hmm. So then just make sure that we copy Ms. Tanner on everything just in case something slips through. And I apologize, I may have missed it because Dr. Burns saw, I said I was going to give you some comments in the word docs but i never saw them um i don't yeah i think we may have missed that uh, and it's not much but the other thing i would ask if we would um the comments that we have here are uh, additional feedback but we also had feedback at the meeting and so if we can go back into the minutes and make sure that we uh include that that feedback as part of as part of the okay. response back, I think that would be helpful as well. But if you can get a chance to send me those documents, mm -hmm. I'll send you those comments. I said I would send Does it have to be a word? You don't, PDF? I, I was doing that for your sake because oh, I, I thought it was easier to go in and you would just see the comments. But if you'd rather for me to do it on PDF, I can. That's fine. That's right. fine. Okay. That's fine. And, and so if you all are per perusing the board docs and you see something that is missing, like Ms. Smith, if your comments aren't there, email us and let us know because it was probably just a, an oversight. Uh, on our part, and we certainly want to make sure that all of the data is there um, as it should be. Okay. All right. Um, update on the RFQ process. Um, so when we were discussing the RFQ process, this is um, in uh, context of our superintendent search. We discussed going with an RFQ process. Um, the application is out there. We talked about um, uh, I. Uh, ask Ms. Campson if she could serve as liaison. She graciously <coughs> accepted. Ms. Campson, if you could bring the board up to speed on any work items. Well, just real quick at the moment. As you all know, the, uh, the uh, online already, um, Carol Robertson uh, has already uh, posted the, um, the job offer. Uh, Search firm. The S, whatever it's uh, called. Right. Anyway, <laughs> right. And, um, and we are accepting bids through the 15th. At that time, uh, they'll be collecting them all day through the 15th. Um, and then there is a, 
or, or, no, Friday. It's our last uh, four-day week. Um, and so on the 19th, as already was on the schedule, um, all of those will be made available to board members so that you will have a chance. Um, Ms. Robinson will be sending those directly to all board members. They won't have to go through anyone else for a wash. I, um, and uh, you'll have time to then review them all, ask questions. You, since this is certainly the first time I'll be looking at that kind of document, I would I certainly appreciate the fact that I'll have time to do that. Uh, at this point, um, I'm not sure uh, when we'll be coming. We need to then come back together and make a choice. Uh, on a vendor, I did contact Ms. Robinson to see how long it then took for um, the um, a vendor and um, and her to, to uh, collaborate and then have a contract signed uh, and and it can go rel relatively quickly uh, once we get to the point once we've made our choice okay. and so that's where we are now and I'm you know look to the um, to the agenda set I mean the yeah the time for that meeting that'll be I think what we're going to have to fa understand is that throughout this process we're going to have to have some extra meetings I, I don't know if we want to wait forever mm -hmm. on each thing that comes up so that's the next thing that we'll have to be talking about that'll be and I'll discuss where I am with it and then of course the three of you who do the agenda will will do that and there'll be I guess like call meetings is that what you call them but I, I we discussed this earlier that we're gonna have to have some extra meetings um, to be able to have time to, um, to first of all choose our vendor the headhunters and then to uh, set up times to review the applications as they start coming in I'm thinking that that would be a rolling thing as they come in they would be sent on to the board so that we don't all of a sudden get them dumped on us um, and we'll have a timeline for the time that that can go we'll, so we'll be need, meeting along the way to look at applications and you know eliminate some and, and, and put some on the you know how you kind of do that yeah. oh this is the no stack and this is the yes let's continue on and bring them in for an interview and that means an interview we have to decide do we want each interview to have the whole board or do we want to have representatives and teams interview I guess that'll depend on how many candidates we choose to interview oh, but that's yeah. going to be more times you know that you'll be called upon uh, and that might influence whether we want to have everyone kind of feel like I'd like to listen to all of them or at least the last three or so but everyone might have a different opinion about that mm -hmm. and and we can't schedule those times ahead because we have to also the candidates could be coming from any place in the country and so we have to kind of work with their schedules too so I think we're going to see some rolling times pop up um, and we don't want to get into a long back and forth scheduling thing with that so we're going to have to look at when a candidate's able to come and then and within that window what we can do so I think this is a kind of a flexibility time because I know that every single member of this board this is our biggest job is choosing a superintendent and I know everyone wants to be as deeply involved as they can certainly we'll try and take into consideration I won't be scheduling anything uh, this will be all this will be all the scheduling will be done by the the uh, vendors that that are uh, leading the uh, superintendent search so you'll start seeing things come up when we get a, mm -hmm. once we get the vendors in and we meet with them once they're chosen we'll be meeting with them to make sure that they have a clarification <laughs> of everything that this board is looking for so that we don't get a lot of things coming in you know they're just baseline things like certification which right. is required by the state um, and experience and all those things mm -hmm. so anyway that's just kind of in a okay. nutshell where we are with it okay all right, well, thank you very much. Are there any questions on that? Okay, so moving on next, um, we had talked about a, our board calendar and making sure that we had um, a calendar that uh, both we could follow, uh, the members of the public could have access to, um, which basically put on our board meetings. Um, those meetings could be then hyperlinked to the agenda on board docs. Uh, it could be aligned with the various uh, committees and uh, programs that we serve on. And Ms. Tanner has also been working very hard to get this up and running. Um, I know that when we discussed this last time that we were, uh, there was some concern about not having it go live just yet. Some board members wanted to have some further input. So I'll just turn it over to Ms. Tanner to walk us through it one more time and then any questions that you will have. <coughs> 
Okay, is it okay there. if I do it from here so then I can just um, pop some yep. things up? Mm -hmm. um, again, trying to send folks more to the school board's website to find out just what's happening and for transparency purposes to see the school board meetings, um, the conferences and different things that they have going on. If it comes like a board meeting, they could actually go to the website, click on it, and it takes them straight you click here and it takes you straight to the board docs page so it's not a whole lot of clicking around it but when they go straight to that school board's calendar that it'll jump them straight to the agenda and they can go find out what's happening mm -hmm. um, for that particular meeting for them and this may be the third bullet it's just live today just so we could work in and then look at it along with the school board advisory mm -hmm. um, tab um, for the calendar, I have, you all have a hard copy, but I, I've already sent it to some of the board members just to see what's already been populated there. And again, it's on our district website, which is good. We have control over it and we're able to do what we need to do. So right now we just have agenda planning, school board meetings and conferences and work sessions populated here. But uh, any other activities and events, say we have back to school, you all may be at a certain school, certain events, Those that information will be on the school board's calendar as well. Great. So, oh, Mr. Jordan, Ms. Smith. Well, can you just, I'm sorry, can you clarify again? So this is, I, I get the public, um, the purpose for the public. How does this impact my individual calendar and coordination and outlook and all that stuff? I'm not, I'm still not clear on that. And then secondarily you said you sent it to some school board members can you send it to all of us well they had requested can I see like a copy of what it looks like visually but I knew yeah. we were going to be here today and I put it on board docs yeah it's I, already been also, on board I just because I just want to yeah. be able to test it out because I just want to make sure that again that we aren't creating like, you know multiple calendars that we got to Manage, this would so. not house your pers your personal calendar. No, this will be all board functions and activities that you participate in. I mean, if it's something that the full board like, there's an event going on Saturday on the tenth. If you that that elevate could possibly be something. Huh? Saturday, elevate to educate on Saturday. Right. There is. Could not remember the name <laughs> of it. That could weekend. possibly be there as some of your um, activities, but not your personal calendar is not going to be here. Right. right. But even using that as an example, so if we get an invitation to participate in something, that doesn't make it a board function. That's just an invitation for board members to participate in something. So I just want to make sure. Well, I'm I clear. will populate it if you all are going. I would put that there. But if you're not going, I wouldn't put it there. See no, the problem. We still get our calendar invites through yeah. Outlook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that would come from the clerk saying, "Here's a option or whatever the event came in," and we all click on it. Yes, no, we're coming. But I think you're saying that if we agree that we're going to, and a board member is going to be present, you're going to populate it here for the public mm -hmm. to be able to know that we're going to be present there. Right. It may seem like a lot of work. Is but also, yeah, I, I think it's. This, I, I don't have a problem with the transparency piece, but again, I just I'm worried about all the multiple things we get out there well it, it's 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 well, really I'm also to try. that's why I like the, yeah. it, it's really the also to help us to organize the fact that we have a lot of um, training dates and conference dates and so um, if it's on our calendar that you know cube is at this time and NSBA is at this time that is on there so that everybody is aware of what the date I mean we get it also through her from you know through word document um, but it's also helpful to know, you know, how that how those conferences might overlap with, you know, a work session, for example. But but you're you're kind of making my point. So right now I know I can pull up my phone if uh, Ms. Tanner or anybody sends me an invite to a facilities committee meeting. I get the invite. I can put it in my phone. It falls on my calendar. I can get reminders and so forth. So if the purpose of this calendar is to just to let the public know. What I'm doing as a school board member, I kind of get that. If I'm being asked to now uh, do additional responses, so if I need to tell Ms. Tanner that I'm going to be at, uh, you're shaking your head, but you I'm gonna, let, me, let me finish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I'm being asked to respond to the board clerk that I'm going to be at the uh, event at Little Creek on Saturday, then I need to know that so that I am following whatever the procedures are so the information can get out there. Otherwise, I won't know. So I will respond. I can respond. I get, as you all know, we get invitations to do stuff all the time. So if the intent is for all the requests that we receive 
to send them to the board clerk and then the board clerk is going to populate it on the calendar I just want to know what those procedures are if that's not the case then I also want to know because I don't want it to be yeah. suggested that I'm not sharing information that I should be sharing well, I, see, what I, know, I see what he's saying yeah, now what I, I mean it's yeah. just I think major board point. things like yeah. if our, our meetings our trainings our retreats our conferences and then I guess even our ceremonies would be because this is this calendar is on the board's page right mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so like the I wouldn't say thing. like, you know, if I was going to go read, unless it was like read across America Day, but if I was going to Southside STEM to go read, I wouldn't expect the clerk to put that on this calendar up right. here. I think it's, it's, I think we can agree to say that it's the major things that the I board just, is doing. I just want to be clear. No, you raise, you raise a great point, but I, I don't think that's what we're asking. Right. At, and, right. So like our legislative day will be, will be like on our the legislative day as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our school board recognition ceremony dates will be put up there. Um, what else should we have? Read Across America. Read across. So can we yeah. just agree to what Mr. Jordan was saying, that it's the things that are being populated up here are things that involve the entire school board, the entire school board or I guess you could really say if it's three or more of us. Mm -hmm. know, it's going to require a public. But I'm still going to get a outlook. Yeah, it? we should still get an outlook. We're going to still get an outlook. Yeah. I don't think that changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're still gonna, mm -hmm. And also, too, you have people in the community that want to invite you to things. So now they can come look here and say, OK, well, the board, you know, they may be free here. Let that's me look at the point. calendar and invite them to yeah. my event because I'm going to plan it around that. Because <laughs> well, you're not going to get my personal that. calendar on yeah. that thing. And we don't so, want your personal just, calendar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or my availability. Yeah. So, <laughs> Pardon me? So then, um, <laughs> so I would, yeah, I would like no. to have, um, Big brother. <laughs> I, would, I, I would like to be able to allow Ms. Tanner to make this live, knowing that, you know, dates can change, situations come up, this is fluid. But this is um, a step in the right direction to putting information out there on um, the board, um, uh, meeting time, structures, et cetera. Ms. Smith. I have one question. Sure. It's with November 20th and our 4 p.m. board member board meeting and the VSBA annual convention. Mm -hmm. So that convention, I didn't attend this previous school year. On that first day, what are the times of the convention, and do they allow um, partial payment? What I'm trying to decide is, do I not go to the convention at all because we have this 4 p.m. board meeting, or can you go to certain um, parts of it and just pay for that and then be back? Because it's in Williamsburg, if I'm not mistaken. This one is. Um, and then just be back in time enough for the 4 p.m. board meeting. So those are the, what's yeah. that day? You're talking about the 20th? Mm -hmm. so, so the there's 20th a, is early bird. Mm -hmm. um, so there's some, there, it's like before the convention actually kicks yeah, off. So there's some early bird it. sessions that are going on there if you want to go. And I think they start from 9.30 to noon and then they have some in the afternoon. Okay. Is, is that September? No, no, that's November. November. Oh, November. That's oh, that's okay. mm -hmm. okay. right. And then in the in the evening time during our board meeting, um, they have a reception yeah. uh, type air uh, type function, and I'm not sure what else it was. The um, it doesn't preclude you from attending the Thursday um, the great uh, meeting sessions on Thursday and then Friday. So I don't think that I've, I've ever heard the VSBA having partial payment, but the events that we would theoretically miss if we were holding a board meeting at four o'clock is just a reception. And I, yeah. Yeah, I'm pulling up the, so on the 20th. The session starts on the 20th. Uh, what we've done in the past is we've uh, rescheduled mm -hmm. our regular meeting so we didn't have the conflict. Yeah, but so we, you're right. Because um, what time is that general session? Start? Two to four, mm -hmm. and then we have the regional Wednesday, meetings at four thirty. No. Um, and then there's the president's reception. Are we getting a special invitation, Mr. George? <laughs> <laughs> My I'm not the president. <laughs> Everybody's invited. <laughs> so then, if if the board, if the will of the board is to reschedule our meeting for a, um, the preceding week, um, the next, the following week is Thanksgiving, then I would need to know from the board members uh, what your uh, what your desire is, if you want, based on what the VSBA has planned for Thursday. Yeah, it'll, so. um, actually this is 
one of those situations that came up in uh, governor's training. We have to move it. We can't be like some other board that tried to have the meeting there. You I don't know Wednesday. Tried Wednesday. to have the meeting at the convention. Mm. Oh, who did? I don't remember that. There's another part oh, of the state, yeah. but no, we can't do that. Well, Miss um, Smith, were there any other questions that you no. had with mm -hmm. the calendar? Okay. So are, can we go ahead and make the calendar live then? Is, that, is anybody opposed to making it live right now? No, I just want to make that it's the master calendar. Mm -hmm. So it's not an individual, it's our I'm master dance. I think my dog was Major dance, yeah. Okay, major dance? So are we changing the business meeting in November? I'm yeah, no, what's that? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let everybody kind of come back to me about okay. that. In November, we, we tried to have just one meeting because yes. we had the that would be great. work session and the business meeting combined because we had Veterans Day and and I think it's going to bring doing that too. And, and then we have our legislative day too. Two meetings to one meeting, we can do that too. So I would suggest yeah. we look at the 13th yeah. as a possible good. meeting date. Me too. Okay. Do great. Okay, I just want to make sure everyone is understanding what is okay, so being uh, put on the table now. I can't. We, I can't meet on the 13th. Well, whatever okay. day, some some day prior to other than okay. The well, we right all, now we, can do it we all on the sixth. Make sure. We could we have a meeting scheduled for the sixth. See that's Dr. Birdsong, if you don't mind, if we can just put the information out to say um, would board members consider um, a single meeting on the sixth to combine both work session and formal meeting, and then that way we that would date work for everyone. I'm in agreement with that now. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, don't tell me. Can we can yeah. we agree to it now? I'm fine. I just want to make sure everybody understands what we're agreeing oh. to. November, November the sixth. Mm -hmm. We'll start the work session. Will there be a work session component and a business meeting component? Let's talk about that in agenda planning. Okay. Yeah. Oh, wait, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm missing. So okay. the, the work session on November 6th is being tr moved to? No, no, it's, no it's, listen. It will remain on the 6th, and it will become a business meeting. It could be a work session slash yeah. business meeting. Yeah, work session slash. And then the meeting on the 20th then is canceled. Canceled. Okay. Because that's when we'll be going to. That is a great suggestion. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Well, so we'll be doing financial, personnel, you know, all of those items. There. And then we can we'll discuss it in uh, agenda planning. Ms. Smith? And while we're on, we're on the agenda, I will be late to the October 16th meeting. Okay. That's it. Okay. That I have right now. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Tanner, okay. Can we have Ms. Tanner also send that out to us? Okay. Yes, Ms. Tanner, would you mind sending that information out to us about the com com combined meeting for November the 6th? So, please. just for point, I'm not going to be here November 6th. Um, it's my final dress run for um, Il Postino over at the opera, so I won't be here. Ooh, what was that? You're going to do the opera again? Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll tell you about it. Come up. But, yeah, you need to get that on my here. calendar, too. Then. <laughs> Moving on okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so the next item on the agenda um, is merely I've received everybody's committee assignments. Ms. Tanner has put them into a document uh, for everyone to understand. And at this point in time, you should be getting the dates of the meetings for the committees that you have um, graciously volunteered. This is the one you've already sent us that we have already. Yes, it's okay. on board docs right now. That is the most up-to-date document that we have. Dr. Gabriel, uh, I was still waiting. I thought we were going to get a form, but I would like to, uh, uh, looking at this document, uh, would like to continue with uh, uh, Council of Great City Schools as a uh, liaison there. The uh, HR, the Hereta and WHRO are one and the same. Mm -hmm. So I think we have it listed twice. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to uh, uh, fix that. Uh, I see that you've listed yourself as uh, North Council of PTAs. I'd, I'd be more than happy to join you or be an alternate there or, or do that role if, uh, if it frees up some time for you. Mm 
I, and I think that was, and if anybody would like to come off policy, I'd be more than happy to go back. But those are the main <laughs> ones I wanted to put forward. Mr. Jordan, do you remind repeating, repeating that? Uh, council, council of Great, Great City, City Schools, yes. Norfolk Council of PTAs. Okay. And if others need an alternate on something, if they let me know, then I would be willing to work with them to be an alternate if needed. Okay. All right. All right, next item on the agenda. Um, feedback for clerk of the school board job description. So. We have uh, Ms. Tanner is, is acting uh, as our acting <laughs> clerk right now. We all said that we would come back to a discussion with the board about any changes, amendments that we wanted to do for the current job description before it is posted. And I do think that um, it's important for the board to be able to provide feedback on what we currently have, especially being that we've kind of gone through a year um, with a variety of um, uh, individuals um, in this capacity <coughs> and understanding what the needs of the board are. So what I was going to do is um, Ms. Bassine and Ms. Smith, if, if you all would be willing to gather information from the board on suggestions um, for the clerk job description and then uh, be able to basically assemble those points and then come back to the board and present um, what the feedback is and offer suggestions so that way we can give direction to the superintendent for uh, posting of this of the any type of modified or revised job description uh, Would you all be amenable to that? Sure. Okay, Ms. Basine Okay You just asking <coughs> for feedback on any changes mm -hmm. to the job description? Yeah mm -hmm. um, Okay this I mean, I, I guess uh, I'm wondering why we're not yeah. talking about it as a full board versus. No, they're not saying don't we need to be doing things in committee no. and yeah. some recommendations in the full board within ACT. Seven hours. Oh, oh, right. oh okay. yeah. Input. So yeah. we'll send our suggestions. Just send to, suggestions. To the two of them. Right. Can we just, do it by you, the August business meeting? It can be what they can come back and say, we would, you can create a timeline. You know, you can say, we need feedback by this date, we're going to present it on this date, and we want to have it out by such and such date. I'm ready to work on it. If you all, if we want to try to have a draft for August, um, First. the August business meeting, which is two weeks, yeah, on the 21st, then oh, that's perfect. Let's, um, yeah, how about by Friday? Um, even next next Wednesday I mean can we do that can you, is a week enough time for for you all to get us feedback I think so I mean it's already it done gonna, just adding it, recommendations well, we're gonna the, be together for a couple of days well anyways. yeah that's true <laughs> yeah, um, we could talk about it then we so, could definitely have it back to Wednesday so we already get a copy of this yeah it's it's on, it's on board docs some but yeah I'm you good with Wednesday I don't know about anybody else say the she send yeah. me a copy yeah I want a copy. Okay. Send me a copy. Just let us know when you'd like the feedback then. Yeah. Bye. So, okay. On the 21st, I will arrive late to that meeting as well. Okay. It's another um, date that I have continuing education training already scheduled. That's okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, okay. Right. Just send us the date. Send us the date that you want us to have the feedback by. And then, um, okay. and, uh, and then you'll be able to present at, you know, August 21st meeting or a different the September meeting. meeting. Yeah, okay. I don't think there's a huge rush. Okay. Anyway. All right. Thank you very much for that. Okay. Um, selecting a conference at all school member board members. <laughs> uh, you were Chair, voluntold for uh, that one. Madam Chair, if, if, the, if the board is willing, I'm more than happy to yield my uh, one minute for 9.05 <laughs> and the 10 minutes for 9.07 <laughs> for action at another meeting. Okay. What is it? Okay. I, do that? I mean, how are the dates coming? So, so then, um, so then, what what we'll say then is, uh, Mr. Jordan, then uh, if you could uh, pull the board into one meeting that we could all possibly attend, that would be great. Yeah, I just think it should fall with the discussion with the 
accountability plan and on the board of distinction. We, could, so. we can do that, yep. Yeah. Okay, so now, 9.07, Mr. Jordan. Saved. Oh, I would say I was, I was willing to so. yield that as well unless the board just feels compelled to discuss it today. I've shared with you, I've shared this document many times, it's there. Um, you'll see on the attachments that my, my point is, is I think that as a board, we need to have clarification around uh, what our expectations are regarding our legal services and also be able to um, coordinate that with the city. I, I pulled up the Virginia Beach model as an example. Uh, and, and really part of the, the, the basis of that is I think, um, at least in my experience and sitting in on sessions that there's a tendency amongst boards who have to pay by the hour for their attorneys to be judicious in what they task and uh, boards who have arrangements like we have have the uh, tendency to uh, send a whole lot of stuff to uh, to the attorneys and I think we just need to make sure we're clear on what our expectations are and uh, and make sure that we are respectful of their time and, um, and make sure that we are tasking our administration to do their roles appropriately and uh, have the attorneys to continue to provide us with uh, advice and consent. But rather than going through all that, I think if you take the time and just review it yeah. and just give some sense whether or not this is something you think we should do, and then if so, then we can decide what next steps are moving forward. If not, then there's no point in just talking about it. Okay, then so the next item on our agenda is school board training. So um, training encompasses two things. Just want to make sure that everybody is clear. We have governance training, which this board has committed to. Governance training is how our board is working together um, in conjunction with the superintendent. So a governance team is the board and the superintendent. And then we have other training sessions, professional development, that we can go to um, with a, a variety of school board agencies. Um, and so two separate items. So what I would first like to um, uh, discuss is that we have an updated calendar now that Ms. Tanner has provided to us for the conferences, whether it be Council of Great City School, CUBE, BSBA, NSBA, and then um, if there's a conference that um, you were interested in attending and you wanted to bring it to our attention, um, as I put on there, the Model Schools Conference, that is an option. So that way we all know the dates that are there and to please let Ms. Tanner know um, as far ahead of time as possible so that way she can um, uh, do whatever travel arrangements um, you all have agreed to. So it doesn't have to go through, um, uh, uh, <coughs> back up for a second there. Just make sure you're letting her know what uh, conferences you want to attend, okay? And if there is something that is not on this list, make sure you just share that with the board so that we all know um, where folks are going. Okay, are there any questions as far as these conferences go? I have one point of clarity. So I don't need uh, chair and vice chair approval in order to get registered for a conference. No, no as long as it's one of the ones that are here that we all are aware of, no. Okay. But if it's something different, like say urban music conference, right, um, that's something that would impact our budget as exactly. a whole. Exactly. I just want to make sure it's clarity because I've been. I want to make sure that we're clear. Okay. If yeah. I want to and register for any of these conferences that we are members, right? That I, you contact the clerk, and the clerk will coordinate with the superintendent, or whoever, whatever else that the clerk is supposed to do internally, so we can get registered and travel arrangements made and participate and eventually come back and report to the board what we did. Any of these, yes. And I think that you had made the point about there being some hot topics or other items that um, the VSBA offer that may not be directly on here. So we would need to, you know, put those on here as items for consideration as well. Okay. And I'll ask Karen. Yes. So are we going to confirm the 24th or 25th today, today mm -hmm. for January? Okay, that, I'm going to talk about that in a second. I okay. just wanted to first get through the conferences. Okay. Are there any other questions on the conferences? Okay. So then the other item, which has been so fun to have to organize, is our governance training. As you know, um, we um, have allocated funds in our budget 
um, $20,000 for a contract with Virginia School Board Association to do four training sessions. Two of those days are um, two-day training sessions. Two of those sessions are one-day training sessions. Um, the VSBA has uh, basically has a formula of when they, you know, suggest um, that we try to get the trainings done um, and the time frame. And so uh, it was certainly a challenge of trying to adjust everyone's calendar around an ideal and optimal training time in July. Uh, and so we, we, we couldn't get everyone's consensus on a, on a date for that. Um, also, let me back up for a second. Per the VSBA policy, all seven board members have to be present in order for the training to occur. If one board member chooses not to attend, the training is canceled. It, it doesn't occur. It's not scheduled. It's canceled. Done. So, um, in moving forward, so that we honor our contractual commitment with VSBA, we have to dedicate two full, um, four sessions in total. Um, Gina and I and Samantha have been in contact numerous times on dates. Let's just start with the easy ones first. So for session two, we have October 18th and 19th to be done in Charlottesville. That's going to count as a two-day session. Session three, originally, based on the dates that the VSBA had sent to us, they had shared with us some dates. And in looking at how everyone's schedule looked, it looked like February 31st and January 1st were the most ideal times. Okay. That, those were dates sent by VSBA. 31st. Wait, what was that uh, again? January, January 31st. January 31st and February 1st. Okay. So we responded back to VSBA saying those dates work for us. They then responded back to us and said, oops, <laughs> we are actually at the equity conference at NSBA yeah, at January. that time. We cannot do those dates. But the other dates that we had provided to you for January are still on the table. So at that time, what are those dates? Hold on a second, let me finish. Miss Tanner and I pulled back the original <laughs> calendar and we said, "All right, let's try for January 24th or 20, 24th and 25th because that was the other date that the majority of board members could attend." As soon as we had sent that information out, the VSBA then emailed us back and said, "We are only available on what was the date, Ms. Tanner? It was only one of those days. 24th, 25th, I it, think. It, it was just one of those days. So we're back to the drawing board now as far as a January date. Um, we have sent out an email. Ms. Tanner has sent out an email and have asked for you all to respond to say what dates you are available. Again, we are working on the VSBA's um, time frame because they're the ones doing the training. And so, Ms. Smith, to answer your question, the 24th and 25th um, is not possible right now because there's only one of those dates available. I, Ms. Tanner basically copied the exact dates that they gave us and sent them out to everybody. And so what we need to um, come to an agreement on is what are the dates in January that we can attend for that third session. But it says or, not both. I want you to just... So neither just, one of those days? Well. Honestly, the email that, that was sent out, the most recent one by Ms. Tanner, has all of the dates listed. So that way, if those aren't even options, this is, this is, this is, this is like, you may not even be able, you don't even consider that right now. Just draw a line through it. That was such a good day for me. So what are the dates that we have? That so they're offering us. Ms. Tanner, do you have that email? I know you sent it out to us. A Dr. While ago. Just for clarity, so of the four training, is it's two of them that are two days and two that are one day. Is that right? Yes. So, because typically, is that right? Is it? I can't remember. It's you can, you have the contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just so could one again. of those it's two days become one of the one day? Okay, trainings? here are the dates. You have dates. Dates. Oh, you got it. Okay. Yes. All right. So it's January 15th, 16th, January 16th, 17th, January 17th, 18th, 
January 25th or January 30th, 31st? I thought the 25th was still on the table. So the 25th if would we did be a the 25th, one day one? It would only be a one day training. One day. While and everyone's looking, could I ask, you started with session two and session three, session one is? We're, I'm gonna come back to what's going on with session one. Oh, okay. 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 I can do everything but the 18th, which I guess I could try and change if it was the last thing for everyone to go with. I would try and make arrangements to change it. So I'll just open myself to any of them. We really need to get this scheduled. And so th this is what was sent out to everyone to comment on, and then we can take it from there. Could we like just go down the list and everybody could say, and we could see if everyone could go to that one, and if they can't, we could go to the next one. And we, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is, it was out there. So I'm happy to nail down a date right now. Yes. Um, yes. And that way we have a date. But I, I, I also do understand that folks are looking at their calendars. But we did send this email out. And I know that it has been confusing, but we are just, we're, we're working with the VSBA and what their schedule is. Can we just, I want to get out of here. So, I mean, like, it's getting late. Mm -hmm. um, and we still have a lot of business to do. Just have everyone email yeah. Ms. Tanner. I already emailed mm -hmm. her. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then she can mm -hmm. tell if, us. If we went yep. for it real fast, then we'd be finished. It. This email back and forth business isn't seeming to work with us with the scheduling. Yep. It, doesn't. it doesn't. We could all write here, sitting here, and say, what were the first dates that you gave us? Yeah. Who can go to and those two dates? The 15th well, is a board and meeting, so that one's off. So then we just moved, I'm with you, Ms. Campson. We just moved to the 16th, mm -hmm. 17th. 16th, 17th? Mm-hmm. I can do 16th. Who can do 16th and 17th? Raise your hand if you can do 16th and 17th. Well, look on the calendar. No, but I have multiple calendars, and that's why I'm like, I could guess based on this one here. I mean, but I'm just. Right now, mm -hmm. 16th and 17th will be fine. I'm I don't have for 16th and 17th. I, I, will, I will adjust my schedule to, to, to make, make it work. It Typically, okay. I can't do it. Yeah, that's a Friday. Friday but yeah. I mean, it's Thursday and a Friday. But okay, so I tell you what, if we have consensus right now, with the exception of Miss Martin, okay, well. I'm uh, looking to see what I sent earlier because mm -hmm. I was looking at the It'd be good to have consensus. You said no for the 18th right the and the 31st. So we don't have to be I said no. It. You said no for the 18th and the 31st. Okay. Okay, so 16th and 17th, you're good So then. So then let's just book the 16th and 17th then. Session three. Okay. Session, Session three. three, yep. 16th and 17th. Ms. Tanner, can you please email VSBA by tonight and let them know the 16th and 17th just in case another board member, I mean another board <laughs> takes training that day. All right, and then session four we have April 29th. Okay, so we have in agreement sessions two, three, and four. Um, what was what was four is what? February again? Eight. Session four is April 29th. It's a one day training. Got a calendar invite. Okay. Samantha. So we're yep. having January. We have we have October 18th and 19th. We have January 16th and 17th, and April 29th. So right now we have two two-day sessions and one one-day session right now okay we just need to get one day take it one step at a time so um, I'm, I'm, I'm rounding back to the session one okay session one um, we put out a bunch of dates um, we were trying to figure out a date that worked best for everybody and the reason that you have training early on uh, in the board, ideally in July, is so that you can come together to discuss topics such as your norms, your protocols, review the accountability plan, um, do a data review, um, lo lots of organizational matters. Um, we couldn't all come together for July. And so the next best option on the doodle poll um, was the August 12th and 13th timeframe. Now, um, I know that um, Ms. Smith, you, you, you could not attend um, that meeting, and I understand. I'm in training. The what? I'm in training that You're day. in training that yeah. day. So, um, you know, when, when we put out the other information for the other dates um, that you were available, we didn't have um, board, um, there weren't, all the board members could not attend those dates either. And so we have to move on training. 
uh, and this is important information that we have to to make a priority for us for our board and so we are moving ahead with training on August the 12th and the 13th um, it will be at the Richmond Marriott and short pump um, we have a facilitator uh, dr. Warren Stewart will be facilitating the training he is a former board member with Norfolk Public Schools he is a uh, former superintendent he um, has experience with the Virginia Department of Education on facilitating um, uh, strategic planning, uh, commu uh, communication facilitation, all of that. And so he is uh, very um, excited to be uh, providing um, in the role of facilitator um, for us um, at this uh, training session, this governance training. So that's what will occur. So how much is that going to cost the board? Zero. Okay. We will be providing his lodging and mileage. Okay. So that costs. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm just for clarity, because I'm like Ms. Martin, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned a second ago that we would do things such as review the accountability plan and that stuff. That's work session stuff that's not governor's training stuff no 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 right. in the past okay, in the I'm past good. what we had done in July is we were two days. you know we <clears throat> had those two days like what I remember from Panasonic was we did like data review needs assessment and Panasonic since yeah. that was 2012 yeah, I'm, just, I'm just saying last year we had two you're days. you're right accountability huh? plan is not governance training let's go last year we had two days but, right July we had two days we had a day and a half. but governance so training yeah. point mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get an understanding of what it is is being proposed to be done on the 12th and the 13th, mm -hmm. and and uh, you, you just mentioned Dr. Stewart mm -hmm. was doing it, but I was confused about you say he was facilitating. I'm trying to get an understanding what is what is he facilitating? Miss Tanner, is the agenda for that up uh, online on board docs? Yeah, hold on one second. The first day no. um, is norms and protocols. The second day is superintendent and board members' needs um, and wants. Okay. So although I'm not going to be present, I'd still like to provide input into uh, some of that. Okay. So on that, um, I can't see it very clearly from here. What I, I did ask, um, uh, Ms. Tanner to um, provide and upload um, as a part of that um, are our current norms and protocols, um, Dr. Stewart's biography, okay, um, eight traits of an um, effective school board, eight characteristics of an effective school board, and Ms. Tanner, was there anything else to upload to that for our conversation? I'll look and I'll make sure it okay. gets up there. That's fine. Yeah, preferably an outline. So, yeah. Of, of the training. Yeah. That's the agenda. Okay. Ms. Vassana. So an outline of the training. Uh -huh. So I share I share my concerns uh, with you, um, Dr. Birdsong. I I wholeheartedly there's a reason why the SBA has a full board participation policy. I firmly believe in that. I think that if that's what we're doing in our, uh, if those are the topics that are being covered, that we can do that as a whole at a, at a different time. Um, and we are, I don't agree with that. And because I feel that way about Ms. Smith and having, whether it's Ms. Smith or anyone here uh, who couldn't make it to the meeting, I too said that I was not going to attend the meeting mm -hmm. and I still feel that way based on um, the information since we're learning I did learn from Dr. Birdsong that uh, Dr. Stewart was being considered uh, to facilitate um, but the full board has not been made abreast of the training what's going to be entailed I mean I, I think at some point we got to get to a process where we're being informed of the matters before us beforehand yeah beforehand yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm stand, I stand firm with, with my conviction on that. And okay. So are you I still not going to be, I, okay. I continue to not plan to be there. Okay, that's fine. And I don't think it's right, yeah. 
Okay, so. There's nothing that I can do. I've tried emails. Um, I've tried to align calendars. Um, we had a training back in April that was canceled last minute. Um, we have to make a commitment. And I, I, we have to get work done. Um, and if we push it out to September, October, we're going to be dealing with the same issues that we were dealing with last year, and we have to move on from this. Can, so, can, can I make a point, Madam Chair? I, I think for full clarity and just transparency on it, we had dates that were given out way ahead about a time in July that our board chair took under consideration because I do know that um, I think Ms. Smith, you were had a conflict. Ms. Basin, you had a conflict. No, I did not have a conflict. To do the did. second day? Oh, to do the first day I to did. To do the first yes, one. So we, right? we were trying to have full board there to try to get this done. We had to do an organizational meeting. This is supposed to typically happen in July. Last year we did two mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Um, and we took under consideration at that particular point in time to make an adjustment because of board members' conflicts. We have been back and forth through emails trying to get things done. Oh, okay. the, there are several things that we just can't put off until September and October again, and that's where we're looking at now here in August. Um, I, I feel that, um, I mean, I understand what you're saying in the respect, and, and, and I'm not gonna say that I don't take what you're stating at, to value, I, I do. But I, I just have a challenge in the respect that we are trying to make adjustments. We have a contract that with VSBA that says we have to have 100% participation with everybody. Clearly, we're not going to get that for this first one. But there are things that have to get done. Um, and so being able to go out and identify another trainer, someone who can be able to get that because we have things that we have to get done um, that's not costing the district anything um, and to be there. Um, I would really employ you as a colleague on this board. I understand what you're stating for, but I would really encourage you to be a part of that because we don't want you not to be a part of it, and we do value your opinion and, your, uh, and what you have to say at the table and for you to really participate in being a part of the governance. I understand what Ms. Smith has. She can't control that, um, and it, it shouldn't be any slight there at all. Um, and I do you know, hope that we will do what we can do to ensure that her um, feedback um, is in considered and is included in what we're talking about. But I would really encourage you, um, as we try to move forward as a unit, a governance team, I uh, understand and taking under control, uh, you know, full, full consideration about what you're saying for your, your colleague there, but we really need to have your voice at the table, and, we, and I would really encourage you to be a part of it. All right, um, so, so that we can Go ahead and move things along. I'd like to entertain a motion to enter into closed session. So before that, the agenda as we normally see it wasn't on board docs. Is that a change too that has taken place? You talking about which agenda? Under, under the executive sec section. Um, Are you talking about like this? Yeah. It what, wasn't this here. This, the, mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. this is what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Are we changing that? No, I don't think we change it. I think that we still have a clerk that's in a, that's put, learning and she didn't get a copy of that. Right that's okay. all. It's just okay. a regular. It's, if you click like print, it gives you the detailed agenda and a simple agenda on board docs. I agree with Ms. Tanner. That I one. think the, the use of those PDFs is legacy and a holdover and isn't necessary. That's why we have board docs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And on the board docs thing, I did. Are we still the and notifications? And if that's off? the case, Mr. Yeah, Jordan, then we just don't. need to say that. I mean, oh, wait, she's talking. If if we're accustomed to a certain norm and that's what we're used to seeing, if we're going to change it, then we just need to say that that's well, what I agree we're going to do. No, I agree with you. Yeah, but I think oh, for sure that very reason, because. Yeah. Well, I wasn't aware that everyone was that you all were getting color no, copies on like these certain things. individuals oh, asked for those, and I did and I know that. Going over that. But I just there. know that if you um, click on print, Blair you get Middle the simple School. and detailed agendas, and you know. But if that's what you and I can do that. Hmm? Okay, we'll talk. About that. Sure. Okay. So I know that we're in um, board member matters, and we're about to go into closed session. But there are two quick things, and I think we've sent emails on them. But I just wanted to make sure that for full board uh, notification of what I'm requesting, I know that a parent 
had contacted about Blair Middle School and it's come up several times before about their specialty program and how that's the only program in the district that doesn't provide transportation. And I really um, implore the administration to try to really look at that. I know we've asked the prior superintendent to look at that um, as to how we might be able to potentially, you know, the smaller group, but something to come back to us um, about that. So yeah. respectfully, um, we can do that. But I do recall that that was a discussion during the, the budget cycle mm -hmm. that was put on the table, but that was never put into the budget. Okay. Is there anything that we potentially do within our budget? Um, I understand, I know Ms. Kleinbell's talked about it, I've heard about 170 some odd drivers, um, but just to have another look at it that doesn't have a public budget implication to us. And you can just say yeah or nay when it comes yeah, back I'm, to I'm it. not sure how it wouldn't have a budget implication. I mean, I just, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, and then they I just say, you know, we don't philosophically no, I, agree I with it, that. but at this yeah. point, to my understanding, there was a discussion about it, but there was an agreement to put it in the budget. Definitely. So it's not in our current budget. Got it. And the second item was about um, J. Cox Elementary, mm -hmm. um, the bus loop mm -hmm. that's come in there. Um, I know that's gone to the city and so forth about some type of putting a um, fencing or, or some temporary um, fencing there to prevent students from coming across um, then an active kind of driveway. Mm -hmm. so. And I know that you all work on it, but I just want it for the full board to understand that, um, you know, it's, as I was sent emails, that you all were aware. That's all. Could I, real quick, and I should have noticed this before, but we, of course, when we go in closed session, we'll be approving, we'll be looking at personnel, and we need to, to vote on that yes. so those people can staff the schools, and we don't we have to come out of closed session to vote? Yes. yes. Uh, okay, because I didn't see it here. So we will be coming out, because I know we got to get the school staffed. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. You want to come out of retirement? Okay. Yeah, it doesn't All right. Can I have a motion to enter into closed yeah, session? I, I move to enter closed session. Second. Okay. Ms. Tanner. I'm oh, sorry. Is there any discussion? Yes. Okay. Ms. Bassine. Um, I'd like some clarification why the uh, preliminary accreditation of schools is in closed session. Okay. A closed session item. Um, when, we, when we start talking about particular schools, there may be the possibility of talking about individuals and we don't want to single that out. So it becomes a person. Leave it out. I'm sorry. A what? Go ahead. Well, we've never reached over into that type of conversation before when we've um, had presentations of school accreditation. We, we I think it's better to be on the safe side than not. And we, we, because you can also, there's only a certain number of high schools, certain number of middle schools, and you get into a certain thing, people can start kind of guessing where they are. So it's just a, it's a safe way of being able to make sure that we're protecting personnel. And, and this, is this is preliminary. And it's preliminary because it's not a final public thing. public reporting at some point. Preliminary right now. Right, so, so why not discuss it when it's either in a two by two as we've done before or in a, um, when? when it is ready, when it is a finalized. Well, we had piece. two by twos already it when it wasn't twos. finalized. It did, but I mean, to have this piece, uh, if that's something, and we have had two by twos, mm -hmm. you're right. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm wondering <clears throat> is there already a planned personnel discussion associated with this? Not that I'm aware of. Because no. if there isn't, then I think we all know that. Um, you know, and if you have some, you know, I was just going to add that you know we were asked to um, look at some some data that is confidential in nature and connected to personnel. So we okay. do have those reports. Um, so it. So you were asked to look at some personnel specific information related at the board to this. That together we would be looking at um, some personnel information. Well, some, of, to some of we don't know what that is. Yeah, so I don't know that. So that's why I'm asking for that. And I did respond to your email right. about that. But but then but then uh, there was a follow up email saying that we weren't having oh. a we, we, we don't do evaluations of well right. And I don't want to I think go down I think the path. implication yeah. it was yeah. understood why I was asking it. If there was a personnel sure. uh, discussion related to it, that's a different topic than just presenting us with the preliminary results. I think results I think are. with all of these matters, we come to, we come to to making the agenda as citizens of the community. We have an attorney that works with um, the board, Mr. Cloud, who um, 
really gives us the legal counsel as to what we can and cannot bring into closed session. And there is no um, rebuttal whatsoever. If, do, if Mr. Cloud says this is not appropriate for closed session, it is off the table. We follow his lead. Um, if he is, says, I advise that this be a closed session discussion because of the potential for uh, personnel matters to be discussed, et cetera, we follow his lead. And so uh, that's, th we're, we're following um, direction at the, as that goes. So okay. if and there's anything. Yeah, well, this goes back to what I was taking off earlier. So the uh, attorneys provide us legal advice. They're not board members. They're not elected. There's a, for whatever reason, we decided as a board that we wanted to have this um, review of preliminary accreditation now. I'm not aware of once we get the information that we're going to do anything with it. But I think the, the better approach is to either have the two by two or discuss the information when it is no longer embargoed and is available and have a full work session discussion that talks about where we are and what we're going to do. I think otherwise putting it on the agenda in the closed session as we have now when there's at least I'm not clear on any recommended action that we would take as a board tonight anyway. I just think that there's a better process for sharing this information with board members if board members feel it's important at this time than to uh, put the administration in the position of trying to do it this way. I just, I just don't think that is uh, uh, a good process, whether it is legal or not. So I, I would I don't recommend that we keep it on the closed session agenda for this evening. Is there anybody else that would like to amend the motion to remove it from closed session? No, I I, 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 mean, I trust in what Dr. Birdsong said. I mean I I wasn't involved in the agenda planning, so I think that okay. I'm going to lean on her for okay. her recommendation. Is it? Oh, if we are not making. Um, if there's going to be no action um, around uh, the discussion that we're having, then um, if, if there is a need, I'm happy to schedule two by twos with individual board members if you want to um, have a, a deeper discussion about um, the status of schools as it relates to accreditation. Um, we can provide the data, but it is preliminary. And I want to say that again, it is preliminary and it may change it may change. So we just need to be very careful about um, the data that you receive if you decide to move forward with it today because, again, it is preliminary data. So I'll I just add to that, because it's preliminary accreditation data that can change, that to have that announced publicly early before, because we don't have any any input into accreditation. That's a formula that the state uses. It's a state designation. The two by twos we had earlier gave us preliminary data that we have, you know, to talk about and everything because we weren't making any labeling of school decisions. Right. So this is a labeling of school, which is why the state asked us not to make public accreditation until they finish crunching the numbers and release it in September sometime. But they have released preliminary stuff, is my understanding to the district, and I'm, if I'm wrong, but that was always my understanding of how it worked, is the big thing was the fact that accreditation can hinge on some piece coming in later because things happen in summer school and, and, and other things, and so they ask us not to make it public so until it's, it, it, am I correct in what I'm saying, Dr. Birdsong? Yes, there, yeah. there has been a, a timeline that has been provided and then an update to the timeline. Okay. And we are ahead of that timeline. And so again, um, if you want the data, it is preliminary and, and it could change. Right. And I suspect that it will. So being that we are, um, we are, well into the seven o'clock hour and since there is some unrest with board members with having this discussion and I would not want to rush this discussion um, because it is so important uh, such a big part of what we do I'm, I'm comfortable removing it from the consent agenda and let's just stick with the personnel items and the legal matters I, I hope that's a, a I think that's a good compromise then mm -hmm. we can okay. touch base with you to schedule it mm -hmm. two by two time yes okay but yes. so we have it because it's on board well, docs now right yeah. 
Okay. All right. So can I have a uh, motion to enter into closed session already, with the motions already on the floor? So um, strike the um, accreditation discussion from the um, resolution. And there was a second. Yep. And so we call, we the question. call the question. Okay, move that members of the school board go into a closed session for the purposes which are set out in subsection A of section 2.2-3711 of the Virginia Freedom of Inform Information Act as amended for discussion or consideration of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, performance, demotion, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific officers, appointees, or employees of the Norfolk Public Schools pursuant to subsection one of the above cited code section. The subjects of this portion of the session are consideration of the personnel docket of this date, including the dis discussion of the board's appointment of a specific candidate for a high level administrative position and discussion of the performance of and possible future board actions concerning specific school based administrative personnel. Discussion or consideration of disciplinary and other matters concerning students in Norfolk Public Schools that would involve the disclosure of information contained in the scholastic record pursuant to subsection 2 of the above cited code section. The subject of this portion of the session is consideration of the funding and awarding of a scholarship to specific students. Consultation with legal counsel and briefings excuse me, by staff members pertaining to actual or probable litigation or other specific legal matters requiring the provision of legal advice by counsel pursuant to subsections 7 and 8 of the above cited code section. The subjects of this section of the motion are consultation with legal counsel concerning legal matters related to the personnel and student support matters identified above and consultation with legal counsel and or briefings of staff members concerning probable litigation and legal matters related to a specific employee's threat and loss. Ms. Bassine. Aye. Campson. Aye. Clanton. Aye. Smith. Aye. Martin. Aye. Gabriel. Aye. Jordan. Aye. All right. See y'all in the room.